I wrote this book about my life and how I personally broke the chains of this garbage, mostly with my words, but a few times with my fists. I speak to you in the first person. You read a few stories from my library, you dream when you sleep on my couch, and the book contains over 200 illustrations. You've never seen anything like it.
Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test If only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down They wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me Maybe something in the air Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming And they're scared I walk a straight path Not many can say that I'd like to play fast Cross me and there's payback You better pray that I don't see your face at Any place that I go I know you hate that I've been doing fine I'm not wasting any more time I live for the fight and the climb I think that the pain that's deep inside is what defines So I won't give up, I'm gonna make it to the top I don't care what's in my way, I swear I'm never gonna stop I could fall flat on my face and I swear I won't get back up Cause I don't deserve a thing and the road ahead is tough They'll try to kick you while you're down They wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless Lost. 
lost my eyes, they strain to see. I struggle forth to find a friend to light the way for me. Oh, brothers, can you hear my voice or am I all alone? If there's no fire to guide my way, then I will start my own. Oh, my God, we'll have our home again. Twenty twenty four. Here we come, ladies and gentlemen. Featured articles on this New Year's Eve stream. Destroy the cathedral at midnight. And yeah, we're talking about my favorite, the Cologne Cathedral. Tucker on race and Ben Shapiro. Trump calls it an invasion. Ramses was white, supposedly. Anti-whites in 2024. Your comments, calls, and questions. And then there's this. I met an old woman at the bar last night. She looked pretty good for a 60-year-old. In fact, she wasn't too bad at all. And I found myself thinking she probably had a really hot daughter. We drank a couple of beers, and she asked if I'd ever had a sportsman double. What's that? I asked. It's a mother and daughter threesome, she said. Hmm. As my mind began to embrace the idea... And I wondered what her daughter might look like. I said, no, I haven't. We drank a bit more. And then she said with a wink, tonight's your lucky night. We went back to her place. We walked in. She put on the hall light and shouted upstairs. You still awake, Ma? Ladies and gentlemen, it is 5 p.m. in the once great state of Virginia, across from Mordor on the Potomac, 10 in London, 7 in Sydney, and midnight in Moscow. And it is a happy new year in Moscow as it is midnight. Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen, our brothers and sisters in that wonderful country over there of Russia. We circle the globe as one people with many countries, even when there are gross things that happen, like the 60-year-old and her mother. It's great to see everybody over there at Odyssey today. Hello to you. Seems to be up and running okay. Entropy is up and running as well. You may financially gift there on Odyssey or on Entropy. Check it out if you would like to do so. DLive is up and running, and you can financially gift there as well if you would like to. Hello to those who are over on Rumble. And uh, we already see, says, uh, hello to you over there uh, at JS over there on Rumble. Hello, hello. And we also have uh, Cash App is up and running if you would like, like to financially gift there as well over the course of this gathering. So a subscribe star, I'll be keeping my eye on all of uh, the above. Uh, you can financially gift in cryptocurrency at Cash App, as well as heading over to newwideguilt.org, newwideguilt.org. Click on the financial gift tab. You will see the wallets I use, as well as a snail mail address at which you can reach yours truly. It is a truly dazzling day in service to white well being. This New Year's Eve, and nothing will stop us from having our gathering, ladies and gentlemen. We are an amazing community. We have proven that this year, so many victories, so many things, of course, to celebrate. And we are going to make 24 even better than 23 was for us. 23, so many victories, so much headwind. 
But it's been glorious. Wonderful to see all of you here in service to white well-being today on this Sunday. No place better you can be Sunday evening, Monday morning, of course, our brothers and sisters in Australia and New Zealand and uh, elsewhere have already rung in the new year. And we are waiting here on the East Coast as we celebrate in Moscow, one of Western Kind's glorious cities, as we celebrate there the grand new year and the tide continues as the globe turns, at least if you believe in it being spherical. But nonetheless, <laughs> We are here and we're in service. It's great to see everybody. Western is here. Slots is here. White Student Transmission. Melissa is here. Franklin is here. Great to see you, good sir. We're going to get into our first item today, which is going to be, why don't we watch some Tucker first? How does that sound on this 24? We're going to war in 24. Metaphorically, metaphorically, going to war in 24. No more playing Mr. Nice Guy in service to white well being. We are doing big things. Let me go ahead and pull this up on the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Running a bit, uh, running a bit behind on some things that happens sometimes, but uh, we'll be able to get up and running here in just a moment as <clears throat> soon as we can find tucker and uh where he is where is tucker where is he let me try this if i grab that and i do that there we go bing tucker let's go ahead and change it to that is everybody having a glorious new year already a new year's eve how do you feel about 2023? How do you feel about the prospect of uh, 2024 and the victories that we are going to have? It's going to be a hell of a year, I can tell you this. With the election, the anti-whites are, are going to be pulling out all the stops. Yet again, the lies are going to be thick. The fools in their masses are going to be following the fools. And there's nothing but the good and the noble and the dazzling can do. But... Feed those pills, feed that remedy, cast that white magic into the air and try to recapture our destiny because the world is fallen and uh, the West is fallen. And that's why we have to take it back. Hyperborean Dream is here. Great to see you. Helio Sabbath. Cool. Baba J Magic Pants. Amandi is here. One of Western kind is here. Matt Mittens, uh, wonderful to see you. Lady Anglo is with us. So is Misty. So is LG. Fantastic. It's the humidity, y'all. Yes, it is. It's great to see you. Coconut is here. Wonderful to see you, sister. Scott is here. Scott is with us. Scott, yeah, is here. Who else has joined us on this New Year's Eve? Make sure that your friends and family know. Yes, the Unifier is here. Wonderful to see you, sister. Hyperborean Jareem Austin is with us. Bobby is here. Great to see you all. Odin Sire was number one here in the live chat today. Great to see you. Thank you so much. And it looks like we're up and running everywhere. Okay. The streams are running. Uh, the streams are running, ladies and gentlemen. Did you watch Tucker over on uh, this show here, Breaking Points? Has anybody seen this already? First time I'm seeing it. I have never watched these people before. Melissa says, uh, really positive about this year, even the challenges. We can come up with your method and uh, Team WWB. This is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen to that. It absolutely is. We had such an amazing year. Things that we changed in the world. Things in our lives that we changed. Things with our relative to life, uh, relative to family, personal life, relative to work life, relative to colleagues, relative to neighbors. We had, we have changed, further changed the way our victimization is discussed on planet Earth in multiple, multiples of our language. Think 
of those victories, ladies and gentlemen. Think of those big victories, those big Vs that we've achieved in 2023. It is truly amazing. And we have, this was the year of redemption. 2023 will forever be the year of vindication. The year that we have been vindicated for all of the arguments that we made in the, pre, in the preceding years, all the disagreements, all of the people that came after, all of the slander. All, we were right. We were right every time. Pat yourself on the back. It is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And, and that's why we're going to be talking about it a little bit later on our gathering today. That, uh, you know, the, the test, if you will, of making the argument to the greater to the greater white sympathetic sphere, explicit white sympathetic sphere, that test is over. We now know the answers, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later and how maybe we will comport ourselves moving forward. We're going to continue being dazzling. We're going to be dazzling, darling. We're going to be soaking dazzling. This coming year is going to be brutal. It's going to be brutal, and we're going to be dazzling. And uh, we will be the people who are achieving the changes in the world. We will be the people who are changing the dialectic, the, the language across society. We will continue to be that people, rest assured. And uh, we will find out. We will find out how the chips will fall out. But it's going to be a fight this year. 24 is war. It is going to be a fight this year, metaphorically. It's going to be a fight to the finish this year with the election. Uh, Pear Lady is here. Hello to you. Who else has showed, showed up? Is that Boar? Boarya is here. Is that what it says? Rune is here. Cool name. Great to see you all. How do you feel? I had to listen to your segment on Red Ice. You presented the absolute epitome of good culture. Well, thank you very much for that. I definitely appreciate it. Myra is with us. The Gulag, the Gulag has entered the house. Let's continue changing the world. Let me know while we're together here today. We're definitely going to go beyond uh, our normal four and a half hours. I'll, I'll be here at least. Uh, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how far we go. We'll see how much energy we have. We'll see how active and alive. The community is here, and uh, if they're staying up, everybody's got to go to work in this community. It's not like some of the others where they can they can immediately, phone goes off, and they're gaming at like 3.30 in the morning, and they're like, yeah, I can watch that stream. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see what Tucker had to say. Breaking points. But everything comes to an end, our lives included, and so yeah, no, that's definitely going away. First Right as we start the video, stunner, everything comes to an end, including our lives. Only that type of deep wisdom can you get from Tuckerson. Tuckerson. Can everybody hear Tucker? Okay, how is the audio right there? It looks like it's as high as it gets. So let me know and we will continue. But I also think, not to be preachy, they devalued their own currency by lying too much. I mean, you know, people lie, they share the truth, they hold things. I mean, that's just a part of the human condition. But you can't be just like a flat out propaganda organization for like Pfizer because it's just too obvious. Mm -hmm. And when people figure out that that's what you are, they don't trust you. And in a world with choices, they will choose not to believe you. And then they will choose not to watch you. And, that's and the numbers show that that's happening. So the other thing I would say is that it's not. OK, first of all, that's where you people in this community are going to be on the, the key vive. We are aware that just because mainstream media is uh, losing its audience does not mean that the anti-white propaganda or control of the resistance to anti-whiteism, and that's what's most pertinent, decreases. In fact, it increases because you have not been able to be influenced directly by your peers with mainstream media. There was the implied, there was the, the mainstream media telling you what everybody else believed and then showing you that in entertainment. As a consequence, you believed because entertainment is received as fact by the subconscious mind, you believed and perceived that that was the case everywhere. Now, in the live chats and in the threads of the alternative media, 
you will receive the immediate feedback from anti-whites, from anti-whites who are being uh, paid to do it for a living, from anti-whites who are doing it uh, because it is their it is their won't, it is their religion to be anti-white, it is their hatred of you to be anti-white. That they will be in the live they will be in the live chats. So the manipulation with alternative media continues, and it continues now not only by way of the content creator who is giving you the info, uh, true, false, or otherwise, but also by way of audience members. And that, of course, is far more powerful. That's why uh, as much as possible, media, or, or rather advertising companies, are using peer-to-peer -peer advertising. That's the way of the future. That's where the money is. Because if somebody comes up to you and says, uh, my watch is great, you're going to perceive that there's no motive behind that other than that the watch is great. So <clears throat> be careful when you hear alternative media content creators saying that, oh, this is great now because nothing is, there are no strings on me. The, the output is the outcome, the trajectory, that's what's relevant. That's, it's that space in between, that sort of liminal space in between. Whereas, where, whereas we have to be to recapture our destiny, where we have to be to understand what's really being said. Simply about convincing all 350 million Americans of something, the way our society and all societies are structured, if you can convince you know, the top 2% of the population who engage with this stuff daily, who are probably making most of the decisions, you can have a massive effect on the whole country. Wow. It's kind of like Jason's been saying that forever. How do you influence the most powerful? So Tucker Carlson is saying there a truth. If you can influence the most powerful people, then you then you can change everything. How do you influence the most powerful? You can't start printing the money. You're not going to be able to take over their streets with armies. They pay for those people in the streets, dumbasses. I think it's so funny when these when these uh, midwittery, they're like, well, they're violent in the streets and they get what they want. <laughs> Why are you talking about it then? Why aren't you out in the streets getting violent and getting what you want? I wonder why. They're paying for them when they're in the streets. Where is it that the most powerful in the country, in all the countries of the West, lost the debate, lost the morality at the dinner table? They're human beings just like us. I've, I figured it all out decades ago. Thank God y'all showed up. We're changing the world now. So if the guy who collects trash for a living or who is a lawyer for a living or who is, uh, works for the county, uh, going out and collecting the, the, the animal carcasses. I don't know what that job is. Perhaps somebody does. Or you're the guy who owns uh, 50 companies. It doesn't matter. You still have to sit down at the dinner table, at the water cooler, at the lathe, and you have to win the moral debate to win the debate. And when you win the moral debate, the mind is what activates the body, the deeds. You win the day. You win the moral debate. You win the day. Oh, God, why can't we be? Maybe in 24, maybe in 24, we will be listened to. They will recognize, recognize, mother, recognize. And so like Substack, for example, you know, I, I can't believe how many Substacks I subscribe to. I pay for because I, I want to support it. But also I get. Bros and Bros is here. June. Hello, June. One of Western Kai, let everybody know that we are going free on New Year's Eve. A lot. I mean, they've taken the place of what small magazines were when I was a kid or books were when my father was a kid. You know, a place for people to air their views in a longer form um, and in a more honest way. Like what is going on in our society? You can actually learn a lot from Substack. You learn absolutely nothing from the cable news channel. So 
just that. It's a small company. It'll probably never be a huge company, but it's had a huge effect. Shows right. like that's a vested interest in our, our motive. He's motivated now being an alternative media content creator to praise Substack that he knows he won't lose audience to. Come on. Come on. Let's stop being the gullible white boobies that we've been forever. Come on. Like yours that came completely out of nowhere, you know, with people who I mean, we like boobies, but seriously, let's stop being boobies. We're not nationally famous. And then you become nationally famous just because you're being honest. I mean, like, look at your own life. It kind of tells the story. I don't know how sure. old you were when you started it, but your ascent and, and the ascent of a number of people like you, not just to cover politics, but Slots making a great point. We don't need academic power. We need moral power precisely. And this morality has to be uh, one born in the psychological defense against the psychological warfare waged against us, which is what the white positive morality is. As you can see, Christian morality or ancient European religion morality, all of it defeated by anti-whiteism. Who are you know, effectively cultural commentators or comedians who are honest, Theo Vaughn. You know, how many people have heard of Theo Vaughn last year? M not that it's better, but that it was defeated. Or not that it's not better, but that it was defeated. Maybe, you know, some, but all of a sudden Theo Vaughn becomes this phenomenon because he's honest. I mean, I, so there's a massive space that's all a reaction against the lying. And I think it's like the bright spot in America in 2023. Oh, well, it's very kind of you to say. I think one of the things it's that- true. I've what a lot of people want to hear from from you, I think, is that you played the game at the highest level. And so are all of our shield maiden is with us. It's great to be with authentic people. Well, welcome. Thank you for that. It's great to be here with you. Cool. Papa J Magic and Azimuth Clark are in as cool as in the how cool is in. The I'm feeling sanguine, baby. Are suspicions true about what's being told to people in the anchor chair about what you can say, about what you can't say, about commercial impact, about the pressure in the cooker situation as to what's being controlled that people are seeing? You know, I really should write a book on this. I'm, this guy is non-white, correct? I wonder how many... Well, maybe we'll come back. Well, maybe we'll come back to that. Yes. Um, if not that anyone would, would read it, but just to sort of work out my own thoughts about it. You know, again, when you're working in a business that's mm -hmm. that regimented, you know, the show every night, exactly the same time, can be late. You know, it's like your whole life. And I wrote my script. So my whole life was about writing my script. Like that's kind of all I did. So I, I was telling you that to admit that I missed a lot. I personally, because this was not my first show, it was like my eighth show. Nat is here. Hello and welcome. Uh, that I'd had over the course of my life. I made a very like clear deal with my employer out loud and just said, look, I'm not going to be told what to say or think, period. It's not my company. If you don't like what I'm saying, take me off the air. But I'm not going to sort of say or not say something um, because that would violate my conscience and I can't do right. that. So, And they agreed to their great credit. And then at the end, they exercised their option and pulled the plug, which is was their prerogative. And I wasn't really mad. I was confused, but I wasn't mad about it. And I'm not mad now. So I'm not... Austin says, uh, Cucker Carlson... <laughs> really sure, yeah. but I will say, looking back on it, the Ukraine war and the vax. Dr. Igor is in the house. Angry Scandinavian is with us. Great to see the both of you. And to some extent, January 6th, on, on which I think I've been fundamentally vindicated. I, know, I had out of step views on all three things, but two of them were absolutely, you know, were red lines, like you couldn't go there. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, I think for different reasons. The Vax, because obviously the, the pharma companies are the biggest advertiser in media. Mm -hmm. They don't advertise to sell their products. You're not, you know, people aren't buying mostly. You know, they can't buy them directly. So why are they doing that? Well, they're doing that not to sell the product, but to influence the coverage of the product. And that's very effective. So I crossed that line in a big way because I thought the Vax was... John Black is here. Herman is here. Welcome, welcome. Let everybody know that we are live, going, free gathering, New Year's Eve celebrating the glorious 2023 that we had uh, because it is the year of vindication for me and team WWB. Uh, right on all the counts, it was amazing. It's glorious. It's dazzling. It's dangerous, and it turns out it was. And then on Ukraine, it's like here. every single person in the top 1% for income and influence, like literally almost every single person heard this weird frequency, this dog whistle that commanded them to worship Zelensky. And I'm not exactly sure what that was. I looked at Zelensky and I'm like, that guy's really bad. Yes. He wants to get my country involved in a nuclear war. And, you know, I don't know him. 
Um, so I'm not attacking him personally, but anyone who wants my kids to risk death in a nuclear war is my enemy. It was just kind of that simple. So I was like, this guy's evil in the, to the extent that he's acting against my children's interests. And saying that was like, oh my gosh, it was like a bomb going off. Like people couldn't even deal with it. And I'm not quite sure what that was other than everybody in Aspen, Nantucket, Jackson and Bethesda was like. They, they, this is Tucker's uh, cucking, Tucker's cucker. This is where he decides that he's going to have fun. He's said it before many times uh, that it's uh, these white people. It's white people. And then it's the white country club. It's the white ladies. He's got no problem saying that. No way will he say, say anti-white Jews. It's all these anti-white Jews that were like, when it comes to Israel, is he going to say, which clearly it's all the anti-white Jews that support Israel and uh, all the anti-white uh, white zionists who support israel that want all the money going he's not going to say that are you kidding me he's not going to say that it's fine to go after white people and he has been for years this uh we should say victim blind maybe that's a way to say it he won't point out acknowledge except occasionally we have swashed up into his his uh, brain enough that he has used anti-white here and there, and we've made a big celebration after it. Uh, every single time we have uh, targeted for the swashing, and then the swashing has resulted in an outcome that, of course, we're not going to get credit for. We're not going to be thanked for. This just happening that we can talk about later. But ultimately, this guy's position is that we're not going to acknowledge that white people are the target that white people are being victimized. It's all about being blind when it comes to the white race's victimization. He's not blind when it comes to white people doing bad. He'll happily mention that. He's not blind when it comes to non-white people being victimized. He'll also happily mention that. But he's got no problem whatsoever uh, blaming white people and ignoring our victimization all in on this thing. And someday historians will discover why. I really don't know, but but that fact is true. That's such an important point. And this is another thing too. I've always respected the most is, you know, to a certain extent, I rejected the system early on, but you came up in it and you also openly gave them the middle finger, even while growing up next to them, living next to them for years. Yeah. I've watched it with Ukraine and I watch it now with Israel. You know, I watched in particular, there was a lot of consternation around some sticky. comments you made, I think by Ben Shapiro and other, where you were like, well, I've never seen this level of care about Americans who are dying of right. fentanyl, which I think is a traditional nationalist message. And yet I've watched the entire kind of right Kingdom of Vinland, uh, smell the glove. <laughs> hey, for Null is here. The champion has arrived. Great to see you, brother. Is that Natalie is here? Hello and welcome. Right wing ecosystem. Patriot. And fundamentally, what is a third world conflict? Now, we can say support, you know, not support. We can have criticisms, et cetera, of that. But what explains this like literal allegiance to a uh, narrative on Ukraine, on Israel? Why is it that so many of these people don't seem to have the same level of care for actual American citizens? You know, I find it really distressing. And in both of those conflicts, I approached it. That's just, by the way, I mean, these immediately strikes me as the setup question agreed to beforehand. I'm not saying that it actually was, but it just sounds like it. Set up question agreed to beforehand of here is uh, your opportunity to talk about race blind populism in the United. That's what it sounds like to me. With a clean conscience, because I just don't have strong feelings one way or the other. And I'm not hostile. I've never hated Ukraine. I don't have any feelings about Ukraine and Russia. Same thing. I've never been to either place and I, I'm not invested emotionally. So I could just I can just look at it from an American perspective. In the case of Israel and the Arab world, I've spent a fair amount of time in both and I like both. And I felt terrible for the people who are killed. On Here's something I, I got to mention. When it comes to most conservative types, this, this argument from ignorance of human nature is, is, is comical and obscene because they'll make these arguments like these really cold, these, these, like you're talking I don't, about a math problem about a foreign country as though the the earth and and conflicts in foreign countries as though the earth is populated by things uh, other than human beings governing human society and so it's this i just don't understand it's so weird i'm not involved uh, it, it's just a matter of from an american uh, perspective it's just a matter 
And it, therefore, it should be this. You could see how ignorant it is and how it can go nowhere, how it can how it cannot get to get us to an outcome where we favor ourselves. You're not you're not you're not going to favor America. You're not going to get white people to favor America until you get white people to favor white people. You're not going to get white people to favor uh, the United Kingdom until you get white people to favor white people. That's the bottom line. So this this race blind, multiracial populist angle that they are clearly have set up and continue to put the coal to across the West as the opposition to the anti-white superstructure just leads us right in the same direction. It is it is a remaking of the conservatism that we've observed over the past 30, 40 years. And it leads us the exact same direction, straight to perdition. On October 7th, I still do. So I didn't, I, I had no weird motive. I was just like thinking about it from an American perspective. Pep is this is good for us or is it not? And I was just amazed by- Pep is here. Hello, Pep. So why does it matter? Why did I say that? Maybe I should, I don't know if everybody's going to be able to get it. Because the people with the power to make the decisions- they are human beings. They have emotion involved. There is morality involved. You're not going to be able to go to a group of people or one person at the dinner table or at the water cooler and say, we should coldly analyze whether or not it, it, it's beneficial for the United States. And right there is one of the sticking points to fight Israel's wars or to defend Israel so that they can uh, inflict injury that the majority of the rest of the world finds abhorrent. You're not going to be able to do that because you're going up against, number one, remember I said the one sticking point, what is America? What is America's allegiance? What is America's purpose? What is, what is America? This is why it's got to be white people. You have like this argument and I've been just shaking my head endlessly, 23, I, I swear, I'm going to need some meclazine. And they're like, America first, America first. What's America? What is America in 2023, 2024? Canada first. What's Canada? It's, we have to be for Western kind, full stop. That's where America comes from. That's where Canada comes from. That's where the West comes from western kind america first just opens the door to the definition of what the place actually is now so you're going to get into an argument this cold or analytical sort of argument about how is it Amer is it putting america first if america is fighting israel's wars or funding israel's wars or funding what israel is doing in palestine is it and you're going to come up against somebody who is full of piss and vinegar, who is righteously indignant and morally driven and is going to beat the living shit out of you in that conversation. You, you cannot win. We have always lost. This is our entire lives losing, parents' lives losing, grandparents' lives losing. Enough is enough. By the intolerance, and the willingness to immediately go to invective and character assassination. And it's like, well, I, I said, you know, first of all, if the people. So they're willing to go to invective and character. Uh, just exactly what I was saying. And what happened? You lose. People who live in Gaza who are being moved out are so evil and dangerous that they can't live in the region. Why would you want them to move into my country? I mean, those. Th what are you saying? They can't live there because it's too scary to live. Now. Who's saying that? Who is he talking about? They didn't give a name. Maybe that's a straw man. I think it's probably a conservative straw man. You're saying that they're too scary to be here, but a, a or to be there. And then it's anti-whites are the ones that want to bring them in. Harder core anti-whites or different anti-whites, we should say, that want to bring them into America. So that sounds like a conservative straw man argument against the liberals, against the leftists, against the wokies. Maybe in 24, the term wokies will finally die. Next to them, but they can live next to me. 
So I, I, at that point, that's, I felt very hostile about that because it showed such contempt for me and my family and my neighbors and my country. It is my country. That's how I feel. Nobody is saying that. I mean, this guy, look at how rich he is. And this is what we're talking about. Franklin told me that in, in a, uh, a video that he was in, he said he's never lifted a weight in his life. Look at how many people follow. The white race is sick. You're going to follow somebody that's never lifted a weight in his life? We, we need real men as leaders. He can be fine. This kind of a guy can be fine for uh, providing information and uh, you know pull his nose out of the book and say, I, I think this or that. And then if it's valuable, then a real leader can accept it or not. But you have people who would love for this guy to become president. Remember how all how many times now it just keeps recurring. They're like Tucker for president. Same people who will say wokies, same, just same, same bunch who will go hang out at the Motown concert to prove how uh, how how uh, uh, how much an allegiance they are with the anti-white metric of morality. But this guy right here benefiting from these micro socialistic environments. I don't want a country that continues to have micro socialistic communities where they benefit and get rich off the rest. I want a country, I want a West where the morality is that you can't be anti-white, which would mean that these, these yuppie boys like Tucker would not be able to live off the country boys like me. That the moment they started doing that, the social tapestry would burn them to the ground. We can't have that anymore. Why? Because when you have socialistic communities, they're anti-white. They are harming the totality of the white population, ipso facto, to benefit themselves, which means that when opportunities to enrich themselves even if anti-white are presented, they will take advantage of those opportunities. They always have. So all of these other ideas, vehicles, ideologies, et cetera, perpetuate the Tucker world. And I, we don't want the Tucker world anymore. I don't want the Tucker world anymore. I want white people, the, these kind of Tucker yuppies, as they get out there with their flabby little bodies, Meanwhile, their wife, she's coming over uh, to my place. But the Tucker boys, they're going out there. And with their flabby little bodies, they're getting on their yachts. And they got their little dockers and they got their little polo shirts on and they got all the money, got a really nice car. They got a bunch of beautiful uh, females running around. These guys absolutely living off of me and the rest of the country at our expense. And this is the environment that you'll have with any of these other ideologies. This will continue. It will be the, it'll be these different uh, alma mater, uh, the fraternity groupings, all of these different little groupings, socialistic groupings that will be anti-white as they've always been. This is why I've argued forever. And we just, we're not, I'm not going to do it with the masses anymore because they're clearly for any number of reasons, not able to get it. Uh, that it's not you're not going to be able to remove another group of people and everything be OK. Could you imagine? Could you imagine have taking uh, some poor SOB who's like, well, we just got to get rid of them, them yids. And then let's just say, theoretically, all of the Jewish people decide they're going to go to Israel. So now they're gone and they're still living in poverty and misery and it's and it and and now it's the tuckers who are just laughing at them like it's suddenly better if the guy that is sitting guy who's got his boot on your boot on your throat is a white guy like a tucker that's better ridiculous you feel about it anyway it's all of our country and um so i was like disgusted by that and i said so and i don't know why that's weird why wouldn't i be offended by that and then it was immediately you know, I'm a hater or a bigot or something like that. It, none of that registered with me because, you know, first of all, I've been attacked for so long, but attacks that aren't true. You know, if somebody said, you know, wow. You and, and this is this is the kind of thing that could come out of a high schooler's mouth. But Tucker for president. Idiots. <laughs>
Like those things are, I think just aren't true. It's just not true. When somebody calls me names, it's just not true. You've, you've gained some weight this summer. I'd be like, oh, it would hurt my feelings because it's true. <laughs> but if someone's like, if someone's like, oh, you're a hater or you hate, you know, that's not true. So I, I don't really care. But I, I did think it showed like the level of not just corruption, which I knew, but of like emotional instability and crazy. I mean, there are people, and I stopped reading any of it, but there are people on the right who have spent the last two months every single day focused on a conflict in a foreign country as their own country becomes dangerously unstable on the brink of financial collapse with tens of millions of people who shouldn't be here in the country. We don't know their identities or the purpose. The, the vast majority of people who have taken up the uh, Ukrainian war and, and support of that is just doing it because the mass of, the, of a human population is, are just sheep. They're just bovine. They're just going to follow whatever the power says. And the power uh, wants this protracted war against Russia to weaken Russia. And they've got the, the, the white people, the blood and bones and all that are that they can feed into the machine and the Ukrainian population. And so they're going to do that. Both sets of uh, these oligarchs are all anti-white. There, there aren't there aren't any good guys. Uh, it's all bad when when uh, brothers, white brothers are killing white brothers. When it comes to Israel, it's a different thing. Let's see if they're going to broach that of their being here, like stuff that could destroy the country for real and make it impossible for my kids to live here. They've said nothing about that. And they're focused with laser intensity on foreign conflicts. And I'm like, at some point, it, it, I've got four kids. If I'm so caught up in the problems of my neighbor's children and completely ignoring my own children as they get addicted to drugs and kill themselves, you know, I'm not against helping my neighbor's kids, but clearly I don't love my kids. I mean, that's, that's you know, that's the only logic. Totally weak argument. And it, it appeals to the average thinker. So that's why you see so many midwits in con basic bitch conservatism is it's, it's replete with these easily accessible arguments like this. If I care about my kids and if I care, I want to take care of your kids too. I mean, it, it makes sense to a lot of people, but in an actual argument with an anti-white, you get steamrolled with that argument. Logical conclusion, and they don't care about the country at all. And that's, you know, that's kind of their prerogative, but they usually will throw in there and race doesn't matter. Unless non-whites are getting hurt, then it matters. But I do because I have no choice because I'm from here. My family's been here hundreds of years. I plan to stay here. Like I I'm shocked by how little they care about the country and including the person you mentioned. And I, I can't imagine. What is the country? What is the country? And how someone like that could get an audience of people who claimed about to care about America because he doesn't, obviously. Right. Right. Well, I mean, Tucker, we've seen it too on free. And I guess this is why I, ca I can't see Tucker ever being interested in having me on. Um, is because, you know, I'm going to focus. I'm not, I always do, but I would focus on our victimization as white people. And it, it doesn't matter that I don't have, I don't say anything negative because I don't believe anything negative about entire groups of humanity. I only have a problem with anti-whites, irrespective of their race. Really doesn't matter to Tucker. He wants the white race to not be able to be identified. At least it appears that way. He could he could correct me. He could have me on and he could set me straight that he cares about the victimization of white people. We could have that discussion. I'd, I'd happily have it with him. Free speech. I mean, people who built become multimillionaires who've you know made entire careers, who've you know literally became escapers with us. Who else has joined the London Thunder from down under? Famous, you know, on this very reason. I know you've spoken about this previously, but it's very important to our audience as well. Is that, you know, standing up for. Oh, that's funny. Amandy wrote Tucker Tubbies. <laughs> Who said that? Or is that his audience? Oh, my gosh. Are you a Tucker Tubby? And they're those they're those like little like creatures, aren't they? What are them things? And there's doesn't their stomach like light up or something? <laughs> That's that's absolutely a great visual for a, a Tucker audience, man. Somebody's just like, I'm a Tucker tubby. Are you a Tucker tubby too? How many senior citizens are able to say that? Although now the audience, God, remember there, talk about vindicated again. Remember all the claims that were made about Fox is done, it's over. Big content creators. 
Fox will now end. And I was like, are you all idiots? It's going nowhere. And I named all those other gigantic uh, names from Fox that and Fox just kept chugging right along. Vindication. Free speech rights that people you do disagree with is just is probably the most important exercise. White advocate, Teletubby, uh, Lunder, tell. <laughs> but what is it? Southern Thunder is here. Cool name. It's some goofy looking creature, isn't it? For children <laughs> and the child minded, like Tucker's audience. And we've yeah. seen some of that come for American citizens on Palestine. How do you work through this too? When yeah, Tucker should bring me on and he can apologize as one of the Tucker yuppies that grew up with all the connections, that grew up with all that inside. Uh, hey, he knows him. He knows you. We'll get you in. Uh, while guys like me were driving by and the shitty pickup truck that broke down and it's raining and working on it in the rain on the side of the road. And then the Tucker drives on by you know, with his with his uh, two or three children in the back uh, of his, you know, what is it? What is it that Tucker probably drives? Not a Bentley. He could buy one. But what do you see Tucker in? I almost see him in a Saab. But do they make one expensive enough for Tucker? And we're both under such immense pressure, even social pressure. Of like, how could you support this? Um, you know, take maybe the context of the university presidents. We've got billionaires like right. Bill Ackman, um, who's there. I'm curious what you make of this. My assessment is they're upset that they're not included as marginalized within the DEI regime. They claim to be against right. the DEI regime. But we uh, uh, Pep says a clown car. BMW says Lady Anglo. Probably Porsche. Gilios Abbott says maybe Volvo. Ooh, Rune says Volvo. That's probably true, too. Yeah, he's boring. So it's not going to be something exciting. It's definitely not going to have uh, two ass print and dents on the hood. That can be known for sure. That can be absolutely, you could bet on that. Will you really keep going to make sure that, you know, all this racial hatred and all this other that's been enshrined in elite institutions will be? Is it racial hatred or is it anti-white hatred? Is it racial or is it anti-white? You know, once you get a win, are you really going to keep going past that? What's your assessment of this general moment on Palestinian, you know, free speech hypocrisy and more? Well, we, we have free speech in this country and it applies to people we disagree with by definition, um, period. I mean, it's it's the, the first right guaranteed that, of course, it precedes government. It's given to us by God, as the document right. says. But it's the first right enumerated in our founding documents. So it's the foundation of the country. And so he says that as though there is a God to ensure that it's the case. What a world. What a world we live in. God, when I was a child walking around, I remember I had like the jacket that was too big and I couldn't quite move. And I would just look at adults. I would hear what they would say. And all the way back then, I thought, this is not good. We're not. <laughs> this isn't good. You can't give any, any ground. Archangel is here. Says Mestizo Cough is with us. Let everybody know that we're it's it might be New Year's Eve, but we are still going free. We got an awesome going free gathering already given powerful takes that you all can take out into your world, change the world with. Right. Let everybody know that we're here. Faces here. Uh, let's see. Archangel says Saab went under. Oh, it's so we'd have to buy an old one. OK, with Pontiac, Osmobile and Pontiac. They were under GM umbrella. Uh, about a uh, when the, when they went under. Okay, so it would have to be. I wondered why I haven't seen a sob in a long time. <laughs> I thought, man, those things don't work for shit. They must not even last a week on the road. Ground on that, like none. And anyone who would give ground on that, and I would include the governor of Florida, who I think is a good governor, and I like him personally, but signing a you know, signing a censorship bill um, in first completely unacceptable. And I don't care what your motive. The censorship bill. Now, which one is he talking about? Is he talking about the leafleting law that we saw? That Tits Minadeo caused to be uh, come to existence? Or is it something else? Motives are. I mean, in, in, this spring, there was some black nationalist group that was indicted by the Biden yes. Justice Department um, for its views on Russia. 
And my first thought was, you know, that's not acceptable. Now, how much do I have in common with the black nationalist group that I guess probably hates people who look like me? Um, actually, I probably 100% chance I. Uh, another thing the cuck conservatives do is they love to tell you about some radically anti white group that they will totally defend, that they will go to the mat for. I will die at your feet for your right to speak. Black nationalist, you anti-white black nationalist group, even though you want me dead, but I won't talk about that because that means white people being victimized. I will die or they will do, but the, will they mention somebody like me? Of course not. I'd like him if I had dinner with him. <laughs> to be honest, I'm sure they're right. really good guys. I mean, I just sort of feel that, but, um, but whatever, it was irrelevant to me. You can't do that. You can't try to put people in prison for expressing opinions the government doesn't like or the ruling class doesn't like or any opinion, any opinion, any opinion must be protected or no opinions are protected. So anybody who seeks to limit my ability to say what I think, believe what I want, is treating me as a slave, as a slave. I mean, not as a human being and certainly not as a citizen. That's just really well, clear. I don't know why here. people don't grasp this. But, and, but, you know, one sort of parenthetical ironic note to see people who spent a career mocking, you know, the sensitive liberals on campus who want safe spaces and they're, you know, feeling in danger because opinions are violence. Say that exact same thing. People feel unsafe. What? You know, no, no. You know, words are not violence. You have to tolerate them in a free society or it's not a free society. As so can you imagine? Think about this again. Take it easy. Yes. Happy New Year. Can you imagine a group of people in conflict with another group? And this first group here will lecture each other on obeying all the rules. You absolutely have to let them No. We should have absolutely imprisoned everybody on a college campus that was preaching anti-whiteism. We should have absolutely not allowed them to preach anti-whiteism on a college campus. That's what should have happened. We have generations of the consequence of allowing them to preach anti-whiteism on college campuses. Now, and for decades, for decades, you can't preach a single contradictory opinion without being shut down and you still have cuck conservatives saying we have to allow them to speak are you out of your mind are you what is it going to take for you to learn i mean i realize that in your white ass all white neighborhood where everybody is soft as pillows that it's really comfortable place to talk like that but the rest of us are living in can beirut okay so we're not we're not good with that position anymore. Take your heads out of your lily white asses. To the question of DEI, the whole thing is Jim Crow. I mean, it's grotesque. I mean, we have to understand as as white people that people the these these yuppie white people who have who benefit from these micro socialistic environments that they are every bit as anti white and every bit as destructive of the totality of us as any non-white group out there's leadership that, that also is anti-white. We have, you have to realize that just because these people are white doesn't make them good guys, good people. Something else that, uh, we've had nothing but seven years of me arguing this and People coming in to tell me how I'm wrong and a murderer as well, by the way. Did you hear that he was a murderer? I also heard he was from Jupiter. It's crazy. He might even, he might, he makes a lot of proctology jokes. Do you think he's, I think he might be a proctologist because he likes looking at ass. He's an ass looker. Have you ever thought about that? Why do you listen to him? The idea that certain people on the basis of immutable characteristics get certain privileges and other people are hurt on the basis of their immutable characteristics, like that's totally incompatible with America. Hey, mother, what group of people is getting hurt on the basis of their immutable characteristics? Why did you, why are you turning this into a big abstraction? There's a, there's a real group of people. There are real lives like mine that are run down, trod over, lost, totally lost. I don't get the decades back. I don't get the 20s, I don't get the third, I don't get the decades back. So why are you turning my life into a fucking abstraction? And you want to believe that this guy is good because he's white? If you just get rid of 
the non-white anti-whites, everything will be fine then. Yeah, because this is what I want to have to live with as my overlord. I feel much better with my overlord looking like this. It's got to be a colorblind meritocracy or it can't keep going because it's a pluralistic society. There's no majority of anything that has you know, anything in common. So to keep the country together... Yeah, it, it, it can't be a, a meritocracy until we get rid of the yuppie socialistic circles. They've got to be gone. That is every bit as, as in, in, the, in the stars of importance of things that have to happen if we are actually going to have an environment that is white positive, that is pristine, that is not anti-white. The, these circles where Tucker comes from are the circles that bring in the non-white people that some of whom are anti-white, some of whom are wonderful people. They are the ones that did this. They are the ones that keep doing this. Has to be based on merit. I mean, game this out. And also, by the way, we're going to get to violence really soon. Yeah, let, let's, let's, let's get an environment where it's based on merit where your father and his connections and mother and her connections can get you into these wonderful places and to these wonderful circles for hiring, for schooling, et cetera. Let's make it impossible. The stuff continues. Right. If you tell people that this group or that group is bad because they're in that group. You know, and, and I'll tell you what, this is like, talk about pulling down hell on your own head. When these conservatives say, it's not about race because they because they want to make an abstraction out of my victimization, out of your victimization. They don't want to name you. They want to make it an abstraction so that they can be actually referring to blacks or to Joes or to Arabs or somebody else, just not you, Whitey. Uh, when they do that and they say, oh, well, this is it's actually about uh, economics. So that remember when they're saying that they're Marxists. Classical Marxism. But when they say that, they're bringing hell down on top of them because the West is full of middle class and poor white people like me who hate people like you, Tucker. We don't, we hate the fact that we have to fight up through uh, being hated as white people and are condemned to endless poverty as a consequence of it. Well, white people like you live in these beautiful gated communities. Everybody has the nice cars and you sneer at white people like me. So we're, we are more than ready to take all of your money away. You understand? So keep talking about Marxism. And now it's really just, it's about a class warfare. It's not about race. So we'll be impassioned about the fact that you're ignoring our victimization because we're white like you. Uh, we'll be impassioned by that, and then we will happily raise you on your Marxist claim in this game of uh, of uh, pool. We'll happily raise you poker. We'll happily raise you and uh, take all of that away. How does that sound? Because they look a certain way or because their parents looked a certain way. If you tell them that over time, that group's going to get hurt. And we don't need to guess about this. Well, actually, it happened in Europe not that long ago, but it's happened throughout history. So why are we tolerating this even for a second? And the reason, of course, is white guilt and self-hatred. Well, whatever. Get over it. It's not about white people. It's not about any specific group. It's about. So he just said, we're tolerating this because of white guilt, which, of course, is a consequence of anti-whiteism, white guilting us. Please use that as a verb in 24. Uh, I've been teaching that as a verb for decades. They white guilt us. They are white guilting us. We feel white guilt because we have been white guilted. It is a mag it is a massive part of the anti-white narrative. And then he says it's not about race. Could he make it any clearer that he doesn't care about your victimization? I mean, just couldn't make it any clearer. It's not about race. We're white guilted. How is it not about race? We, there, we are targeted. I tell you, by the end of this, we are going to force. We will, all these Tucker Tubbies, 
we're going to make sure that they're using the lexicon and dialectics. And then Tucker will have to, if he wants to keep an audience. That's how we control our destiny. We can't control who prints the money, and we can't pay for the armies, and we can't uh, put people in office because politics is a is a matter of money. Whoever has the most wins. So we can't do that. But what we can do is we can influence each other. We can influence those in our circles and they in their circles. We can do that. That's what the Go Free Method gives you. The power to change the world. The country, the country can't continue if we allow this to continue. So yeah. I think DEI is, you know, people say, well, you don't like it because you're white. It hurts you or whatever. Well, okay, but yeah, sure. But that's kind of not the point. I wouldn't. What now? To continue. So yeah. I think DEI is, you know, people say, well, you don't like it because you're white. It hurts you or whatever. Well, okay, but yeah, sure. But that's kind of not the point. I wouldn't like it was aimed at Filipinos. And I oh my, typical. L look at this parrying. So we are actually being victimized by D-I-E, die white people. Remember, don't call it D-E-I. It's D-I-E. The exact same words, D-I-E. Diver diversity, inclusion, equity. Die white people. So he says, there's this phenomenon in the world. It's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. D-I-E. It's anti-whiteism. <laughs> Targeting white people. He says, well, there it is. And and I oppose it. But oh, but no, 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 but but it has nothing to do with white people. I, I would oppose it if it was being done to Filipinos. It's not fucking being done to Filipinos, bitch. It's not being being done to blacks. It's not being done to Hispanic. It's being done to white people. And you've been insulated from it. And your kids are insulated from it because of your little socialistic networks. And I would be as everybody is loud about it. Like, why would I like that? It's totally immoral. It's the thing we said we hated, Jim Crow and the Nuremberg laws. I mean, name it. It's like it's the original sin of man attacking people on the basis of things that they can't control. They were, they were born with. Like, you can't do that, period. Oh, well, you can't do that. Again, imagine two groups of people at conflict. And on one side, you've got people like Tucker lecturing you endlessly about how you have to obey these rules. These abstractionist rules that are outdated, that are that are totally outdated. I mean, could you imagine playing a game of American football and the other team has not been playing by the rules? I mean, this is a long game, okay? The other team has not been playing by the rules for a hundred plus years. They're running out of bounds. They're passing the ball multiple times, everything. They just keep getting in the they don't even reach the end zone. They declare it a score. You can't get a single point. And generation after generation after generation, you're still here saying, you have to obey the rules. Can you imagine? I mean, this is, if you wanted to, to lay out total control and manipulation and undermining of the resistance to the anti-white superstructure, this is what it looks like. I don't think that's what's happening. Like, I don't, I don't think that Tucker is part of a undermine the resistance endeavor, but that's what it's resulting in. I couldn't agree more. I want to ask you a little bit about, you know, it's funny for years, uh, people have been like, you know, Tucker is a Trump sycophant. And I said, well, I've always said, I thought you were m misunderstood because you would criticize Trump. <laughs> misunderstood. Lunder says, thanks, Jason. I entered 24 with a Teletubbies theme. <laughs> Song stuck in his head. Oh man, I'm sorry about that. I don't even know what the damn song is. So, and I'm not going to listen to it now that you tell me it can be a uh, earworm. Samuski says, Tucker is one of those that think that Western civilization should belong to all people. Yeah, exactly. And, and like nothing is of us. Nothing is unique to us. It's just the world. Western civilization is the world. It happens on the earth. Western civilization happens on Mother Earth. It's going to be Mother, too. Mother Earth. And everybody can come here and, and celebrate it and perpetuate it. And who cares if white people continue or not? It's just the world. Whatever. 
Of course, all of the other groups have like unique expression. Tucker would never criticize that. When the original acronym was released, it was a D I E, but it was quickly changed. Uh, looks like uh, Magamandi has joined us. Hello and welcome. White Advocate is here. Let me continue. For things that they, but only for things that they didn't want you to criticize him for. You would praise him on that. But you would criticize him for things like economic policy, for foreign policy, for things, though, that the liberal establishment actually agreed with him on. I know you talked recently about supporting Trump as a result of the Mar-a-Lago raid and more. I'm curious, you know, given that his... We have a uh, a disruptor in the live chat and uh, asking Franklin, what have you accomplished? Uh, he says, capitulating to the brown people and the tribe. What have we accomplished? Well, you haven't been around uh, our community. There's a total language that... that, that you are now using and the rest of society is using that we are the ones pushing we are the reason why it's out there why the conversation about our victimization has changed now i don't expect you to be able to understand it's complex uh, but we're the reason for that we're the cause of that and uh, many other victories as well and uh there has been you have a premise that you sewed in because you're intellectually dishonest probably because you're retarded and uh that we somehow have capitulated by not doing what? Sitting around and just bitching about things like you do? Talking tough like you do and doing nothing? Is that what you call capitulate? Because it kind of it's kind of like capitulation is sitting around and, and just bad-mouthing other groups of human beings and doing nothing. That's actually more like capitulation. Just so you know, I want to clarify that. If you want to come into my house, which is my live chat, my streams, you want to come into my house, you want to disagree with me, Tag me so that I can respond to your uh, arguments like I just did here. I can understand why you would not want to tag me and have me respond to your arguments because then you'll just end up looking foolish like just now. But do it anyhow. It's my house. If you want free speech, uh, you go out into YouTube and you make your own channel. That's how you have free speech. The public square, my channel, my house. His biggest, his biggest legislative accomplishment as president was a Paul Ryan-style Tax Cuts and Jobs Act bill. Yes. What's your confidence that things will change economically in the second term? Or do you have any confidence at all? Isn't this the video where he talks about race and reproduction? Private Life and Gary and Spud are all here. Great to see you all. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I mean, you're absolutely right. I, I was offended by that, not on ideological grounds, because I don't think that's what the country needed. And the fact that the carried interest loophole remained in that legislation enraged me then and enrages me thinking about it now. I mean, I, I don't think that we should have different tax rates for, you know, work or money. I mean, I think, you know, if you invest, you pay the same tax rate as someone who goes to work every day, period. And I don't mm -hmm. understand why we have, you know, the richest people paying half the taxes. I think that's like actually insane and will make your country volatile. Over time, it discourages work. How could it not? They, they don't want you to smoke cigarettes, so they tax cigarettes more than they tax, say, eggs. And that, you know, discourages people from smoking. Well, if you tax labor at twice the rate of capital, what are you discouraging? Labor. And I believe in labor. I believe in work. I think it confers dignity. I really mean that. It's not a talking point. It's true for me. If I had a billion dollars, I took it to work every day because I'm a man. And that's my identity. It's my purpose. I want to contribute something. So any society that discourages that is insane. And that bill continued to do that. So yeah, I'm mad about it. And, and about a lot of other things. I mean, but... On the other hand, you're like, it's a choice and you got to go with the better one, I guess. In general, I kind of just want to stay out of politics because hmm. it's it's not appealing to me on any level. And also, honestly, I just really don't like the people, just personally. You know, Nikki Haley is like a disgusting person in person. And I just don't want to be around anyone like that ever. I agree with that completely. In my life, because I'm 54 and I just, life's too short and I have all these wonderful people I love around me. I want to be with them and my dogs. Mm -hmm. So, however, the, you know, the raid on Mar-a-Lago, the Colorado Supreme Court decision yesterday, Franklin pointing out that Joel Davis recently was praising the mainstream media for the, using the term anti-white, something he had nothing to do with. 
and something NWG predicted and published well ahead of time, case in point. Oh, many, 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 many times. The, yes, absolutely. The argument has totally been won for us. Totally been won. You know, those are kind of, you know, that's too far. And so it's not about defending Trump the man, um, who I actually like personally, I think he's hilarious and interesting. Um, but even if I hated him, I would still feel the same way uh, that you can't allow that. If you allow, say, someone to be punished without being convicted of a crime, the Colorado Supreme Court said yesterday that- So, I mean, this is like the the same moralizing wish lists that you see everybody everybody else give. Like, you just can't allow that. Okay, but got it. Years and years of my life, I've been here. Got it. Now, how do we change it? That's what I did a long time ago as a very young man. I got it. Now, how do we change it? I mean, it instead of just repeating, it shouldn't be that way. There's nothing manly about just complaining endlessly about saying what we what we should have. What would be good if we had? It's not fair if this. That's not right. Okay, we got it. Now, how do we change it? We came up with the go-free method. It's changing things. Trump has to be punished for committing insurrection. Well, he's never been convicted of insurrection. Right. So if you allow that, it's like, I think Sagar and Jetty is a you know wife beater. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put him in jail. Well, actually, he's never even been charged with wife beating, much less convicted. How can we put him in jail? Well, that's a precedent that can't stand. You can't have that. And I would say, by the way, same for Joe Biden. Well, there you go again. You see, it's same for, I have the same opinion for everybody. Obey the rules, obey the rules. No, I have different positions. I have positions for the those who contend against anti-whiteism. We can do almost anything. Uh, and for them, they could do almost nothing. Nothing is fair for them to do. It's going to end up having to be me, guys like me, or we don't continue. We don't persist. The white race ends. If you continue to have this bullshit about, oh, by the way, it's same for everybody bullshit that the cucks have been bringing you forever, you just keep losing. If they tried to do it to Biden, be like, you can't do that because you'll destroy th this essential thing we have, which is a fair justice system. But Looks like uh, Sock and Jay Bishop and RJJ have shown up. Hello to you all. Happy New Year. But nobody else seems to care, but I care, you know? Yeah, you certainly do. I'm curious, uh, you know, you've always taken a lot of flack, too, again, from the establishment here in Washington, mostly right, around your position on economics. You talked about the carried interest loophole. Come I'm curious on. what you think of unions and uh, Republican policy towards unions, especially given that so many union voters are now backing Trump, not just for cultural reasons, but also for hope in a different type of economic message. How do you think Republicans should think about unions? I mean, I have so many, I mean, of course, in a union, have been mm -hmm. my whole adult life. My father was in a union, you know, after SAG. And, um, and I, as a kid, worked in a union jobs and television. I mean, the idea of unions is very appealing to me. You need a counterbalance to corporate power. You know, there's the owner of the company and then the people he employs whose labor makes him rich and they should have some power too. I completely agree with that 100%. Mm -hmm. Labor unions in the United States have like behaved so despicably, sold out their members so completely on the issue of immigration. I mean, labor unions were responsible yes. historically for limits on immigration because more people willing to work for less undermines the bargaining position of labor. Obviously, I mean, that's not high math. So, labor unions should be against immigration to because their workers don't want to have their uh, salaries become stagnant. They want to continue uh, increasing benefits over time. You let in more workers, you drive down their wages. So why then did labor unions change? Well, maybe you'll talk about maybe like the guy who came in wanted to make his argument about the tribe. I guess just the tribe. No, it's because anti-whiteism won the day at uh, the boardroom, at the homes of the members of uh, these labor unions. And so where was the moral resistance to opening the border and being four politicians that will open the border and leave it wide open. There wasn't one. At every level, at every level, the top all the way to the guys in the seats, they sit there silently. Construction workers, hard guys, will sit quietly in their seats at labor union meetings, knowing that they're being shafted knowing that, uh, that, that their salaries are going to become stagnant, that they're going to lose their job 
if the borders stay open and they sit there silent, don't want anybody to know that I care about the victimization of whites. Don't want anybody to know that. The, the union calls on the phone. Are you going to be voting for? They name the Democrat and they'll say yes, even if they intend to vote for the Republican. That's how labor unions have become like this. You cannot drive our positions into like this, this black market and think that we're going to win the day. The, the position that wins in the daylight is the one that can be seen in the daylight. If you're going to be on the phone saying, oh, yeah, we'll vote for the Democrat of your choice. Oh, but you know, secretly we're going to go over here and vote. And then you're going to be at the restaurant and you're going to be talking and you'll be like, well, you know, just, just, just keep it down a little bit quiet because we don't want people to hear what we're saying of in contradiction to anti-whiteism. You can't win it. You're just on a march to total annihilation. You have to have the moral imperative. That's what we give with the white positive a uh, moral imperative in go free. Ah, okay. Right. And so for labor unions to be encouraging mass immigration, screw, I'm trying not to use vulgarity here, but screws over their own members and betraying people you're responsible for is the- Boy, I, I bet that, you know, raised the cackles on his wife hearing him use that vulgarity. That's another thing. We can't continue. I see a lot of people freaking out about this I'm not going to talk about it right now, but this calendar, this like conservative calendar for dads or whatever, we can't be this like overly genteel, a bunch of people and fight with anti-whites. I mean, get over it. Get over it already. We got to be, we got to be ready to not only get down in the mud with anti-whites, but be the fucking mud greatest possible sin. Do, do you know what I mean? That's, mm -hmm. I mean, that is the worst thing you can do as a human being, in my opinion. So I'm very mad about that. I like the idea of labor unions a hundred percent. I might have been, I might be punished because I said they screw them over. Show me one that actually advocates on behalf of its members and I'll, I'll send them money because I love right. the idea of that. And labor has no power, not just labor unions. We say labor, we all produce labor and we don't have any power. All power. I understand that anti-whites didn't say to themselves, there wasn't like a start point for anti-whiteism. They didn't say to themselves at some start point that never happened, you know what we need to do? We need to make sure that our advocates are, uh, are not shackled by a bunch of uh, uh, rules and codes and all of this because they need to be able to fight laterally to defeat the people that we target. I know people can write books later and because that's what humanity does good. The human brain is able to go, is able to look different directions and say, I'm going to write a, paint a big target around it and make the case. And it's wrong. It's, if you have the intelligence, you can see that it's wrong. If you investigate it all, you can see that it's wrong. It's always wrong. They didn't do that. They didn't say there wasn't a start point. They didn't say this is the way the advocates had to advocate or think. The reason they are able to be so protean and amorphous and move laterally is because they are at war with all of our codes because we produce them. The world doesn't produce. If the world produced them, then anti-whites would have far less interest in them. They know what we have produced, our norms, our customs. And since they are at war with them, they're certainly not going to abide by them. So it's a consequence. Their, their freedom of action is a consequence of the war they wage on us and everything that we produce. You're welcome. Power is concentrated in finance. Not all power, but a wildly disproportionate percentage. And those who like, you know. If Cindy Ben is here. Hello. If you're 23, you think, well, that's kind of how economics works. That's how the world works. No, 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 no. It wasn't always this way at all. Farmers had massive power. They feed the country and keep them from starving. They had the Grange movement of the late 19th, early 20th century. Bro, the victory of finance is well over. It doesn't matter what you think it should be. It does, And then he's comparing this apples and oranges. And that's appropriate for me to say that, given that he is making a reference to farmers. Farmers have power. They need to feed the people. Now, are, are you brain dead? Oh, no, you're not. Tucker's not. But his audience is. They're like, yeah, that's true. They had power. It's not right for 
for the finance to have the power. Thanks. Centuries. I live next to a Grange building, so, which is defunct because they farmers have no power, of course. Now. I mean, I could go on forever, but the point yes. is the idea of unions is Please not only don't. good, it's essential. And the people who run them have really been disgraceful. And I would say that's true across the board. The military, it's like the military is, you know, some of the best people in the country serve in the military and they are led by the worst people, right? I mean, yeah. the Republican Party, I like, you know, rural Republican voters, some of the best people I've ever met. The people of the RNC, some of the worst people. So you have this weird dynamic of, you know, the bulk of people being pretty deep. You're going to have anti-whites drawn to power. That's why they're in the DNC, RNC, et cetera, across the planet. Uh, but the rural people, did you have an opportunity to have long conversations with them, Tucker? I'm doubting it. He's Listen, he's probably, in all seriousness, like a, a, a good guy, a decent guy. He grew up in an environment, so he, he's unable to see the world, but through the lens of his Dockers and Polos and Subarus or Porsches. He's, he's, that's what he sees the world through. So it's really easy to say that uh, it shouldn't be about race when it's 100% about victimizing white people. Decent, pretty commonsensical, pretty, you know, warm and tolerant, nice. Um, and then their leaders being like utterly rapacious and deceptive, creepy. <laughs> I mean, it's like bad. Tucker, how do you think Republicans should handle uh, the... Uh Thank you, Cool Papa J Magic. A mashup uh, said, just ordered Go Free for myself and my brother this week. Looking forward to reading in 24. Happy New Year, Jay. Happy New Year to you, mashup. That's awesome. Get prepared to be empowered. Uh, and remember, it is like working out. You got to keep doing it. You got to do it. Every day, you got to do it. Several times a week, you got to do it. It's not something you read and put on a bookshelf and then it's over. Abortion politics after Roe versus Wade, which has been pretty significant downward pressure on them at the ballot box. How should they approach it? You know, I don't know. I, I'm the last person to give political. My brain doesn't work that way. Um, <laughs> and I, I, you know, I just I'm not. I His brain doesn't work that way. But so many of the Tucker Tubbies want him to run for office. I would be a terrible strategist. And I've been a kind of a terrible strategist in my own life. Obviously, I keep getting fired. So, <laughs> like, you know, um, obviously, I'm not very good at that nationless nationalist is here. Hello, hello. I, I can tell my own feelings on it, which are uh, super simple. If you consider, I mean, there's no dispute that a, a child in the womb at eight months is a person, of course. And if you allow people to kill other people because they're inconvenient, then you that's a profound statement. You know, you're not allowed to kill people except in self-defense, period. Otherwise, you are a monster and you're reserving the powers that no human being can have because we're not gods. And so the idea that the government would encourage people to kill other people is really scary. I feel that way about you. Where did that start? Why was that pushed? Killing babies in the womb at any age, abortion in general, targeted white women. It was introduced to countries almost all at the same time. Some countries like Ireland held out for a really long time. And uh, anti-whites there didn't care. They're making up. They're making up, though. They're really catching right up real quick. But it was introduced in countries 100 percent white, almost all at the exact same time. It was not introduced in non-white countries. At the same time that it was introduced all across the West, nearly at the same time. Uh, there were commercials and movies and everything began. Anti-whites began really pushing. Uh, the uh, the depiction of white people being really happy without children and non-white and they they keep that going to this day it hasn't gone away for me it's white people are just so happy without kids white women are the happiest without children uh, and when they sh depict non-white people it's always with large families why then is it that in america you see a lot of abortion clinics in non-white areas, particularly black. Well, because black people avail themselves at, at a high frequency relative to other groups of people, at least according to the data that I've seen, they avail themselves of that service. So 
what kind of person are they going to vote for uh, in a politician? Someone who will promise to provide them that service. So a Democrat running for office, then knowing that the constituency is driving a great distance to get to abortion clinics so that they can avail themselves of the service, will say, I promise you, if you vote for me, I will put an abortion clinic right in town, right where you live. You'll be able to avail yourself of that service like this. And then, given the fact that they're anti-white, uh, most politicians are all politicians, but, but uh, some more so than others, they then put their argument into the anti-white narrative, don't they? Because there isn't another narrative to speak to. They're just there and trapped. So they say, white people prevent you from this service. They get in the way from giving you this service. And so I'm going to put that abortion clinic right in town so that you can access it. Now the Democrat has revved up to hyperdrive his argument for getting himself elected, him or herself elected, so that individual politician, anti-white, wants to get elected, promises a service that black people are availing themselves of, promises to make it more convenient, sows it into the anti-white narrative to really super drive it, shoves some nitrous in there, and then the abortion clinics end up in black neighborhoods. If you choose to understand society as a midwit, or even an uber midwit, you'll have to heed and probably come to your own conclusion, content creators who will tell you that, well, uh, these moneyed Nazi uh, masters of society, you remember this was a big Alex Jonesian thing, they're trying to exterminate black people. And that's what abortion is all about. That's why there are abortion clinics in black neighborhoods. Because all the way up to the very top, and we might, we might find a quote that nobody ever goes and runs down to see if it was actually true or not. It was just somebody claimed it somewhere. Run a quote from uh, this person from you know, the uh, the ultra wealthy or whatever it is, this socialite said this or socialite said that. And then they'll say, see, it's all about exterminating black people, except they have fed them, clothed them, housed them into a 10,000% increase at the same time. So that's kind of a flaw in that conclusion. It's kind of like what Jason just told you is, makes perfect sense. And if you look at it like that moving forward, you'll be able to predict similar behaviors, won't you? That is how you end up with black neighborhoods with abortion clinics, more so than elsewhere. Similarly, you'll find weave shops in abundance in black neighborhoods. Does that mean the socialites the ultra wealthy have decided that they want black people to have the hair of Asians or whatever else sewn into their hair. It's a targeting of the black community. No, it's a service they want. It's a service they'll pay for. So as a consequence, though, you'll find conservatives like Tucker who will make this argument about it's targeting black people. That's why abortion is bad, because it harms black people. No problem telling you, God, I hope he does. Because earlier in this interview, he said, mentioned us being victimized. D-I-E is everywhere, but it's not even about race. Turns it into a total abstraction. I would be against it if it was Filipino. Remember, I wonder if he's going to turn it into an abstraction if he mentions that the system targets and victimizes black people with abortion. I wonder if he's going to do that. My guess is no. So I hope he brings it up, but it becomes one of like the running themes that 
these white conservatives, they can trot out and say, look at how much of a champion I am by anti-white standards. I care more about black people's victimization than my own. That means that I'm good, right? Just look here on the anti-white metric. In Asia, I feel You're welcome. You're not going to get these kind of insights elsewhere, are you? And that's why, uh, just you know, point of fact here, that's why the audience is always going to be smaller. The special forces are always smaller. The advanced students' classes are always smaller. The bigger audience, you tell them what they want to hear. A little bit about the death penalty a lot of the time. And I just think we're, and I'm not Catholic, just, just to be completely clear, yeah. this is not someone else's theology that I'm parroting. It's just very obvious. I am a Christian, but even if I weren't, I, in, in the times in my life when I haven't been, I had the same view. Mm -hmm. You don't want to encourage the casual killing of other people. That's like terrifying. And by the way, it'll come back and get you. Um, so, but I, the other thing I would say is like the fertility rate, I mean, at this point we're, you know, kind of below, I would say we're below replacement. I haven't seen yes. the, the latest numbers, but we're clearly below replacement. We are below replacement? Who's he talking about? When he says we, the white race is below replacement, but not the non-white race. He's talking about America. And if you don't have children, the whole, whole point of life is to have children, is to reproduce. And every other culture and every other period in recorded history has felt that way because it's self-evident. What's your purpose on earth? Well, to continue, you know, to continue your line, your genes or whatever with your descendants. That's, that's the most basic human desire. And we deny it's the most basic human desire. We do everything we can to. Which, by the way, makes it so much more of a crime since it is a basic, uh, fundamental, not basic, fundamental human driver. Makes it so much more of a crime that so many, such a massive percentage of women decide that they are going to live their sexual primes giving themselves to guys that are out of their league and causing, in many cases, uh, men that they eventually will marry to have uh, few children or none at all. Because as much as a guy would like to have a, have a child, if a woman in her prime, uh, fertility, health, etc., isn't going to accept him, because he's uh, he's he's a white guy that is same level looks of her or whatever. If he, she's not going to do it, then he's not having kids. And that's decision uh, being made by women. Because when guys make the decision about whether or not they're going to have children, it's called rape. Toward it. And you have to ask yourself, like, what is that? I mean, is the problem in America? Janet Yellen, who is a ghoul and a disgusting human being, who got rich, you know, from the banks as she was supposed to be regulating them uh, at the Fed, um, she said six months ago that the, like the most important like piece of our economic policy is that you have more abortions. Hmm. And it's like, really, if you think having more kids is the problem, and they, a lot of these people really do think that, I have to like wonder about your motives a little bit. If you're, she's anti-white, and principle. As long as this population in the U.S. continues to be uh, as many white people as we have, and across the West, anti-whites will be for abortion. And collateral damage incurred by blacks or anybody else is irrelevant to them. You let, you let the numbers get low enough, white people get low enough, and then abortion will kind of drop off of their chart of uh, what's important. It'll still be available, but it won't be very important to them anymore. If you're encouraging me not to have kids, you don't like me. And this is like the crazy thing about black, you know, the, the, and I, I have a really good black friend who I always say this to. It's like, he said black people. The thing about black, you know, the, the, was that black people? And I, I have a really good black friend who I always say this to. He has a really good black friend. It's almost like he has a ventriloquist voice. <laughs> there. I got a really good black friend. Does he have any really good white friends? I wonder. He's got a really good black friend. But he's going to say it so quick. It's like it's almost faux pas. It's almost gauche, as they would say in their elevated circles, where the air is rarefied. 
and their cocktails are more cocktailier than ours. He says, black people. You have to say it kind of breathy and, and, and quieter than the rest of your sentence because that's the gravity of it. It's like, if I say to you, you know, you're great, just don't reproduce. We don't want more people like you. You know, the abortion rate in black America is super, super high. There's a reason for that. Whoa! 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 What's the reason for it? Are they targeting the blacks? Look, he's got no problem saying black people are suffering with abortion. Planned Parenthood's everywhere. They target that community. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh my God, Tucker, Tucker, they target them. Now, 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 let's see if he turns it into an abstraction or we'll see if he keeps it as a, well, the black people are being victimized. And so that that's bad. So take a look at my credentials here at being moral on their metric of anti-whiteism. Holy shit. Holy shit. Fit and healthy at any age is here. Great to see you. Happy New Year. Promethean Kitchen is here. Arden White is here. Promethean Kitchen, great to see you both. Says, it seems like you were right, Jason. There are more movies coming out like the one you showed last week. Uh, this one is called The Book of Clarence. And it's almost, and it's, and it's all about black Jesus. Wow. 24, folks, is going to be lit. The anti-whites are coming. We got an article. We'll read about it. The anti-whites are, they're turning it on. They're putting a coal to it. And you got people like Tucker are the big resistance. Do you feel good about our odds? <laughs> oh, my. You need somebody like me at the front. Franklin at the front, Cool Papa J Magic at the front, Dean Danger at the front, For Null at the, you need where I could be, be at the front and just like grab the shirt and rip it open. And it's nothing but like chiseledness. And you got like the sword and an AK-47 or something. Go into war. You don't need like Docker guy. You don't you don't need like a uh, exiguous little Nikki. But hey, give the masses what they want. Give them what they want and then they'll show up with the money, they'll they'll make you rich. White student transmission. Yeah, the movies are coming out this year. Tons hardcore anti-white movies. They're coming this year. So get ready. Fit and healthy at in any age. Thank you so much. Says everything that happens in the world is so clear when going free. Isn't it? I just told you the topic of abortion came up. I didn't need to know any more about abortion to begin telling you, predicting what's going to happen. The topic's abortion. It's conservatives. That means you will be able to do the same thing. If you go free, you'll be able to do the same thing. You're not going to be able to do the same thing if you're using any of these other ideologies or vehicles. It's just a fact. Use them if that's your speed. I'm not going to like I'm not going to beat up on little dummies anymore. I'm not going to I'm not going to no, not doing it. It's not it not going to try to explain things to them if that's your speed. If you want to say, "Well, it's the it's the Nazi effort to exterminate uh the colored races or whatever they say." Okay, that's your speed. Have a nice day. You're going to say, oh, it's the Jews who are who are doing it to X, Y, or Z. That's your speed. Okay, go do your thing. This is have a nice day. You're at the wrong classroom. I mean, that's what I'm going to say for now. I'm not going to try to explain. I'm not going to point out all the, the successes. We'll talk about it later. But holy shit. I mean, it just is so, it works every time. And I don't know why more people don't say if you're targeting me or my children and trying to convince us not to reproduce, then I don't think you really love me. <laughs> you can tell. So he actually took, look at that. He actually took the abstraction about the 
the abortion subject and then made it specific about the victimization of black people, non-white people. This is your conservative leadership. And when it came to white people, he took the specific victimization of white people and then turned that into an abstraction. Are you serious? Are you serious? Tell me you love me, but if you're trying to get me to have an abortion, I think you may be lying. And, but nobody says this because it's framed in like my rights or whatever. Really bodily autonomy? You're going to give me that lecture after the COVID vax? My body, my choice? Where, where were you when they were forcing my children to get it? You, well, you know what I mean? My body, my choice. They don't believe that for a freaking second. They're liars. But why do the rest of us? Oh, the big hypocrisy argument does nothing. It's not respond with like, hey, shut up about my body, my choice, you vax creep. And just for everybody who might be new, initially it looks like hypocrisy. But when you go free, you realize it's not hypocrisy. Contradictory positions that arrive at anti-white outcomes are consistent positions. Put that in your head. Mm. Well, you know yeah, I, mean? I, remember, I remember a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people who made that exact point. And were oh, RJJ is here. Said Tucker has a vested interest. He might have black grandkids one day. Yeah, precisely. I, I wouldn't doubt it at all. I would not doubt that at all. And then all these white conservative people who still act like they care about our people, our race, our traditions, they're going to be like, well, you know, that's just the age we're in. Any, any, any level of excuses. Nobody's able to say that. The, so few people were able, are able to say that they're wrong. Were absolutely shut down at the time. I know you're on a tight schedule. Red My last question here is we shared, uh, we have shared passion for UFO transparency, and you made a comment <laughs> um, very recently. Which is I guess maybe he didn't talk about that uh, on Twitter. They were talking about how uh, Tucker had said, and maybe that was taken from that little bit right there. Tucker had said that it's important to pass on your genes, and then explicit white sympathetics were saying. Uh, well, then he's a hypocrite because he doesn't care about the white race. But that, of course, is a purblind position. Because Tucker is consistent when he says he doesn't care about race, but wants to pass on his genes. I mean, the, the, the comment on Twitter had like 100,000 views. And it's just wrong. But being right doesn't matter. We learned that finally in 2023, we learned that being right doesn't matter to people. It just doesn't. The vast majority, 99%, it doesn't matter. Gotten a lot of attention in the UFO world. They've learned things that have made you afraid. And I've seen, uh, there's been a lot of, I think, right-minded skepticism, not even just from uh, not even just from people who are more established minded, others who are like, well, if I don't know. I don't know. Do, do you want to listen to the, what he's going to say about UFOs? We could come back to it. I mean, it's just like something's not right about that conversation. We'll come back to that. But for now, we will move on to uh, how about celebrating some financial gifts? We'll bring up our next news item which is going to be arrest in germany over cologne cathedral attack plot absolutely this is the cologne cathedral and if you've been around here for a long time since the very beginning i have uh, likened what i do and what we do for white well-being to the construction of the Cologne Cathedral. Does anybody remember that? You've been around for a long time. I've brought it up a number of times. The reason why, as I pull this up, this is a this is like a sacred cathedral for what you don't have to be Christian or it's sacred for us. Every white person should feel that it's sacred. Its construction was something like the 1200s uh, all the way up through the 1800s. It took that long for it to be built. That's why I liken my work for white well-being and our work for white well-being to this, this cathedral. Because when the architects began work on the cathedral, they did not have the science to complete it. 
They didn't know. They had this grand vision of what they were going to build. They didn't have the science to complete it. They didn't have the tools or the artisans to be able to complete it yet. But they knew in Germany that our people would develop the science. Our people would develop the tools. Our people would train the artisans, would would build, would educate themselves and then train the artisans to come. They knew that that would happen. They knew that others, once they had set the course of what was going, what, what beautiful work was going to be made, just like we're doing here with white well-being, they set that course. They knew that others would come to it. And that is exactly what we're doing here in service to white well-being. So it is, to me, a big inspiration, Cologne Cathedral. And it, it, it stands out for our people and, white, and specifically our white positive circles as an example of what we are doing and that it can be done. When I was going to endless meeting after me, talking to little groups of people, going out, passing out other people's literature that was garbage, figuring out how it could be done better, making my arguments that were mocked at, that were laughed at, that were et cetera, making my arguments that were told to me that were uh, could never work because the anti-white academics didn't use them, that could never work because they were cringe. And I kept pushing, I knew that if I was building something beautiful, the heroes would come. We don't, I knew that we don't control the boardrooms today, but in the future, with this construction, with this narrative arc, with this, with this angle of attack, if you will, that we will control the boardrooms of tomorrow. We will control the, the congressional offices tomorrow. You can't do that. Any other way. It's just a fact. If you want to prove me wrong, go do it. You have generations of failing to do it the other ways. So you don't, don't, you don't have to go and tell people that I'm a murderer or an alien or whatever. You could just prove me wrong. You could try to argue it with me or you could just go do it. You want to take over the congressional offices by getting people elected? Go ahead. Go do it. I'm not going to debate it unless you want to have a conversation about it. I'll happily have a conversation about it. But that's Cologne Cathedral. And sick anti-white scum was going to destroy it tonight. Can you imagine this? This is our bio spirit in stone and steel and art and music and beauty in the world that started construction in the 1200s and ended in the 1800s. And they were going to destroy it. Anti-whites, make no mistake, as anti-whiteism grows across the West, and as more and more radical people come into our countries, led in by anti-whites of all races, everything beautiful that we have done will be destroyed. That is why it is imperative that we in this little powerful community continue and amplify getting the lexicon out to the West. Because I and my job, you and your job, we're not taking shit over. We're not ordering the borders to be shut. We're not going to, none of that. But we can change the way that we view the world with concepts that can and want to be communicated and adopted and have demonstrated it. And adopted up to those levels will change the environment we live in will prevent Cologne Cathedral from being destroyed. Otherwise, in this case, the police foiled the plot of these anti-white 
What even what race are they? Are they Arabs? Anti-white Arabs? I don't know. The police foiled the plot today. But in the future, the police won't care. Because our standards will be gone. And this will be a construction by a hated, evil minority. So I'm, I'm really, I was really unnerved by seeing this news. Really quickly, we're going to celebrate some financial gifts and we're going to get right to this story here. These were from last week. We had over there on Odyssey 0.25 of library tokens from Wing It Production. And I think I got this one last week, but just want to make sure you are a wise young man. I'm pleased you have a good relationship with the folks at Red Ice. God bless you, brother. Thank you so very much. We also have four library tokens from Western Kind United over there on Odyssey that wrote, No White Guilt, Hails, and Merry Christmas, brother. A big Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much. Ten. 10 library tokens from Who to Thunk It, who wrote, looking back on the year and beyond, remembering those we've lost. Jeff Winston from the White Art Collective, Simon Harris, Synthicide, uh, Streak Free, Streak Fry, Rest in Peace. Thank you so much for that, Who to Thunk It. 10 library tokens over there on, on Odyssey, which is up and running. This was last week. We also had on, what was this? Was this on Entropy? Get out your raucous emojis. We just got three more to celebrate. We're going to continue rolling with this story, ladies and gentlemen. Stefan, 007's crowns for his head, gems for his feet. Stefan, financially gifting 25 white will being dollars. Hitting the $20 minimum of a financial gift for a celebration. Let him see your emojis. Let him hear it. Let him, even some of the floating emojis for Stefan. God bless you, Stefan. Thank you so very much. I don't think wrote anything with, I'm not seeing. I could check back. $25, though. We also had from William, financial gift, 40 white well-being dollars. Let me just make sure that I'm not missing the verbiage, celebrate, ladies and gentlemen. Let them hear 007s and raucous emojis. Uh, raucous, raucous emojis. And uh, finally, we have 25 white will being dollars. Celebrate 007 going to LG, financially gifting last week as well. 25 white will being dollars and says with those dollars, a Merry a Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so very much for that. Stefan 25, LG 25, William 40. Crowns and gems for them all, ladies and gentlemen. 007s, 007s. If you make a financial gift that comes in, Late uh, during a stream, I always get it the subsequent week. God bless these people. Big celebrations, raucous, raucous emojis. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I will check to see. I don't see any verbiage there, but it might be elsewhere. Thank you so very much for your financial gifts. And thank you, everyone, for celebrating. Looks like uh, there were no... Where there were no verbiage. That was on uh, Williams and Stephens were over on Cash App. No verbiage associated because they said everything they wanted to be said with those white well-being dollars. And now, with testimonials like that, ladies and gentlemen, true champions in service to white well-being, if I do say so myself, and I do, let's get into this. Arrest in Germany over Cologne Cathedral attack plot. Here's something that they need to do in Europe. Get some cooler cars for law enforcement. What are you doing? If I were in charge, 
the cars, the 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 enforcement vehicles would be badass. They would rumble, they would roar. You would know when we were coming. German police arrested three people on Sunday over an alleged attack plot targeting the cathedral in Cologne on New Year's Eve. The, alle the quote, alleged means of attack is a car, said police in the western city, adding that security measures have been stepped up around the site. So obviously this isn't going to work for long. I mean, look at how we've handled in Rhodesia, South Africa, uh, across the rest of Western civilization, our homes where we live. Look at how we've handled it. More walls, more, uh, more chain link fences, more concrete bumpers. It hasn't stopped things. If you do not handle the moral imperative of the day, you are just building against the winds and against time. The three suspects are believed to be linked to a Tajik, Tajik, uh, who arrest, who was arrested on. So who, who the, what is this? I don't even know what that is. I thought that was a terrorist group, <laughs> or maybe there's just okay. Okay, so. Most of them are looking pretty Arabic to me as I look here. Am I right or am I wrong on that? Islamic country. Ah, <laughs> cool. Papa J. Magic asking if they would have truck nuts on the trucks of my law enforcement vehicles. Hell no. But I think probably for fun, I might have uh, steel that runs down to the pavement. So everywhere they drive, they throw a giant rooster tail of sparks behind them. That would be kick ass. Then you would be really afraid. Tajix, Tajix, anti-white Tajix. There's a bit of a motley crew here. It's like uh, most of them look Arabic. What do they consider themselves? It's so funny. I thought that was a terrorist group. Is there a terrorist group with that name? That's funny. Each testicle could be its own flashpoint. No, I'm not putting nuts on it. No way. That's messed up. <laughs> and we'll get to the current financial gifts in just a little bit. All right. Tajik. The Tajik was detained. So the anti-white Arab, unless I'm wrong, Uh, detained by German police on the same day as Austria announced the arrest of another three suspects in Vienna. Uh, Bill Daly had reported then that the four are all Tajiks who allegedly wanted to carry out attacks for Islamic State, whatever, and uh, IS offshoot. Quote, Islamic people and groups are, quote, 
more active than ever at the moment, close quote, warned Herbert Rule, interior minister of a North Rhine, Westphalia state, where Cologne is located. Well, isn't this the world you, you want to live in? What the anti-whites have done to us. And we're not going to do the we're not going to do the conservative thing where we say, oh, we were never asked. You, the implicits and the explicits do that same argument. Who gives a shit? Let me tell you, three decades ago, I was listening to, to speakers say we were never asked. I'm getting sick of it. I don't want to hear it. I don't care. No shit. We weren't asked. No shit. In fact, the reality is you were asked and the moral imperative was anti-white. And that's why it keeps winning. Year after year. This is only going to get worse. This interior minister saying, well, it's at a record level for these anti-white Persians, or whatever. Is that fair to say Persians for them? These anti-white Persians that we've uh, from Tajikistan, that just sounds like a wonderful place, doesn't it? Let's just, you know, Tajikistan. If I want to live someplace, I, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. If I wanted to live someplace, let me tell you, it would be Tajikistan. But since I don't want to live there, the anti-whites are going to just import them. Then I get to live in Tajikistan where these anti-white POSs are deciding to destroy one of the most beautiful, sacred expressions of our bio spirit how about we how about if if even plotting this every one of them are gathered up and shipped right back to tajikistan how about that you're going to contemplate destroying one of the most glorious expressions of our bio spirit you are present you are present because we allow it. This is not your land to transform. This is Germany, God damn it. Get the fuck out if you don't like the white the expression of white people. And I say to God in heaven, the only justice for anti-whites, and you see, are, are white people, this is the white people who live down the street from Cologne Cathedral need to be this angry when they pull down statues like Robert E. Lee. Then we have a people that will correct our problems in the world. Eth Ethno-nationalism wouldn't give a shit about Cologne Cathedral because I'm an American. I'm a Southerner. We can't do that anymore. But if there's any justice in the world, doing this, attempting this kind of thing should result in the most hellish torture before death, before execution. You want to assault the expression. That is a direct attack on every single living white man, woman, and child on planet Earth. So we're going to cut your fucking beating heart out of your chest. And we'll show it to all the other Tajiks, Tajiks or whatever. Tay jerks. Come into our country, one of our countries, and go to destroy this, this work of spiritual beauty. Absolutely sickening. But you know they're going to get slapped on the wrist. And you know the door will be left open for more Tay jerks to come in. In fact, maybe they'll take these specific Tay jerks, anti-white Tay jerks, and ship them on over. You know, if we had a system run by the white man for the good, for the benefit, for white well-being, then the only Tay jerks that would get in would be the ones that were absolutely in love with Western civilization and wanted to do everything they could to contribute to Western, wanted to be a part of that glory of Western civilization, you would know that if you saw one, you could be certain that they were absolutely in love with the West and wanted to preserve it and not a single mar or stain or mark on it. 
But under the anti-white system, you don't know. You don't know. Maybe you see one of their children walking down the street and they're dressed up in their little colorful clothing from their culture and their dad is home or their older brother is home plotting to kill a bunch of white people, stab a bunch of white people, uh, destroy one of our sacred buildings. You just don't know because apparently it's happening. Investigations following the Tajix arrest a week back had found that there is a plot to deploy a car as a means of attack, but in which way is not known to us. You mean, in other words, they're not telling you. It was probably, I'm going to guess here, I don't know for sure, a car full of explosives. Because what are you going to just ram a, a side of a cathedral stone with your Volvo or whatever other junk you're driving over there in Europe? I mean, let's be real. Nevertheless, protective measures have been significantly stepped up with around 1,000 police officers deployed since this afternoon to, quote, protect the cathedral and the population in Cologne City Center. Rule voiced confidence that New Year's festivals or festivities can go ahead. I think that people can celebrate calmly. Yeah, that's the kind of uh, Western civilization I want to live in. By the way, white ladies, how you feel now? You, you're getting a little nerd, like, like that whole sense of safety kind of disappearing, do in the morning sun kind of way. If you want things to change, you're going to have to support, endorse men of the West. We're not always going to say things you like because we're men. Your focus is on the near. Our focus is on the far. So we're not going to always say things you like. You're going to bristle sometimes, but submission is going to have to be required if we're going to be able to make an environment that uh, is one in which we don't have to deploy thousands of police officers. And we think you'll be able to have a, a good little day out. Trying to burn down real men of the way. You don't even know. This is what they look like. For, this is what they look like trying to burn down real men of the West uh, is anti-whiteism, anti-white through and through. I think the people can celebrate calmly in Cologne today. See, you're the police chief. You're the police. But again, I mean, just complaining about it is not doing something. I'm going to say the, the hard, the thing, the hard things that have to be said and uh, we'll be able to sift out the good people. We'll call the good ones and, and the rest can just move on down the hall. Germany's been on high alert in recent weeks over possible Islamic Islamicist attacks with the country's domestic intelligence chief warning in late November that, of course, they're spending most of their time making sure that white people aren't being anti-white. A warning in late November that the risk of such assaults is, quote, real and higher than it has been for a long time. Well, well. The deadliest attack by Islamist extremists in Germany has car was carried out by an IS supporter who rammed a truck into a Berlin Christmas market in December 2016. Yeah, I know how I would have handled that. I know there would have been no problem with these people anymore. But you know who you got to take care of? The white anti-whites. Just like I said during Jason uh, Goes Political. The only way to do anything in the political landscape, we're not going to be able to win political uh, runs for office. Reality, reality check. If you want to actually be able to influence things, I outlined exactly what we have to do. And the God man, no white girl clips, went out and did it 
pristinely, perfectly, so everybody could see. It worked beautifully, didn't it? The plan worked beautifully. The plan was beautiful. The guy was beautiful. It worked fantastically. You can see the logic, how we use the lexical, dialectical power that we have here with the go free method to force the loss of Republicans on the basis of whether or not they will oppose, at least in words, to get started, anti-white-ism and anti-whites. That's how you can actually be involved in the political process. There's no other way. There's no other way. It's something that is possible to do. And we demonstrate it. And that will have an effect, a, a domino effect that I explained. But if, but this, if we don't champion the white positive moral imperative that we teach in the go free method, this is going to get worse every year. Every single year. By the way, I'm going to have to make a video. I saw another one of these videos where it's a white female, very pretty. And she's saying that she's she is having to reorient to a, a womanly role and uh, saying that this guy she's with now, I don't. And it's not the one that you're probably thinking of, the one where she's talking about dating uh, and uh, the guy paid for everything and that she liked that. But it's similar. It's not that one, but it's similar. The woman began saying what a man the guy was, masculine man. And then the litany of things that she described were all subservience by him. I mean, it's just like, are you shitting me? Like she gave, for an example, she cooked or no. Did he get dinner too? I think he got, no, he cooked dinner. Then when it was time to clean up, he took her dishes away and said, he's going to clean the dishes. She said, what a real man. And then she said, uh, today would be a good day to decorate. He didn't say a word. He just, like a slave, went out and started getting out the Christmas decorations. If you leave it to women to decide what a man is, you're going to have a servant. No woman can say what a man is. Any woman trying to say what a man is, is immediately problematic. And she's like, oh, I've got to become like a trad wife now because it's so, it's so nice being with the guy who's in charge. And it's like the Benny Hill music starts playing right after the drum. The guy who's in charge. Here are my examples. He's a total bitch. Runs around. Here's how it actually works. The guy's in charge. The girl says, today would be a good day to decorate. The guy says, would it? Let me think about it. Do I want to decorate today? Do I have something else to do? Do I want her to do something else today? And then if he concludes that today would be a good day, he says to her, yes, I believe today would be a good day. Let's get started. Come help me get the shit. That's a guy in charge. When a woman says, I think it'd be good to decorate, and the guy's like, dutifully runs off without a word to start unpacking things, that is a bitch. That's a servant. That's the problem with the West. I can't even imagine. I would slap him if I were there. Cologne Cathedral, ladies and gentlemen. Anti-whites are going to destroy it if we here don't stop them. Just a reality. No brag, just fact. Donald Trump talking about the invasion. But before we talk about Donald Trump talking about the invasion, why don't we have a look at this Lauren Witzke post on Gab? Does anybody have a link to an article about this? Was Ramsey's white? 
Let's have a look. Lauren Witzke posts this on Gab. Fascinating forensic analysis of a mummy proves that a powerful Egyptian pharaoh was actually a white man. Now, of course, this is wrong. Okay, this is just we're just having a look because the ear is against the door. And uh, I know, I know, I know that there is evidence of like the genetic heritage of pharaohs that have been examined and that the last pharaoh was indeed genetically black. Uh, I think almost 100%. And or some some high degree and that genetically. Like you look at King Tut and they accidentally revealed his DNA uh, and the Egyptian government. Do you all remember this? Please look back in time. Please go re research in the in the libraries online because I could be wrong. I could be remembering wrong. I mean, that's the ear is against the door. All right. I seem to recall that the Egyptian government became apoplectic, apoplectic, when it threw a conniption, when the DNA for King Tut was revealed by accident and showed that King, Dut, King Tut was, at least I, rem, I recall, maybe I'm wrong, probably wrong, that he was a white guy. Now, not, I don't think he was entirely white. I think he was mostly white. Uh, and... Check it out for yourself. I don't know. And there are arguments and there is science out there that you can find if you go investigating. I'm sure it's wrong. That shows that pharaohs in Egypt over time, that earlier in time they were whiter. And then as time went on, they were less white. And that seems to comport with uh, the construction of pyramids in other parts of the world as well. It just seems. I'm not saying it's the case. China, for example, uh, they found mummies that they, uh, of their oldest, as I understand, and again, I'm not a historian, uh, royal class, blonde-haired and red-haired mummies that they eventually revealed this. They kept it a secret for a very long time. And then even Central South America, pyramids here, and uh, I remember specifically, I'll share with you, I still have the video. I'll have to get it. But was it Peru? Was it Chile? It was, an, it was a show about aliens. And they always want to say that aliens built the pyramids and all this kind of stuff. Fantastic stuff. And rather than a small group of people who showed up and maybe had like alien-like prowess uh, relative to the locals and then used the muscle of the locals to maybe carry out ideas of theirs. I don't know. But this is true. I have the video. So I didn't make the video. It was maybe on Discovery Channel. And they were uh, looking at genetics, DNA material from one of these like pharaohs or leaders of the royalty in um, Central America. I don't remember exactly what dynasty or what it was. And so they extracted this genetic material and they sent it off to be tested in the United States. The guy, you probably know, he talks about aliens on TV all the time. And he's got like wild hair that he comes up like crazy. And he's from, where is he from? Estonia or something like that. And originally, he's got a bit of an accent. And so at the very end of the show, and this is why I had to get it, the very end of the show, they revealed what the geneticists found out from the DNA that they extracted. The crazy-haired alien hunter was exuberant at the prospect of of uh, there being alien DNA, unrecognizable DNA. He obviously had been told ahead of time that there was going to be uh, shared some 
surprising information. You could even see it as he was getting uh, close to where he was going to sit down for the conversation about this on like a Skype call. See it on his face. He sits down and the guy, uh, the geneticist on the other end of the call says, it's very exciting, very startling. And the guy, the alien guy's like, well, tell me, tell me. So he said, uh, we found human DNA. Uh, and there were, there was like, uh, what percent like 5% of the DNA was unidentifiable. And the geneticist said, but that's probably due to the degradation that it, over time it had just fallen apart. Uh, but the DNA we found is very exciting. And so now the alien hunter was like muted. He's like, well, why? And then he said, because it's a white person from all the way back then in Central America, whatever it was. He said, not only that, but we can narrow it all the way down genetically to the current Scottish population. That's what he said. Now, please look into it for yourself. Maybe I don't remember correctly. Maybe they, they put a spoof video out. So maybe that's wrong. But look into it for yourself. The alien hunter, instead of being like I would, you, a normal person, if he weren't anti-white, which he's obviously anti-white operating in an anti-white world. But if he wasn't, he would say, Holy shit! You mean I was part of this process and we've discovered white people in these royal caste in Central America or whatever it was all the way back then? Narrowed it down to Scotland? To the current population of Scotland to be as, as clear as possible? No. He says, well, but there was like 5% of DNA that we don't know that could be alien, right? I'm not kidding you. That's what this goof said. Anyhow, as I'm not digging through these things and studying these things, I'm no professional. Get your opinions from elsewhere. Whiskey says, fascinating forensic analysis of a mummy proves that a powerful Egyptian pharaoh was actually a white man. Ramses, also known as Ramses the Great was the third pharaoh of the 19th dynasty of Egypt. He was often regarded as the greatest, most celebrated pharaoh of ancient Egypt. Utilizing the mummified remains of the pharaoh's face, the facial recognition, reconstruction of Ramses II was carried out. Forensic analysis of pharaoh Ramses. It's... Hair proved that the king's hair was originally reddish blonde, so a strawberry blonde, suggesting that he came from a family of redheads. Now, I don't know. You remember, I did a video where I actually went to several, uh, several different companies at the, the this is years ago, and I, I believe YouTube has already taken it down, at the very top of uh, the genome research on planet Earth, two of them, I think, was the ones I went to. And I, I quoted about genetic findings on, I think it was on the Egyptian pharaohs and royalty caste. And they were saying something that anti-whites will uh, take things down for. They were saying something. So it's not, it's out, information is out there for you to go look at. Now, I, I want to say this. I want to say this, that when you get information from these alternative sources, do not automatically believe them because you will end up burning your reputation. I've had plenty of times when some alternative source has a newspaper article, and sometimes and, and get ready for it in 24 leading up to the election. Anti-whites will seed totally ridiculous things into their victims' uh, population, the white population and not good non-white people who stand with 
white people uh, who are being victimized that are meant to discredit you with your peers. So do not fall for it. There will be news articles that are total horseshit. There will be claims that seem to comport with everything else that are total bullshit. Do not magnify those claims. Check it out for yourself. The only reason I can give this any time at all to mention is that I have, as I said, uh, researched those two specific, at the very top, the two top named companies that do the genome uh, work, and I read their findings. So that's the only reason I am bringing this up at all. So, but if this is accurate, that sure does look like uh, an accountant, doesn't it? That sure does look like your basic white guy accountant. But remember, when it comes to going free, when it comes to changing the world we're in, that's rear view mirror stuff. It doesn't matter how much, it doesn't matter you have those two businesses. I could have the names on the tips of my tongue. I could have, the, I could be holding the documentation with their findings. And if I went to a backyard party in suburbia and said, well, look here, this is what they say, and they are the top of their field, no one would believe me. And those who felt it credible or worthy of interesting or interest or, or worthy of interest wouldn't tell anyone else. So what good would you have done? Nothing. It would have been a massive waste of time. And every argument about these people would have uh, fallen to the anti-white immoral moral imperative in argumentation. This is why I don't do this because it doesn't work. It sure is interesting for us to take a look at though, isn't it? The possibilities. It's kind of like when, and this is how the anti-whites can just take the whatever reaches the public and incorporate it into their infernal symphony of the destruction of the West. Many years ago, a lot of information was coming out. It was like every six months, a new piece of info about white people being uh, in the Americas. And there were several, uh, th there was a hypothesis that had a name. I'm not even going to say it, but uh, there were a couple different names given to the groups of white people that were said to have crossed ice sheets into the Americas before anyone else. And they were, they kept finding evidence of it. Like every six months, there was another big finding that was reaching the public because it was so curious. It was so interesting. Even there were two T, I wish I could remember them. I wouldn't, doesn't matter. There were two different programs that I would watch when I would eat dinner because it was you know about interesting things, archaeology or it, it, different types of science. But there were two different shows that were uh, that were established, newer but established. And their hosts were researching very interesting things, cutting edge things. Both of those shows at, at different points investigated the findings. They went out. One specifically came to people here in Virginia and talked to them about things they dug up and, and that were confirmed to be true. Uh, and then went to North Carolina, went to Florida. The other one, same thing. Both of those shows were canceled. I've never seen those hosts again. Not either of them. But what did the, what happened on these channels, Discovery Channel, what was the other one? Learning Channel, I guess it was called. They made a movie and I, I, maybe it was a, like a documentary. I think it was a documentary, documentary uh, kind of a thing where they said on the title, who were the first Americans? This is what it was called. This came out, it was created right in the midst of these findings, one after the other. 
And then what they said at the very beginning was the, their hypothesis was their con obviously their conclusion. It doesn't matter. So that's what they said. It doesn't matter. Who were the first Americans? It doesn't matter. So you, white guy, white woman, have been blamed for all of the evils. You have been called thief. You have been called reprobate. You have been called interloper for generations because you weren't here first. But now, with the possibility that you were here first, now it doesn't matter. A midwit or even uber midwit would say, that's hypocritical. But those in the know, those who are smart enough to get it, understand there's no hypocrisy. Both of those contradictory positions are consistent. Those contradictory positions are consistent with arriving at an anti-white conclusion. No hypocrisy present. But then what happened? Well, the guy who was the head of archaeology at the Smithsonian, he got fired. And some other people got fired. They lost their with it. Maybe they were pushed out, whatever it was. You can go back and look in time. Maybe I don't remember it accurately. You can go back and look. And uh, then these findings stopped being found. They stopped being talked about. They There weren't any more shows mentioning it. Hard to find on the internet. The only kind of stuff, information you can find now that I could find, uh, just at a quick peek, uh, are things like from Cranks. They're making sure that you get the crank information because maybe it contradicts the anti-white narrative that white people are just interlopers and thieves in the Americas. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Lauren Witzke telling us about, and maybe I don't know where she got it from. Do you all know where she got it from? But what we are going to do, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a very brief break, very brief. I'm not going anywhere. And then we're going to come back and we're going to continue with our stories and much more on this absolutely epic New Year's Eve 24, the countdown to New Year's Day, if we make it, 2024. When we go to war, we'll be right back. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll no show up. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough.
retribution. Oh yeah, we want retribution. Oh yeah, we want retribution. Oh yeah, we want retribution. Yeah, we ran out of patience for your love with the cold hard hatred. Let us celebrate, ladies and gentlemen, some rogues emojis, if you please, as we celebrate our swashbuckling and then right back to the news we're covering. Your comments as well as your calls this evening. We're starting off with the swashbuckling, ladies and gentlemen, with Robert Hardly. Let's have a quick read of what he had to share with us. IRL swashbuckling. This copy of Go Free is for someone at my swim club. He had a photograph of a Go Free, ladies and gentlemen, and it says, what sparked the Go Free conversation with her was her daughter's school. They had an Aboriginal day to celebrate their culture that whites supposedly genocided. Of course, total bullshit, ladies and gentlemen. The mother in question was under the impression that her non-Aboriginal identifying daughter would be participating in the festivities with the whole school. Turns out that it was no whites allowed. Only Aboriginal identifying children were attending the festival at the school. The mother ended up having an argument with the principal about it. So I said to her I would buy her a book that would enable her to talk to the principal and win the argument. Let's get it out. Let's celebrate. Rogus emojis, ladies and gentlemen, for Robert. Squashing in the real world where it matters. That little girl going to be infinitely better off. Thanks to Robert. God bless you, brother. Changing the lives for the positive. White positivity. We're going to keep it rolling because uh, we're going to celebrate Reptile. Kind of the same thing. Give it up for Reptile. Crowns and gems for both of these men's feet. Ladies and gentlemen, Reptile standing in line. And we're going to be reading about that a little bit later. It's a little bit of a longer uh, bit of text. But we'll share it later. Awesome reptile, changing the world, raucous emojis, love and life. IRL, ladies and gentlemen, some more IRL, both of those IRL, and some more that we have to share with you. Again, we are celebrating five years suppressed for Born Guilty, ladies and gentlemen. Five years and still there, still rocking, still making it happen. Swashing through the lives of a great many people. We also have, you, you know who this is. Who is this, ladies and gentlemen? It's Franklin. Big swash for this hero. Wallpaper in the world. Everywhere you go, there isn't going to be a place in Virginia, Maryland, or West Virginia that doesn't get wallpapered. Stop the anti-whiteism. There is something that will actually change a person's life. And this word here, said to be cringe by uh, Mark Collett and many others, said it would never be used by anyone. He told me that personally. And uh, we got it in the mouths of many. The great Franklin. Give this man some crowns. 007. Get out some swash flags to celebrate. Here we have Baron White on the other side of the world. No white guilt. The big heart. Loving it. No I guilt dot org the statement that changes the world, ladies and gentlemen. No white guilt, it changes everything. Celebrate Baron and celebrate the others who are stickering around the world for white well-being. Let them know how much you love them and appreciate them. I give my personal salute here at the end of 23. We also have here celebrating Hans the Skipper. Give it up with some swashbuckling flags for Hans the Skipper in the threads, in the trenches. Thread is now another word for trench. And here he is in contest. He says white erasure takes priority over making money. And look at how many likes he has for that comment. 
nearly 3,000 when the screenshot was taken and climbing. Views 164.1 thousand views on Hans the Skipper. Can you imagine that? Then in a different comment on a different thread, we have it here right underneath of it for convenience. He says, when non-white groups gain numerical courage, they create culture that is biospiritually incompatible with Western kind. 215,000 views at that moment in climbing. Sharing a dialectic, sharing the lexicon, ladies and gentlemen, numerical courage. Non-white group, biospiritual incompatibility, Western kind. I mean, he packed it full. Give it up for Hans the Skipper. This is how the world has changed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how it's changed. God bless that man. Here we have another hero. Cool Baba J Magic. He is in the threads here. Of course, you can see he's under Matt Walsh's video. Who else is sick of anti-whiteism? Take a look, ladies and gentlemen. He's got 1.6 thousand likes on that comment. You have people giving him thumbs up, celebrating. 140 comments he in engendered with this concept that we have been and are pushing anti-white, anti-whiteism, Western kind, anti-white narrative, white erasure, many more. We have been pushing for many years. God bless the cool. Then we have the cool is back again. Down here, anti-whiteism has been prevalent in movies, entertainment, for way longer than most people realize. We need to be very careful with the movies we allow our children to watch and even uh, what we watch ourselves. In order to enjoy what we're watching, we have to suspend disbelief and go along with the ride, which makes it very easy for them to slip harmful ideas into our subconscious mind. This is brilliant top tier go free material ladies and gentlemen you too can be this powerful you too can be this much of a change agent fortunately in movies like this they aren't hiding it within subtext anymore which i believe helps us but also shows the precious situation a precarious situation we are in 248 likes this is not the like celebrate this man get out the raucous emoji Get out the swashbuckling flags. This is epic swash by Cool himself. This is not the light for a comment that is baneful to us, that undermines us, that doesn't do anything for our people. These are the likes and responses and comments and views for lexical and dialectical power that recapture our destiny. It is fundamentally different. You can understand that here. They can't understand that out in the world. You, we here understand it. We have to celebrate. God bless. Cool. Papa J. Magic. And then we have moving on. You can see we have Cool himself again. This time, he's under Tim Pool. And uh, we have one, one of our other champions. It's always epic swash. When more than one champ swashes in. More than one swash buckler swashes in. Here you have Cool saying, Tim. They're not, quote, dividing people based on race, close quote. They're uniting everyone against white people. It's not division. It's anti-whiteism. Oh, yeah. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen for this guy? 293 comments at that point and growing. Almost 2,000 likes at that point and growing. And then you see... The Great Reptile shows up, legendary thread. He comes into support. That's how it should be, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, this is how change happens. Cool Papa J Magic has it down perfectly. He's doing a magnificent job. More here by Cool. We all knew he was extremely anti-white. He always has been. The problem is in us that we allow this level of anti-whiteism precisely Ownership over the problem. Responsibility over the problem. The problem named as anti-whiteism. Genius. This should be totally unacceptable. But we let it get to the point where it's pretty much expected. I want you all 
Look at this. 428 likes, 29 comments, and counting at that point. That was seven days ago, the comment itself. Growing still to this day. I want you to appreciate also that these are not explicit, largely not explicit white sympathetics. These are ordinary white and non-white people, predominantly white people, ordinary folks watching Tim Pool, watching Matt Walsh. Those are the folks we have to get to. Those people given the likes. Those are ordinary good people, white and non-white. And that's what they're reading this and liking it because they can like it, because it's moral, because Cool Papa J Magic is a god among men. Give it up for that swashbuckler extraordinaire, ladies and gentlemen. Here you have also, look at this, over here on our hero, Donald Trump Jr., we have the one and only positive clarity as the dark horse financially gifting so that a massive audience of ordinary good people can see regarding Obama's Netflix movie it seems quote the woke close quote does nothing other than push the anti-white narrative everybody in that live chat swashbuckling flags for this champion are seeing that something that empowers them he goes on which is the same narrative used to justify victimizing the ethnic Irish via mass migration. Give up massive swatch. He doesn't do it once. He does it twice, ladies and gentlemen. A $10 financial gift, making sure that that stays in front of the thousands who are watching and the tens and tens of thousands who watch in replay. Imagine that. Giving them the words they need to change the world and they embrace it, as you can see from Cool Papa J Magic. I want to also point out about the great Cool, cool Papa J Magic. More 007s in celebration for him that he is swashing hardcore on Jesse Lee Peterson. Getting to Jesse Lee Peterson day in and day out. And as Jesse Lee Peterson says, anti-white, anti-whiteism, anti-white narrative, white erasure. It will be because of Cool Papa J Magic and other swashbucklers getting over there, changing the f***ing world. And ladies and gentlemen, you know him well. He never stops. I want you to listen to this. We're going to roar with celebration for the Franklinator over there on our hero, Donald Trump Jr. Ireland at least protests uh, white erasure. Well, they do, but then they're threatened to go to jail. I mean, Ireland... Did you just see that, ladies and gentlemen? Listen again. Can you all hear it okay? Let me know if you can hear it okay. Franklin writes a comment to our hero, Donald Trump Jr., using white erasure as something that is normal, as something that is expected, as something that in conversation. And our hero, Donald Trump Jr., is able to read it, not flinch, move right through it. That means he'll end up using it, a concept that will liberate Western kind from our persecution and save the West, including these United States, for people of all races. Listen one more time to our hero. This is where he's getting it from. Our heroes is where he's getting it from. So when he gives it to Pops and he says it, it's because we did it. Ireland at least protests uh, white erasure. Well, they do, but then they're threatened to go to jail. I mean, Ireland... Celebrate, celebrate the great, the one and only, ladies and gentlemen, Franklinator, who just can't be stopped. And ladies and gentlemen, as we go to that 10 second bumper before we continue rocking out the rest, I want you all swashbuckling flags, big, loud as hell, double O, quadruple O seven. Give it up as loud as you can and as many emojis and swashbuckling flags as you can for everybody over the course of 23 who has been making monumental things take place. We'll celebrate more later on in our gathering. But make sure they know it. Make sure that you remember these victories because no one else will. It's up to us. God bless you all. Ten seconds.
<laughs> oh my God. We're going to get to the financial gifts and the rest of the news. My God, my personal salutes to everybody over this week. It's amazing. It's truly amazing. We're going to talk a little bit later about who recognizes and what recognizes, acknowledges, gives credit or doesn't, and uh, how we react or don't react, move through, whatever it is. Uh, we're going to talk more about that because it's relevant, it's important, uh, and uh, it's something that uh, we, we now know is indeed uh, the case for the lay of the land. No more, no more study needs to be done. Let me pull up our next news item, and we're going to keep rolling. What are the anti-whites going to do in 2024? What are they going to do? How bizarre, how crazy is it about to get? We got an article about it. We got that to talk about. We have Donald Trump saying it's an invasion. Uh, we have news about the courts uh, and Donald Trump and uh, demanding Supreme Court justices recuse themselves. You're seeing the now the angle of attack to prevent another angle of attack attack to prevent Donald Trump from uh, becoming president, which is going to happen by God. Uh, we also have uh, the we also have the governor, DeWine, the Republican, and news on him and how he vetoed a bill that would have made it illegal to offer, uh, I don't know what it's properly called, so forgive me for my ignorance, but uh, sexual uh, transformation medications and, and surgeries that would mutilate body parts. Uh, that was going to become a bill in Ohio. When I read the article, I'll have the actual verbiage for you. It was going to become a bill in Ohio, and the Republican governor vetoed it. So, do we have are Republicans? Do you put do you invest in Republicans, or do you invest in the fight against anti-whiteism? We'll have that for you in just a moment. But first, we are going to celebrate in a very big way the financial gifters over there on Entropy. Quadruple O Sevens 2023 salutes to Dude Bro Moment. 50 white well being dollars here at the end of uh, 2023. God bless you, brother. And hey, it just struck midnight somewhere. It is New Year's. Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. Dude Bro Moment financially gifting 50 white well being dollars. And he says, for white. Well being. Give him love, folks. Let him know. Let him know how much you love him. Do the bro moment. God bless you, good sir. Thank you so much. A champ all throughout 2023. We have uh, um, promos financially gifting $15 and saying happy new 2024 from Sweden. A big happy uh, 2024 from the once great state of Virginia back to you. Thank you so very much. For that $15 over here on Entropy, God bless you. And uh, Sweden, a place where you have no go zone nouns, at least if you're to believe the reporters, uh, establishment reporters, uh, mainstream reporters that are there. And uh, maybe we'll cover that in a subsequent week. Wilson Bear, financially gifting $5 over here on Entropy. God, thank, God bless you and thank you, Wilson Bear. He says with those $5, feeding my six-month-old son some beef right now for white well-being. Oh my gosh. He's going to make sure that by seven months, he, hair's coming out of that boy's chest. God bless you, Wilson Bear. God bless you. $5. Son of the West in his arms. Son of the West. God bless you and that little... Let's, let's celebrate. I don't think we knew that six months ago this little baby was born for Wilson Bear. Let's celebrate that Son of the West, ladies and gentlemen, right here. In the white positive sphere. We also have, boy, keep those raucous emojis going. Break them out with gems and diamonds and balloons and crowns for one of Western kind. Financially gifting 50-5-0. Save those white baby dollars, especially those six-month-old sons of the West that we just learned about. 50 of them. He says, many thanks, Jason, for your Promethean efforts this year. Well used, my friend. Well used. Thank you for that. Uh, Promethean efforts this year in service to white well-being for crushing clown world with epic swash. 
and pinache. Oh, I like how you put that together. Well done, my friend. Well done. Epic swash and panache. You're damn right. If I could swing in, it would be. I would have a, a hat with a feather. I actually have a hat with some beautiful feathers. Maybe I'll wear it one of these days. And for leading and inspiring the outreach team and community to victory after victory, exclamation points. Wow, this testimonial still going is add 10 zeros to that $50 financial gift, this testimonial. God bless one of Western kind. He wraps up with this. Let 2024 be the year our efforts, our efforts and successes are multiplied. Hearing, healing and empowering millions more of our folk globally. Let's give it up for one of Western kind, a beautiful financial gift and a glorious, dazzling, a dazzling testimonial for the work we're doing here for the work that Team White Wellbeing, every one of those folks, if you're not on Team White Wellbeing, you're not doing anything. God bless those heroes. We'll swivel around over here and we'll take a look at Odyssey. And we'll see if we've missed anything over there. We'll do a quick refresh. And over here on, uh, on DLive, as that refreshes, we have one diamond's worth of lemons one diamond's worth of lemons or what, what is that what it's called over there and he says thanks jason for all your tireless hard work god bless you thank you for that i really appreciate it and that's from fledgling just donated one diamond uh, one diamond over there on d live thank you so very much we have what else has happened over there i think that might nope nope let's see we have uh, I'm Calling the Police has financially gifted Juan Diamond as well on D Live of their cryptocurrency. Thank you so much. And I'm Calling the Police writes, thanks, Jason. Happy New Year. Big Happy New Year to you. You're so welcome and thank you as well. And uh, I'm Calling the Police came back with another financial gift of two ice cream cones, two ice cream cones over there on D Live, thank you so very much. And uh, do we have anything else? Is this from today? I'm calling the police. I don't know if that was from last week and two ice cream cones and six bells. I think that's new as well. It wasn't six bells was the last one, was it? I don't recall that. Six bells of cryptocurrency and two ice cream cones. Thank you so very much. I see the bells are up there. Oh, did the bells replace the lemons? Maybe that's what that is. Thank you so very much for that. I'm calling the police. Additional two ice creams and six bells of cryptocurrency. Man, going crazy over there at DLive. And we also have Spartan. Spartan over there financially gifting two bells and an ice cream cone. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much, Spartan, for those uh, financial gifts. And we move to the bottom. We have a good impersonation said by a tiny something or other. I don't know. I actually don't know what it is. Fill in the blank if you like. Tiny something or other. Uh, thank you so very much. I don't know. Was it something someone I was in, uh, uh, doing impersonation of? Uh, and uh, Seven Sons is here and others fledgling. Thank you all for being here over there on D Live. And we got, we just got a little frog riding a kangaroo. What a beautiful thing. And that is by Rim. Is that Rim Fire or is it something else? I can't. It's a little blurry, folks. Rim Fire. It is Rim Fire. I am sure of it. Thank you so much. We'll head on over here to Odyssey. We'll be swiveling around in just a moment. And looks like we haven't missed any financial gifts over there on Odyssey. I hope it's working still. Uh, but uh, no, none over there. So I will swivel back around this way and we will see. Let me make sure I don't throw the mic off. We will see. Let everybody know that we are still going free. The gathering continues, ladies and gentlemen. Let your circles know. And we will uh, refresh, subscribe, star. We're going to be getting right back into the news. Your comments. There's going to be your calls. There's going to be a Twitter space tonight. We're going to be having a lot of fun. So if you've got comments you want to make, you can call in a little bit later on Skype. Let me know. I call you. 
And then you can also call in on the Twitter space and uh, we can chat there if you would like as well for everyone to hear here as well. Looks like we're fine on subscribe star. Didn't miss anybody. And on the cash app, we have uh, just this day. Get out the raucous emojis. Raucous emojis. Big celebration. Mini salutes. Crowns and gems. Crowns and gems. Find the crowns. Make it rain some crowns. We got two financial gifters that you're going to make it rain crowns for, ladies and gentlemen. It's rain and crowns. It's rain and crowns. Hallelujah. It's rain and crown. $50. Lady Anglo. Thank you so much. God bless you, Lady Anglo. And she writes with those five zero, protect the beautiful little bright baby dollars. 50 of them. She says, Happy New Year. This is our year. White well being community. God bless you. Thank you so much. It is our year. A big celebration. And we have Ace here. Ace showing up. Financially gifting 100. 100. Protect the white babies in their cute little white diaper baby bottoms. Dollars. 100 of them. Thank you so very much. Rain the crowns. Rain the gems. And she writes, thanks for being a voice of truth. Well, God bless you and thank you for being in service to white well-being, for financially gifting, for all that you do. Ace and Lady Anglo. And we have here also financially gifting. We have White Arts Now financially gifting 10 white well-being dollars and saying with those glorious 10 for Western civilization. Amen for that, for Western civilization. Thank you. Thank you, good friend. We have here white student tape. Also in the audience, celebrate $5 from white student tape saying, uh, wishing a happy new year and cheers to future white positive victories. Amen to that. Who came up with the white uh, the W plus for white positive. Was that for null? Who came up with that? It's awesome. Whoever came up with it. I love it. A white positive, white positive victories. And he's got a little champagne and glasses and everything. God bless you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for doing all the work that you are doing. And then we also have here. Oh my goodness. It's Dr. I, who we saw earlier in the live chat. I said, hello to ladies and gentlemen, Make sure your raucous emojis are still out. Rev them up. Rev them up some more because we've got a $53 financial gift from the one and only Dr. I. The only man that's going to work on my eyeballs, Dr. I. God bless you, brother. $53 here on this New Year's Eve. And, folks, we're going to be going. We're going to be going past 930 Eastern time. I don't know. We might go all the way past midnight Eastern time tonight. We'll see. Uh, because that is how much I love Western kind, Western civilization and the great work that we're doing. He says with those $53, Happy New Year. God bless you and all white well-being champs. Magnificent. Magnificent, my dear brother. Magnificent. And don't forget, we're celebrating it again. We always do with financial gifts of this side. More than more than one celebration last Sunday, the one, the only. Keep the raucous emojis going one last time, and we'll bring up the next story for no white guilt clips. Financially gifting last Sunday, 1,000 saluting dollars, $1,007 to white well-being. God bless you for that financial gift. God bless that champion, that hero man in existence. For our people, thank God we have people like these to celebrate, that we have people like these in service. Love every single one of you all. I'll check one more time at the subscription. Thank you all for celebrating these heroes. There is nothing like what we are doing here. Folks, they're going to write stories about us. They are going to tell stories about us in the future. They're going to say, 
It would must have been something to be there at that time. It must have been a remarkable thing to be part of that. With everything going on in the world and everybody doing other things. And here you had this little community. I mean, this is something that is unique. It's inimitable and something that can't be taken away from us, at least our knowledge of it. And if somebody else doesn't write the book, I will. And we're going to celebrate as many of those who fell in to service here, heard the silver trumpets, and changed the world. We want people to know forevermore. So cheers. Salute. Prost. And on and on. Thank you all. There's the great Brent Danger. There's Western Kind. God bless you all for celebrating. 1,007 dollars. Working people. We don't have we don't have wealthy people showing up that have some sort of proclivity and ignorance when it comes to politics, financially gifting. We don't have any of that sort of so sort of like angel investors for political activity. If you want to make money, then you get involved in political actions. That's where you go to make money. Now, I've already, I can defeat any argument about doing anything other than what we articulated in politics. Nothing can be done. Nothing. Nothing. So anyone going into that, anyone believing that it can, anybody going into that and taking big money from it, raising big money for it to pass through themselves and to enrich themselves is doing it for the economic advantage until uh, unless they were brand new and totally ignorant but so few are that way this is ordinary folks this is norm ordinary in their lives extraordinary in their deeds and so that's how we end up with these champions People like, we can never say enough about no white gill clips. We can never. Uh, so many heroes, so many wonderful people doing. We love no white gill clips. It's amazing. Uh, so many people doing great work here. And uh, we're going to continue. We're going to take a look at a couple more pieces of news. And then we are going to uh, bump on over to my a discussion about my findings my con my conclusions and what are your conclusions about the last seven years making the argument to the white sympathetic sphere we're going to talk about that a little bit it's very important uh, and i want to i want to get your feedback as well and a little bit of instruction for how we move forward relative to the rest of the white sympathetic sphere after now the year 2023, uh, when we have been totally vindicated. Let's go ahead and pull up. Our next news item. What are the anti-whites going to do? This is from the Daily Caller. What are the anti-whites going to do in 2024? Well, one of the things they're going to do, we can talk even before we begin reading this. Look at this psycho here. One of the things they're going to do is, dude, bro, moment in the live chat. There he is. And the great slots. Uh, one of the things is, we are going to be reaching that very soon, my friend. That's how we're starting 2024. Big things in 2024. We'll talk about what we're doing. Uh, we're also going to be talking about, obviously, right now with the anti-whites. Now, a slew of movies are coming out. There is, according to Donald Trump, an invasion of the country. We have millions and millions and millions of people that have come in that are costing the country based on, we pulled up a bunch of articles, so it's not my numbers. You can uh, 
go and verify or debunk as you see fit. But it was something like 60 billion uh, a year in just the border crossers to house them, clothe them, feed them. We've over the course of the year looked at their uh, looked at stories about them and the places that they're being taken to stay places they refuse to stay because they say they're beneath them. We look at the video of them coming across our borders here in the U.S. and in Europe and abroad. And the kinds of people that are coming across from these war torn, horrible places, the men leave their women and children behind and they come into our countries. I get so disgusted when you see these uh, conservative types who want to say that uh, well, these people are not just from Mexico or they're not just from Latin America. No, they are mostly from Latin America. And that's a problem. That's a problem. Go home. Conservatives are so concerned with measuring themselves by the anti-white metric. They want to say, hey, I will cede to all of you anti-whites that everybody in Central South America are just angels, every one of them, and that every one of them should re should come and take the place of a, a white man in his house, uh, and so he can have his white wife, and he can have his job, and everyone should do that. But we got people coming from other countries too. Shut up. They're all a problem. They're, no more. You don't have a surplus of jobs. You don't have uh, an endless, pristine environment. You don't have a, uh, a country and a white population that this number of non-white people would not bio-spiritually affect. We are well beyond the point of these people transforming our environments where we live into something we don't recognize, something that doesn't resonate, that causes disharmony in us, and something that is violent and dangerous for us. I just put up a video on Twitter days ago, two movies side by side, two videos side by side. One of them is in Europe where a, a anti-white Pakistani comes up to the window of a white woman and uh, wags his tongue and then wags another part of himself at her and, uh, and then gropes himself. Uh, a sexual assault in front of this woman in her home. At the same time, a white woman in her living room making a TikTok video in the United States and an anti-white Hispanic, one of those ones that I guess are good because they're coming from other places too, home invading her into her house. And she has to run to the door. Who are you? Get out. And he's like, am I your friend? I can be your friend. After trying some some Spanish on her, that didn't work. He tried some broken English. That is the world that's being created as a consequence. They're all problematic when it comes to, are we going to live in a Western country or not? There could be far more, and I, I know there are, good people from these communities who they just want to work. We know this. They just want to work. They just want to pay their taxes. They just, they're just they going to obey the law. We get it. But if you bring enough of them in, you create a cultural cold war because they get numerical courage. And even good peoples can end up at each other's throats that way. And that's what's happening across the West. A, cult, a cultural cold war that is increasingly bloody and throughout my reading of human history, and you can either debunk me or, or, or prove me right, throughout my reading, cultural cold wars always end up in bloody civil war. It's just, oh, this, look, look at the history. Wild balkanization. I don't want that to happen. So we know the border is the invasion, what Donald Trump calls an invasion, not me, but Donald Trump calls it an invasion, that that will continue. It will probably even uptick because for various reasons, I won't go into it so we can get into this article. 
We have the movies coming out. And we have what otherwise is going to be an attempt at every single level by anti-whites to prevent Donald Trump from winning. We may have a constitutional crisis. And this year is going to witness it. What else are the anti-whites doing? Well, for one thing, we'll get to the story after this. The white, the anti-white, white white governor of Ohio, DeWine, is he white? Are you going to, is people, are people going to claim that he's Jewish? He looks white and also looks a little pedophilic to me. Uh, He vetoed a bill that would have prevented surgeons and doctor's offices and hospitals from taking children through uh, sex change. So we anti-whites of all parties, of all political persuasions are going to be doing this over the course of 2024. And what happens as a ideology functioning as a faith nears its conclusion? It gets more fanatical. It gets more radical. It hunts down more enemies. So we can look for more white women to be excluded from the benefits of anti-whiteism. That's a good thing because not enough white women decide on their own that it's horrible to victimize white men and white people in general. So that's a good thing. I personally want more uh, transgender guys, transgender women, which is it? Imaginary women in female sports, in cooking competitions, female cooking competitions, in every competition with female, scholastic competitions. I want that because the environment that white women have been able to uh, create for themselves with anti-whiteism by being at war with the white man. And we're here, we're talking about generally, not universally. I thought that only anti-whites were dumb enough not to get this. We're talking about generally, not universally. If you can't understand that, your classroom is down the hall. Check your syllabus. be able to create this little cocoon for themselves where they can continue having uh, their jobs. They can still get their promotions. They can still get the government handouts. They can still get to win on the sports field. Well, that. If they can't do it on their own, if they can't side with the white race on their own, well, then uh, let anti-whiteism push them into our corner. So they're going to get more fanatical, and this author attempts to spell some of that out. Democrat-run states, anti-white-run states, are instituting a host of anti-white, not left-wing, laws at the beginning of 24, targeting several cultural and political issues. States like California, Michigan, Illinois, Washington, and Colorado are enacting laws pushing uh, anti-whiteism issues on their residents as well as various restrictions to residents' behavior that attempts to limit emissions or damage to the environment. Imagine how pristine our environment would be without all of what Donald Trump calls an invasion here. Blue states are also targeting gun rights. Jesus Christ. Blue states are also targeting Anti-white states are also targeting the right to self-defense and expanding protections for illegal aliens. Uh, Border crosses, I don't know if you're allowed to call them that or not. California is initiating a new law on January 1 that will fine major retailers if they don't sell, quote, gender-neutral children's toys in the stores. What is that? What the hell's gender neutral? I mean, did you did you have any like none of my little GI Joes had had a penis on them? So what are they going to to do? Does that mean um, that you won't be able to tell whether it's male or female? Like androgynous toys? Like maybe he'll it'll have like a little, kind of kind of tits, but but also kind of big biceps and and a beard 
and kind of wide hips. I mean, what is that going to be? How up will the children be playing with that shit? Seriously. These items would have to be clearly marked and sectioned, and stores that refuse to comply will face a $250 penalty for the first violation, $500 penalty for every subsequent offense. And get ready for these, uh, the new the law enforcement. It, they'll be the, uh, the, what will they probably, they'll probably call them something like the morality, uh, they probably won't use alliteration though. The morality police. Get ready for them. Because the anti-whites are going to absolutely institute that. Anonymous is here. Art acrobats. Share with you. With you kind of Saxony. Great to see you. Share that we're live. Share that we're rocking it. Uh, this law pertains to any product designed to designed or intended by the manufacturer to facilitate sleep, relaxation, or the feeding of children, or to help with sucking or teething. So you see, they know the importance of getting to the youngest mind possible because that is when you can really corrupt. They know that the the, at the, at the anti-white, as I've talked about before, psychological warfare operators, those people exist. And we are their counter. I've been kind of hinting at this for a long time, and people, they're just not picking it up. But they know that the subconscious mind, they know that what, what I figured out on my own and what others who have shown up here figured out on their own to various degrees, totally or somewhat, or they had a hunch or whatever, they came here now, they're like, oh, shit. They know that the subconscious mind is what governs our life 95% of the time and that the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between reality and fiction. So you're going to give the child a sexually amorphic feeder or whatever it is. So that's what they're looking at when their earliest impressions of the world are being taken. I mean, are we going to get to the point where you have to wear like a mask when you look at uh, your child? You have to wear a mask that they can't tell. Maybe it's a female face with whiskers. Quote, let retailers decide what's best for their customers and what their cli clientele want. But, <laughs> but. Uh, no, this, the next part of this sentence is going to contradict the first part. The last thing we need is for the state legislator in California to decide what parents buy for their children. Okay, close quote. So actually, I'm wrong. That was a conservative, idiotic point of view. Like, all that matters is the money. Let them decide because the money is what matters, right? If they're making money, then it's good. Fuck no. How about this conservative uh, Republican leadership? Pass some laws that make this shit as legal. How about that? Republican California, Melissa uh, Melendez told Fox News, we don't need the government trying to co-parent with us. That's Here you have an abstractionist argument that's not going to be able to work against the moral imperative of anti-whiteism. Also starting in 24, a new law in the Golden State will ban the sale of any gas-powered lawnmowers, leaf blowers, chainsaws, or yard care equipment. Tens of thousands. I would get a loudener on all of my equipment. Chainsaws, lawnmowers, I would make them 10 times as loud. 10,000. Tens of thousands of workers in California who relied on such equipment for their businesses will be most affected by the new rule. Concerns also exist over the efficacy and cost of electric-powered alternative, according to the Sacramento Bee. So you can look forward to far more brownouts and blackouts like they've been having in California. Far more as everybody tries to power up their cars and lawnmowers. And, and hey, maybe this is a way to just level out uh, care for the, the your yard and property. 
so that everybody's yard can look like the ghetto because you won't be able to charge your shit and uh, therefore you won't be able to work in the yard. Art Acrobat says, Ken was always androgynous. Uh, is that Barbie and Ken? I guess I didn't uh, really notice. Fournol says, did you hear that the border crossers are now chopping down people's trees in their yards to build fires? I had heard that. Uh, in fact, I've read that several different places. And yeah, cutting down people's trees, there might be uh, extremely expensive trees, ornamental trees, Japanese maples, etc. cetera, cryptomeria, chopping them down. And they're like, well, I'm just going to make a fire out of this. And of course, of course, what's the argument that these white people are bringing to bear? It's my property, abstractions. They have life. They need it for warmth. What's more important? your little tree or their warmth. You can't argue it that way. That's not how we do it. That's not how you win. Suwanee River is here. Promethean Kitchen says, hearing uh, Canada, here in, maybe here in Canada, there is a place where they're filming a show called The Curse of Oak Island in Nova Scotia. And they even said, that the Crusaders made it there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. They're looking for, for treasure. That's right. And so they're talking, yeah, well, they better they better start hedging their conclusions. Although the Crusaders would not put them here before the Asians coming across the Bering Strait Bridge, if that happened. Taking a look. Remember, tag me. June is here. Hello to you, June. Tag me as no white guilt with any comments or questions as we're together, and I will get to them. That's the easiest way to get my attention. Happy New Year. I'm hoping I'm hopping off for a bit, heading to the gym. We'll be back in a couple of hours, says white student transmission. Good deal, brother. Yeah, I was at the gym a couple times, a few times this week. Rocking it. Look at all these heroes celebrating. Uh, Art, say, Art Acrobat says, yes, the Ken doll lacks a gender. Oh, God. Gross. Yeah, well, isn't that interesting? Because... The Barbie doll targets little white girls and then they give her a white boyfriend that's not masculine at all. He's androgynous. And then you wonder, at least in some measure, why white females are re repulsed by actual white men. You know, here's the perfect kin. He's half woman. Now the, the Barbie that we would make would have a real man as a boyfriend. He'd look like me. He would be all man. <laughs> Fernal says the Kindle needs to be hairy as that's funny. Uh, for Noel also asking, how do you argue then regarding the chopping down of trees? These people are anti-white. So we just begin. We always begin with this is an attack on what we create. That tree in my yard is an expression of who I am inside. My expression, my ability to express myself and therefore me, that I am under attack when they destroy what I have made. Their presence here is a destruction of what me and my people have made. And their presence here, no matter how law-abiding otherwise, because that's obviously not lawful, 
is a contradiction to our expression, my people's expression here, and will create disharmony for me. And so it's beginning in a very, for me, or, or maybe beginning if you're just noticing it for the first time, uh, or it being problematic for you for the first time, uh, or it's finally reached a point where it's very personal for me because now they're destroying what I project and express on my own property. What I, maybe you didn't plant the tree. Maybe the tree was there when you bought the house. You bought it in part because it was uh, something that was at least neutral with what you were projecting into the world. It's yours. Think about it this way. If we went down to Guatemala, okay, and we just walked onto somebody's property and cut it down, the first thing the Guatemalan would be arguing is not that it was some breach of an abstraction. They would be saying, you white mother." You come to my land, my house, my people's land, my people's country, my house, and you destroy my property. You interloper, you thief, you, you know, that's what they would be. We do the exact same thing. Great question. Thank you for asking it, brother. Let's continue. Save Western Civilization Now is with us. A new law in the Golden State. Okay, that one we got. The people most affected. Okay. Oh, wait. Gas power lawnmowers, leaf blowers. Okay. Exist over the efficacy. Okay. Quote, the people most affected are going to be the Latinos. that don't have a big business. So immediately the concern, and here you can see on this daily caller, a conservative is not for the millions. You could have a hundred million white people being victimized. And if a thousand non-white people, a hundred non-white people were also being victimized, conservatives would ignore the totality of white people suffering and talk about that 100 non-white people suffering. And saying this is a Vasquez, Vasquez. So how does this play out in, in my country that my people create when we let all these people in? Well, they're worried about themselves. Remember, we saw that in Texas with the, the black. I mean, there's so many cases we could go on forever. The black politician in the state of Texas. Oh, no, not black. Hispanic. Going ape shit about how his people, his people. Remember that? You just wait until they have the vote and it's all going to be about his people and your your white ass isn't going to matter at all. There aren't going to be any will obeisance to abstractions. Another landscaping small business owner, Guzman, told the bee that big business would be the, quote, only ones to survive the new law and noted that landscaping jobs with electric powered equipment would take longer quote, because the machines don't have the same potential. Oh, the, so the, I guess big business is stand in for white people. So you're going to be hurting the little non-white guy, total anti-white narrative. Thanks so much. Daily caller. The law comes alongside a massive push in California to promote electric vehicles and the phase out of gas powered California seeks to be completely reliant on green energy by 2045. Also instituting a new law in January that will ban employers from asking employees about their marijuana consumption outside of the workplace. Would also prevent uh, employers from penalizing employees if they test positive. Isn't that great? So you could have an an employee in California now coming very soon that could be getting high as and then uh, maybe is responsible for your anesthesia and you're dead and your dad is dead and your mom is dead and your little boy who has cancer and needs another surgery is dead 
This is such a good idea. Actually, if I smell marijuana one more time in public, I'm going to be all for public execution of marijuana smokers that are smoking in public. I am sick of it. I mean, the, the entire, my entire world is just dotted with this skunk shit smell. Yeah, you know, if you smoke marijuana because you need to for medical reasons or you need to for uh, or you want to for pleasure, do it in away from society. I'm not going to make you a bre inhale some nasty odor uh, because I have some sort of hobby or medical need. Get it the fuck out of public. So I smell it one more time, which undoubtedly is going to happen. And I'm going to be all for when I get in power, public executions of public marijuana smokers. It is disgusting. And I thought cigarette, cigarette smoke was nasty, continues to be nasty. I don't want to smell that either. Nobody in the public square, the public square should be our best. That's where we should comport ourselves to our highest standard to what we consider optimal. That's where we should say, this is what's optimal in the world, and that is when we're in public, the public square, the public space, that is what we do. You want to fall, you're gonna, so you're going to try your hardest to be optimal. You want to you go ahead and be lax in your house or whatever, then whatever. I won't know. But... In public, I'm sick of smelling it. It's nasty. Uh, so in 2024, Michigan will expand its Civil Rights Act, the Swindle Whites Act, to prevent discrimination on the basis of gender identity, according to the bill. The Michigan Supreme Court ruled that the state justice justices must use the preferred pronouns of attorneys in their courtrooms. So imagine how all of that plays out relative to you. You're not going to be able to escape that. You insult somebody, you you don't call them the right thing, and if judges are required to do this. Imagine what you, what kind of punishment there will be for you if you don't also do it. The judges who dissented against the ruling said that the court should not uh, in inter, inter, entwine politics with legal practice. Good. So what? Another argument that loses. This is a fluid political debate. Okay, who cares? <laughs> Davy Boyd is here. Hello and welcome. Brush with darkness. New Year's Eve. Chess training with no white guilt. Amen. That's fantastic. You should always be working out with no white guilt. Promethean Kitchen says, did you hear that the entire African conference of Catholic bishops told Pope Francis that they are not going to be doing gay blessing unions. No, I did not hear that. But I expect that they will be uh, given a little bit of leeway and then in various ways brought to heel. But thank you for sharing that. I had no idea. Yeah, they'll get them to capitulate. It's not. It's not really a, um, a really important issue for anti-whites. You know, when they're looking out at the world, I mean, if anything, you can look at something like that and say, "Ah, I see anti-whiteism at work." They really don't care. It's not a big deal for anti-whites. They're like, "What? The bunch of blacks in Africa are not going to." But in white countries, similar to, oh, what is this now? 
Okay, Michigan is also issuing multiple new restrictions on these people, gun and firearm rights. First of all, what is a gun if it's not a firearm? <laughs> these are conservatives for you. They have jello brains. Conservative content creators. The Unfortunately, the consumers of this shit are uh, being misled. But this is the conservative content creators. So first they say gun and firearms. Uh, but then they say their rights. So do these inanimate objects have rights? I mean, I have been saying right to self-defense, and I've been arguing for almost as long as I've been arguing that we need to use uh, anti-white, anti-whiteism. Because it was just so obvious to me. And I even worked a couple of places that uh, it uh, I should have been able to influence. But they're so dead set on doing things the way that they've always lost that they're not going to listen to anything new. Now, we here push right to self-defense. And we've seen and we've celebrated right to self-defense show up some places as a consequence of our swashing. We're not going to get acknowledgement or gratitude. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Not from the general masses. So Michigan is also issuing multiple restrictions on the right to self-defense. Going into the new year, Governor Gretchen Whitmore, the, the woman that you would kill yourself if you had to live with her and hear that voice every day, and law lawmakers signed legislation to expand background checks for gun sales, restrict gun ownership for individuals convicted of domestic violent misdemeanors, and institute red flag policies that would allow courts to remove guns from individuals that the courts deem a safety risk to themselves or others. This is another one of those problems that is created by anti-whiteism and that, you know, for which there isn't a, a great remedy. You have to understand that at some point in a series of errors, there isn't a, a single cure. Let me rephrase. There isn't a cure to the immediate error that will remedy the problem. Because the preceding errors that gave existence to the subsequent errors are still in place. Does that make sense? So what do you do? These red flag laws are clearly going to be used by anti-whites to come after people who are not anti-white enough. It's going to be almost entirely white people who are not anti-white enough. So. What do you do about all of the psychotic people who are not institutionalized because of anti-whiteism, who are accessing firearms and talking about killing, talking about murdering, even plans like we had the guy uh, with his military base uh, and he was a, a reservist telling everybody he was going to go and kill everybody at the base. Red flag laws could have deprived him of his firearm. Do you say, well, we continue in an environment where we continue to, to be subjected to psychotic people using firearms in the commission of their psychosis and therefore, thereby multiplies the emotional reasoning for depriving all of us of the right to self-defense? So there's no immediate answer. And sometimes when it comes to errors, once you have gone down the road far enough, there's no immediate answer, or let me rephrase again, no answer to remedy the immediate error, the immediate challenge or problem. Instead, you have to go back further. You have to go to the root of the errors, which is anti-whiteism. You take care of anti-whiteism, you won't have a problem with judges and district attorneys and doctors who are anti-white 
or who just want to keep their license, keep their position, coming to conclusions that deny you your right to self-defense, you take care of the problem of the mentally ill being in society on expensive uh, drugs that obviously don't work or work well enough that your healthcare costs are driven up by having to afford so that pharmaceutical companies continue to, I'm now the pharmaceutical companies are apparently, I don't know if this is true or not, but they're putting like billions of dollars into uh, this expectation of rapidly growing cancers. How do they know? How do they know? <laughs> you remedy these things and all of the subsequent errors by going to the source of anti-whiteism. Ulrak is with us. Great to see you. Phantom of the Paradise. For White Wellbeing has joined us. Awesome to see you all. Similar to California lawmakers, Whitmore signed the Clean Energy and Climate Action Package Act in November, which seeks to make the state 100% carbon neutral by 2040. Will it matter that... In, look at this witch. Would it matter that, look, she has dead eyes as well. Like so many of these anti-white females, dead eyes. Will it matter that India is, and, and is producing like a hundred times the amount that America and the rest of the West ever has? Will it matter that China is producing a hundred times and growing the amount? Any of those arguments, will that matter? No, because the argument's never been about those things. The act would require all of the state's utilities to increasingly uh, source from green energy, anti-white companies like solar and wind power to form nuclear, hydrogen, and natural gas. Meanwhile, we have fusion that's been repeated now uh, three times. And according to scientists, this is an, an unbelievable breakthrough. And uh, now they just have to develop the tools to apply it. So endless energy, but they're going to shut it all off for anti-whiteism. It only makes sense when you understand that they're anti-white. If they were concerned about the environment, they wouldn't be looking to unreliables like wind and solar. They would be crowing with joy over clean, limitless energy. That is a step away. So you're looking at more ways in which they're going to get directly to you, directly to each of us individually to adversely affect our lives. In Illinois, a new law going into effect on January will allow non-citizens to become police officers and sheriffs. Isn't, isn't that already happening in California now? Where's Fernal or somebody in California? Can they tell us? So long as they are deemed legally authorized. Who gets to deem that? Well, the anti-whites. It's good. The legally authorizing fairy will just come by and say, Bing, you are now a police officer over these uh, white citizens whose genetics create Western civilization. I wonder how we're going to be treated. But could you imagine? I mean, this is, this is absolutely having a thief, a burglar, a rapist, a murderer, whatever it is, at least a criminal, come in through your window, and then the government gives them authority over you and your household. That's what this is. They break into your home. And now the anti-whites give them authority over your lives. Yeah, see, Fernal says he doesn't know the, the details, but yes, in some counties, non-citizens. And I will tell you this, folks, have you been aware? For generations, illegals, uh, people who have come into the country, border crossers, I guess I should say, not legally, enter the country, have been able to join our military. And they're given a green card from for doing so. 
That's a problem. So now they're in our armed services. That means these tons of millions are going to be able to join the military. The military, which hasn't uh, been able to reach its recruiting uh, mark since what, Bill Clinton? The U.S. military, which doesn't have anywhere near the soldiers, now has tens of millions of fighting age men that can and have been able to, for generations, join the United States military, any branch they want, and are immediate citizens by doing so. They walk around. I was in the service. They walk around with their military ID, which is green, and they say, this is my green card, mother with arrogance. I wonder what they'll be able to be ordered to do to the American population. All these country boys and all that sit around comforting themselves, saying, well, I got my rifle, and if anything pops off, they will kill you dead. They will drive up in the uh, armored personnel carriers and et cetera. Hell, they'll just come up as infantry. Won't matter how many of them you kill. They got a limitless number of them. And they'll get you, and then they'll get at your wives and daughters. That's what the anti-white regime is doing in the U.S. So many people, I've said, do you remember I said years and years ago online, nobody was saying it. And I said, everybody's always talking about the votes. It's not the votes. It's the soldiers they are made into. And now we can see the police officers, the SWAT that they're made into. I got to see them first, firsthand holding that military ID up saying, this is my green card, gringo, which is an anti-white slur. Remember, I pointed that out? And then all these people in the white sympathetic sphere, they came and said, no, that's not a slur. You, you imbeciles. Go ahead, keep losing. How do you feel now with the reality? How do you feel now with the reality? Everybody's saying, you know, I'm saying they all got to go back. Everybody's saying, what are they going to do with them? What are they going to do with these tens of millions of fighting age men? You know, in the uh, armies in Europe, you have a similar situation. What are they going to do with these tens of millions of non-white males with fighting at fighting age? I, gee, I wonder. Well, of course, they can be used to fight places like uh, Russia, a white country. They can be used to fight the enemies of Israel, certainly, but they can also be used against the white population in the United States, Canada, UK, on and on. Different ways that they go about getting into the military. I can't, years, years and years ago, because I remember I was like, can they get into the military anywhere else? And so I looked. And then I want to say, it was Italy, I might be wrong, where you had to get like a waiver, then you could be in the military, which was nothing to get the waiver. It might not have been Italy, but you can look into it for yourself. Bottom line is here in the United States, the superpower of the world, uh, they now have a seemingly limitless supply of soldiers that they're gonna give the best tech to. Happy New Year says, open borders for Israel. Great to see you over there on Odyssey. I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy to see that Odyssey's working. I saw the stream going out, but I didn't know if anybody could talk in the live stream or financially gift over there. So thank you, my dear friend. I'm keeping my eye, trying to keep my eye on the chats. Remember, tag me as no white guilt. And David on Rumble says, it's okay to be white. No, my friend, it is dazzling. Dazzling, dazzling, dazzling to be white. And let me suggest this to you. When you feel the urge to say it's okay to be white, try instead no white guilt and see what, your audience says in response. See if it doesn't shatter them instantly. 
come back and tell us how it works for you. Ha. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, is that through slur something? Czar says smoke. So smoke better weed. I guess if you if there if the weed is good, there won't be a nasty smell. I, apparently, I must be around nothing but uh, garbage weed, garbage ganja, garbage ganja. Nothing. You have, uh, you know, in Maryland now, you can recreationally everywhere. It's, it's, it's now like, it's now just like to get fumigated with the foulest stench. So they got to get better weed, apparently. Would you come to Saxony? Says I'm glad that I could spend the New Year's Eve with all of these amazing champions of white well-being. Thank you so much. I feel the same way about you, good brother. Strange West. Well, welcome to you. Thank you for being here. Hey, folks, if you're new, your life is about to change. This is the place where all things, all victories come true. We are the reason why you have seen the conversation change. There's been, there's been no window that's been moved, this nebulous argument. I'll get into it in a minute, but the, the concepts, the dialectics are in the work I've been doing for decades. They are, in the, they, are, they are there to be looked at from the past, way in the past, when I was pushing them. And then seven years ago, making the argument to the greater, none of these things being talked about, and champions here coming in, people better than me, smarter than me, more talented than me, better looking than me, coming in and promulgating. Wonderful people. And as a consequence, you have seen the language about our victimization change, the concepts. It has happened exactly as I said it would. That should be all the evidence you need that we are right here, that we are right. So welcome. And if you haven't already, please let everybody know that we are going free. The gathering is continuing. Normally we would end in about 19 and a half minutes, but we are going to proceed. Those of you who have to drop off, okay. But let folks know that we are still going free, going strong, and, uh, who knows? We might go past midnight. Who knows? But let folks know so they can come in here and they can have the opportunity to either make the right decision or the wrong decision for themselves, for their families, for their children, uh, and uh, for the uh, life or death of our people. That is the reality of it. So God bless you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, right now we're looking at some of the policies that the anti-whites are going to bring into. In fact, maybe I should go ahead and, and also tweet about the millions becoming soldiers in the near future. And then what will happen? We could do like a little test. I'll tweet it. And then uh, Franklin can probably name about a half dozen or more guys on Twitter and Gab and elsewhere that will immediately copy me and get 20 times, 50 times the number of likes because they're also selling to people, dumb people, things that hurt them, which I just refuse to do. And then they'll take credit. You know it's the case. Okay. Illinois, a new law going into effect will allow citizens to become police officers and sheriffs. This would include individuals who are in the U.S. under green card status, as well as individuals on the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals DACA list going back. Get the f*** out. But they're dreamers. But I care about the white dreamers. I care about the white dreams. I care about white children. They can go dream in the, the, all of these DACAs can go dream in their countries where their parents came from. And they can apply to come back and then we'll review. 
but you don't get to be here because you were just dropped here. An antiquated policy that honestly, when we recapture our destiny uh, on, on different levels, we need to review that was this ever legitimate and how far back do we have to go that it, if it was legitimate initially, that it's no longer legitimate. And then people can reapply for citizenship and uh, you know, maybe in like the oldest of cases, they just lose their right to vote and uh, their status changes from citizen to non-citizen, guest, I don't know. But you don't get to come and steal from me because the anti-whites have tied me up in the basement of my house and I'm not able to break free yet. And they're just letting uh, fo folks uh, pour in through the open doors. That doesn't make it legitimate. Uh, quote to the to the left, citizenship is meaningless. To, so to anti-whites, Republican presidential candidate and uh, Florida Governor DeSantis said in July during criticism of Illinois new law, no illegal alien should have authority over an American citizen. It is sad commentary on the state of America that this is even a debate. Let me ask y'all, how many times have you heard over the course of your life that it's a sad reality that this is even a debate? And then things get a little worse. And then the new worse, the new normal is it's a sad reality that this is even a debate. Don't you just want to kick out the teeth of everybody who wants to continue down this conservative mindset, mantra, vehicle, ideology? Haven't you had enough? 2023, we have demonstrated we have the way. We have the way that works, that changes things. This is the year of vindication. We are vindicated. It's done. It's over. The debate is over. I'm getting ahead of myself. It's a sad... I can remember all the way back when I was a child seeing... What was that group called? It'll come back to me. One of their spokesmen saying on TV... It's a sad reality that we've gotten to the point where, oh boy, that was much better than today. Landlords in Illinois will be required under the state law to rent or sell property to non-citizens. Okay, so people who already showed uh, no interest or value in our property by illegally entering our property, you're going to force them to live in your specifically owned property. Wonder how they're going to value it. Wonder how they're going to treat it. They have no consideration, no value, no respect for our laws and our property and our rights. That's why when they cross the border, they just rob you. They cut your trees down out of your yard. That's what they think about your laws. How are they going to treat your rental unit? What will end up happening is white people will get out of renting properties and the government will give non-white people money to become landlords and to just buy those properties. To, to not be a landlord, but to actually live there themselves. Whose money will they give them? What is money? It's our labor. It's our work. It's our time. It's our industry. It's our future. They'll give them our future. Who else describes it to you that way? You can go to these libertarian channels like I have for many years uh, checking in here and there, and you can hear them talk for three hours and give you nothing but the most convoluted garbage about economy that has nothing to do. They might say, oh, it has, it, we're putting the individual first. They're putting a fictitious, like a corporation first. That's what they put first. A fictitious individual, a legal fictitious individual. They'll also be able to get a license. And of course, they'll be able to vote. Uh, it, they've been able to vote. I mean, how many times do we see that? Beginning in January 1, Illinois will shut off state funding for public and school libraries that ban books for political reasons. Now, 
political reasons. What books are those going to be? All anti-whiteism, 100%. So look at your world is going to change radically in 2024. You see, every year it's faster. Just like I said at the beginning in 2020, when we were here together, beginning the decade, I said, this is going to be the roaring 20s. Does anybody remember that? I said, the anti-whites are going to are going to be getting every year it's going to be no noticeable power increase destruction of western civilization increase like you, we've never seen before that's what's happening and i said we have to parallel that in a growth of our strength and that a diminution in their strength won't be the evidence that we are growing in our strength so you're not going to see them getting weaker as a consequence of us growing stronger over this decade i predicted all this it's happening. And if we keep pushing, if we keep succeeding, then we'll have the outcome that Western kind needs for us to survive. By the way, I just wanted to point, it just came back to me. Franklin swashing through uh, Donald Trump Jr. with white erasure. That was another one. Remember I told you, I just, I kept them, I wasn't telling you all. That was another one that Mark Collett told me personally in private conversation that it was cringe and no one would ever say it. The only one, the only one that uh, he felt was um, could possibly work way back was he said you you could you could potentially get people to use anti-white, but none of the others. He says all he said all the other stuff that you come up with is cringe. Can you believe he said that to me? He's not the only one though. All the other stuff you've come up with is cringe. No one will ever accept. And then specific things he pointed out to me like uh, anti-whiteism, white erasure. Specifically said about those specifically. That's cringe. No one will ever say it. No apology. Donald Trump Jr. saying anti-whiteism, white erasure. Donald Trump Sr. ends up saying it. There'll still be no apology. We'll talk about why. So they're going to be defunding everything that won't brainwash the population with anti-whiteism. And this includes books that promote uh, LGBTQ plus ideology, making it the first state to enact such a law, according to new state governor. Parents and lawmakers alike have expressed concern that some of the books in question contain se sexually explicit content that should not be promoted to children. We just had a superintendent in Fairfax County, Virginia, right here outside of Washington, D.C., swearing in on a book of or a stack of books that have pornographic depictions in them. So sex for elementary, for little kids in these books that they uh, distribute to elementary schools. That's what he wanted to get swear, swore in on. Not the Bible, but those books. I mean, let me go ahead and make a prediction. Before potentially before potentially before 2030, we will see people being sworn in on other human beings that are either dressed to or just known to represent the antithesis to Western civilization. So anti-whiteism. It'll be something like, it could be some like 13 year old imaginary male or female uh, and maybe wearing 
something that would really be an affront to the norms and standards of Western kind. And it and then a hand will be placed on his head or his shoulder for the swear in ceremony, or he'll be lying down or she'll be lying down hand placed on his heart or her heart or abdomen or genitals. Colorado, a new law will go into effect beginning on January, banning certain single use plastics following in the footsteps of other blue anti-white states that have enacted similar legislation. These include plastic bags, such as those found at the grocery store, as well as styrofoam cups, which are typically less expensive than paper or biodegradable alternatives. Washington state will add further restrictions to existing gun laws on January 1, requiring potential buyers to wait 10 days before purchasing any class of firearm. Washington will also join California in banning employers from asking employees about cannabis use. So it's all about getting everybody on drugs. And taking away their right to self-defense and exposing them to more anti-whiteism. So, and this is just the stuff that a single uh, conservative content creator picked up probably in no time because writers have speedy deadlines. Who knows how much more is out there on the books that they'll be bringing forward, especially uh, during all of the uproar that's going to take place in 2024. You know they'll be passing shit like there's no tomorrow. I mean, Rapunzel knows if she's around. That's her specialty. They'll be passing stuff like there's no tomorrow as there's a massive uproar. And then you'll have these conspiracy imbeciles, these poor souls, these poor souls, that's how I should call them, that will be saying, oh, well, all of that other stuff was just to uh, get us to not notice. It was just distraction for this one thing over here. Whatever. Uh, is that is that Creed? Is that what that says? Uh, says, Happy New Year to you and your family, brother. Thank you for all you do. Well, God bless you. Thank you. I'm not, if I'm, especially if I'm, apologize if I got the name wrong there but I can't quite figure it out. But happy new year to you. God bless you. And let's take on 24. And 24, it's war. Metaphorical. Bulldog Boris is with us. Great to see you, brother. Remember, tag me as no white guilt. If you have uh, any questions or comments, any challenges, the great slot says, I'll be up front. I thought they were cringe, but, ne but necessity pushed through that and reached me when I was an Aunt Nat. So there you have it. The great slots, when he first heard them, probably because others around you were saying, hey, if you're not saying uh, Stormtrooper and uh, Zog, if you're not saying that, then you're cringe. And so then I come along and I'm saying this and uh, for years and years, and maybe that's a great way to segue into the findings the test is over. 2023 has been the year of vindication for me and this community. And Swanee River here says, is the No I Guilt Twitter page the one with a profile pic of Jason holding? Yes, that's me. Unless somebody has copied it and put it up someplace else. It's no why guilt NWG at no why guilt NWG. That's the real one. And uh, Spud says, do you see them coming after homeschooling or have you heard anything in that regard yet? I haven't heard anything specific in the United States, but they will absolutely come after homeschooling. Uh, if a, it won't even need to be a number that is 
large enough to resist. It, it will just be white people being happy, being healthy, being in harmony. And as anti-whites see that, they'll want to attack it. And so without question, it will end up being like in, was it Germany recently that had a family that fled because they, for religious purposes, they tried to use the, that uh, our, our religion and so we can't send the kids to school as their excuse. And we see how well that works when religion has been defeated by anti-whiteism. It's, it's like fewer and fewer of those arguments are successful, right? So it's only a matter of time before it never works. Uh, but the family left, as I understand, and then they were snatched in whatever country they were in and shipped right back to be punished by the German government. So the answer, though, and this is something that I considered when I was a very young man, was that homeschooling, for all its benefits, is no defense. And Rapunzel will tell you that. She was homeschooled. It's no defense. If you are not inoculating the kids against anti-whiteism, it doesn't matter where they're at home or private school, expensive private school, public school, doesn't matter. They're going to become anti-white. You have to inoculate them against, and you do that by teaching them the meme curatives out of Go Free. You do that by teaching them about meme pathogens. They then go out into the world, and when they see anti-whiteism, they come back to you and they look at you like you're a god because you have accurately predicted the world. If instead you just tell them about the Maypole and uh, you don't inoculate them with the go free method, they'll go out in the world and be subjected to, in various ways, by friends that are not homeschooled, billboards, TV commercials when they can see TV. I mean, I know homeschool people that allow their children to watch TV. Doesn't that defeat the purpose? Uh, on and on. They'll be exposed, and those same pressures that defeated white people who grew up in environments that were all white and had all of that history as something real handed to them from, you know, from mother's knee to child, father's knee to child, they fell. So too will fall the children of the homeschooled if they're not inoculated. So if you can see the blessing there, the blessing is this. The anti-whites are going to come after homeschooling at some point. If you are inoculating your children against anti-whiteism, they'll still be uh, secured from the mean pathogens, the white noir as a consequence. They won't come home hating you. They, in fact, every time the teachers say these things, as we hear from people who are in the white, our white positive community, they come back, they have their kids, their kids come back to them and say, I, I spotted an MP. This over here is anti-white. We have kids watching a movie with their parents and saying, oh, there's an MP. I mean, uh, yeah, a, an MP or an anti-whiteism. That's anti-white. And the parent didn't even catch it. Why? Because the parent is infected with mean pathogens. Far more, far more of his or her life. But if you're teaching it to them when they're young, they're going to be like, bang, 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 bang. They'll see it. That happens. And that's a glorious thing. So as far as the education goes, uh, if and I should say when they come after homeschooling, the, the, you'll have to double up the, you'll still have to teach them because they'll be going to a public school or a private school and receiving the anti-white education. So you'll have to do the education that they are going to cover prior to them getting to that grade, prior to them getting to that point. When it comes to safety, you'll have to find school districts that are safer and safer for white people. 
And there are other possibilities for the future that we have to see how things roll out before we can take advantage of opportunities and circumvent challenges. So it's a sad reality. It is already a reality for a great many of our brothers and sisters. You don't have to surrender to an anti-white future because the government forces your children into one of their institutions. You don't have to do that. And there are plenty of white people, uh, you know, right here in America that don't have the time or really don't feel they could homeschool. And they don't. And they send their children to public school. They send them to private school. And then uh, they es essentially do something akin to what I'm talking about here. But just remember, if you're not inoculating them, you've done nothing. You've simply done nothing. And I get a lot of pushback from I, people in the European uh, origin, uh, religion origin uh, communities. They like to, they'd say, oh no, uh, I'm teaching, you know, my child about, and then they'll name several gods and uh, they'll name uh, several festivals and they think that's going to make it all better. And I, I've tried to explain, I'm not going to do it anymore, um, but I've tried to explain that did, it, did that work, did not doing it artificially, did not like pulling it up, having some modern author write about it and doing it artificially compared to back in the day when those festivals were actually being held by these people and the children were participating and great grandpa pappy participated great grandma uh participated in the maypole and now she and now great granddaughter is did it stop in a hundred percent white country did that stop anti-whiteism no so you need the go free method anti anti-whiteism is the name of their psychological warfare I want us, I want our children to learn about all these different things. Dance around the maypole and the beautiful. I want that. But that ain't gonna that ain't gonna keep them white proud. I've I'm old enough to have seen uh white kids grow up in those environments and hate their parents for it. So living experience, but also reason and logic. I just made an argument that's unimpeachable. If it didn't help when it was real, when it was when it was organic, if it didn't help when it came from the past and there wasn't a break in the chain, it's not going to work now when some modern author uh, puts it in a book for you to read or to give a little lecture online. Let's just be real. Art Acrobat says, city name and race demographics to find out the racial makeup of the location. So Google search engine the city to find out the racial makeup. And you know, you might be in one of those co uh, countries in the West where they don't allow you to do that anymore. And uh, they'll be taking that away as well in the coming years where you're still able. They'll consider it, they'll classify it as the highest form of evil. And you already know what that concept is and we don't say it here. We don't use it uh, because humans are humans. Rory Herbert is with us. Hello, brother. Spud says, "Yeah, I agree. Your child can be, uh, your child can be inoculated, but that only helps so far when the rest of their peers are fully anti-white." Oh, yes, yeah, without question. Yeah. So, how do you, uh, uh, how do you handle it? Okay, that was James from earlier. Thank you for. Uh, correcting me, brother. I don't know if that is that what it says on as your handle, James uh, from England. So how do you handle it? Because their peers are going to be anti-white, even when you're homeschooling. There are homeschooling networks uh, where they're everything they're teaching from these like institutionalized networks for homeschooling is also has anti-whiteism in it. And then their your their kids go out and play. And how do I know this? Because these people tell me. Their kids go out and play with other homeschool kids. They take field trips. And those kids are 
uh, less concerned with white well-being and are anti-white, how do you protect your kids from them? There is a community on planet Earth that has mastered this. You need to tell your children from as early as they can understand in, in words that they can get, in concepts that they can get, and then you update as they get older. That there are good people like us, this family, like you're me and if you're the mother like Spud and so, so me and your father and your brothers and sisters who care about the well-being of white people. And there are people out there who absolutely want to hurt white people. They want to blame white people for everything. Those people are called anti-white. They're, they're driven by deep jealousy and envy of the things that white people have done and accomplished. And so they've made up a ton of lies. And when you go out into the world, you're exposed to this anti-white, anti-us ideology. And so that means that even your friends are exposed to it. And they'll repeat these things. And when they do, because they will, because they're exposed to it, when they do, if they're otherwise a good person, maybe you don't have many friend options, especially homeschool networks, the best thing is to agree to disagree with them so that you can continue your friendship. But you know why they hold those positions. And we hope that at some point in the future that they will take a healthier course in their life. Because we want them and us and those like us to be safe and free of the persecution, of the discrimination, of the victimization. Now, others in the white sympathetic sphere have argued that you can't say such things to white kids. They just can't understand it. They can. And if you don't say it, the anti-whites will say to your children what they want them to hear. So if white children can be old enough to hear that their essence is evil and they're not traumatized to death, like they don't cease to exist, they don't uh, board themselves up in their closet and never leave, if they're able to still exist, even uh, victimized hugely, but they're able to still exist, then they can handle the truth of the world. You just have to give it to them at their level. I hope that helps for everybody. I know how I know how challenging it is, but you cannot hide this from them. You cannot. You have to tell them that the world is anti-white, but it's also full of white positive people. There are good white positive people out there and they're all throughout society and there are more and more good white positive people every day because if you don't give them hope, if you don't give them, they, they could shut right down. The reality is that there are a lot of good white positive people and there are more white positive people all the time. We are doing that. I mean, tell you could tell your children, you know, if you know, me and your father are heroes because we are spreading the ideas carefully, intelligently that will put an end to our victimization. And then you live your life otherwise like normal. You plant your gardens, you et cetera. It's just that when the time comes up for the talks and when an incident brings up a conversation where you got to say something about it, you address it for the reality that it is. It's not, you, you, the, your kids and you are not in a... Uh, uh, an endless, uh, you know, Flanders field combat zone. So there's a community who has been able to do this successfully for thousands of years. So if they can do it, we can do it.
Thank you very much, Spud. It's a great question. I mean, there are a lot of uh, homeschoolers and they got their kids and they go to play. And, you know, I've heard the stories where they, they come back and they're like, oh, you wouldn't believe what was said to little Johnny. And there was an argument. What do I do? I mean, it, a, the vision of a, of a little white child in a group of peers, little white children, somebody says something anti-white, for that child to be the adult in the room and say, that's anti-white, and we're going to have to agree to disagree because I, I don't participate in anti-whiteism. You know, the other kids will say, what's that? And if you have the conversation with their parents, their parents are like, what's going on with little... Timmy or Johnny or Betty or whatever, you tell them, hey, in my household, we object to anti-whiteism the same way that we object to any discrimination or persecution of any group based on their birth. And, you know, if you actually have a problem with us objecting across the board with the victimization of people on the basis of immutable characteristics, then we will have to end this relationship. I'd rather not have that. I'd rather you be okay with objecting to that victimization across the board. But if it has to come to that, then it has to come to that. You can, you can think about what kind of challenges do you want to have? Uh, and... Do you want to have the challenge of having to describe to your child what the world really is like? Or do you want to have the challenge of trying to hide your child under the floorboards uh, so that the anti-white rapists won't find him or her? I mean, you're going to have to have you're going to have to make a choice here. That's a, that's an a reality. It's an unfortunate reality. Bulldog Boris says, uh, when majority of whites discover uh, that there's a moral way to fight anti-whiteism, I think it's game over for the anti-whites. So spreading our lexicon with the message is the key. What a beautiful testimonial. God bless you. And brother, I agree 100%. 100%. Once white people, Bulldog Boris always has like brilliant comments in the threads, if you ever notice. The guy is obviously uh, uh, clearly where he is supposed to be with his intelligence. Once white people see that there is a moral way to say, uh-uh, no more, they'll all do it. They'll all put their foot down. They'll all say enough is enough. You know when I would be okay with conservatives saying no more men playing female sports or participating in female events, academic events and challenges and et cetera, is when they're saying that's anti-white, we're not going to have it. That's when I would endorse it. That's when I would say, yes, it's anti-white to put males in female sports and female academic competitions, et cetera. So no, it's not allowed. But as long as they're just talking about their vajayjays and how it should be just vajayjay dominated and girls are special, then I don't give a shit because that's a poison to our people. The great four no says we have the five key concepts and I'm wondering if you still think those five are the best starting point. Great question. And perhaps it uh, is in need of another look. Absolutely. I know that I think that the great biospirit of the West uh, included one or two more in that number. And so maybe we will uh, take another look and reevaluate. Uh, Widgie Kind of Saxony is asking, may I ask a quick question about today? You sure can. And for Noel, if you have any suggestions or thoughts on it, tag me, brother. I want to read it. I want to get your thoughts.
uh, Promethean Kitchen writes, that's the reason why when I have kids, I'm going to homeschool them with the School of the West. Awesome, brother. Yes. The great Dean Danger and his team of champions. At School of the West, yes. Avail yourself of those aids at schoolofthewest.world and homeschool if and when you can. You can even use those, uh, uh, all of that they provide there, all those tools that they provide at School of the West with children that are public school, children that are in these private schools. Check it out. Slot says, our people try to bargain our biospiritual projections, the things we love, as being human and multiracial to prevent their destruction. That's exactly right. A puissant observation by the great slots, ladies and gentlemen. Brilliant. Dazzling, my friend. Exactly. They try, they try to universalize what we project onto the world to get anti-whites to stop attacking those things. And isn't that, again, evidence that it's all about being anti-white? I mean, white people, they know. They know that the anti-whites are destroying what we create. They're destroying us. They're destroying what we create. So they make this inane effort to say, oh, that's not mine. That's not mine. That's not ours. That's everybody's. So please stop attacking it. Precisely. Widjikine says, and if fireworks are a Western thing, uh oh, did I miss some of that? Doesn't look like it. May I ask a question? If fireworks are a Western thing, what about the increasing violence and the negative effects on animals and pets? If fireworks are a Western thing, are you talking about the negative effects of fireworks on pets? Or are you talking about the mistreatment of animals? Yeah, it is. It's it, it is of us. It is of Western kind to treat all things, uh, all, all animals, humanely. And so, yeah, it is anti-white to be uh, abusive, inhumane of animals, nature, pets, hundred percent. Raskarai says his dad's anti-white girlfriend actually told him that no white guilt hurts my feelings. And she slandered Gofrey. Yes, I remember that. Triple Five is with us. Yep. And these, these families, you know, families are increasingly very different from optimal. And we run into, as a consequence, all of these other challenges that are not part and parcel of optimal nuclear family. And uh, we have to navigate them to the best of our ability. And the best that you can do, the way that you can win, is to use the go-free method because with it, you take and hold the moral high ground. And you force with these concepts without you even knowing how it works. But you might hear the, the people who are here probably know exactly how they work. You force your audience, whoever it is uh, opposite you, to take the immoral position and to argue for that. For Noel says this sort of uh, Trivial. This is sort of trivial, but I'm wondering if you have adopted anti-whiteism as the spelling, or do I prefer anti-whiteism without so e or with the e or without the e? If you look back through my uh, the different editions and all the way back through it being like a little booklet 
all the way down to being like a pamphlet. I have gone back and forth. Initially, I used the E. And over the years, I've also run these little tests, uh, especially when I've had to be on public transit. And I've just asked random strangers uh, with the E or without the E, I'll just give them and I'll say, what does this say? If you had to read this word, what does it say? And what do you think it means? And with the E, there, I can't remember a time that they mispronounced it. Without the E, they occasionally mispronounce it. Um, and this is aside from what are the specific rules uh, in, 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 in English. So this is just how it is engaged with by the public. And with the E, it's rarely, it was rarely interpreted to be something other than something against white people. Without the E, a little bit more often, it was interpreted as something that was not, a little bit more often something that was, had nothing to do with white people. So I don't know. I go back and forth. I think on the third edition, which one of the things that we're going to be doing in 24 is that on our Sundays, we're going to go back to having a segment toward the end where we go over something from Go Free. And it's going to specifically be new segments or reevaluated segments from the Lexicon Dialectics. We're going to talk about it. I'll give feedback. I'll educate you on it if you don't already know about it. And I think in that third edition, I'm going to, at this moment, I think I'm sticking with the E in anti-whiteism. But either way, and we can see is we can see whether or not, well, you can value this at whatever you think, and I'm not, I don't mean you for all, but generally at whatever you think it's worth. But when I believed that I created anti-white and anti-whiteism, they weren't in the dictionary, as you all know, at my home, my parents' home, I still have it. They weren't in the dictionaries at the public library. We later found out by way of Final Blossom first, and then others showed up with information as well, that it had been pulled out of dictionaries, most dictionaries, almost all dictionaries, like 50 years earlier or whatever it was. Um, but when I believed I created it, I played with anti-white with a hyphen and anti-whiteism. I played with a capital W. I played with these things that, that I think a lot of people are still playing with today. I concluded that anti-white as one word with a lowercase w, no hyphen, was a concept that I, and therefore we, could define. It wasn't anti a concept. Does that make sense? Because if it's anti a concept, then who controls the next concept? So there's the weakness. If it's anti-white, no capital W, no hyphen, then I'm introducing a concept, I get to decide, we get to decide what it means. The same thing was true for anti-whiteism. It was no hyphen, no anti-whiteism. What in the fuck is that? So no way was I going to do that. I don't produce whiteism. I definitely don't produce um, whiteness. And more importantly, if there was anti-whiteism, whether it's a capital W or lowercase w, what you're then saying, and you're giving to your opponent, you're giving to your victimizer, the existence of a concept of abuse of non-white people, of the truth of the anti-white narrative, because you're saying there's such a thing called whiteism and that you only object to anti-whiteism. 
Does this make sense? Do you see how that's weaker? If you say to your victimizer that I object to anti-concept called whiteism, then your victimizer gets to say, aha, whiteism is what you want. Whiteism is racism. Whiteism, you see what I'm saying? So all the way back then, a young man, and I figured this out, nobody was using anti-white, nobody was using anti-whiteism, 94? No, no. All these content creators, you can go look at the George Lincoln Rockwells. You can go look at, uh, gosh, I can't remember that guy's name again. It'll come back to me. The guy from war. Uh, you can go down the line and look for them using anti-white. So 94, and, and, and by the way, what's important is not that they they might may have used anti-white here or they may have used it there. That's not what's important. What's important is, is the concept anti-white understood to be, as we understand it here, part of this holistic psychological defense for our people. That's what's important. That's what's relevant. If it's just a if it's just a word that got uh, spat out here or there, and and not pushed and not uh, started to be used across the uh, the mainstream like it is like we've done over the past seven years, then it's that's not the same thing. That's not starting the use of the concept anti-white. The con uh, anti-white is being used the way that we push it. Not at the end of some protracted, uh, whatever it was, what, what did they call it? The mantra. You know, as much as I like that guy, you know, at the very end of that thing, anti-white with a hyphen, at the very end of that thing, and after being anti-Jewish in it, white negative in it, and you can't, I've been teaching, you can't get to a victory you can't get to white people using a morality, a new morality, a new moral principle, guiding principle, if it's sullied with white negativity. No white person is going to pick up, oh, well, here's this new moral principle that we use, need to have as a guiding principle. If as part of it, you are arguing that all Jews are bad. And just white people are not going to do it. And you've seen it. I accept reality for what it is. And then I navigate to putting an end to white children getting butchered and gang raped and stabbed and beaten and intimidated and manipulated and lied to and made to hate themselves and everything. I do whatever I can to get to that destiny. If you don't like it, fuck you. If that doesn't match with your particular LARP, fuck you. Just go away. I would rather endeavored to put an end, and so would these good people, to put an end to all that victimization. Anyhow. So you see now, I haven't shared, I don't think I've shared that often, but I'm sharing it again here at the end of 2023, as we go into 2024 to have a colossal year, just two hours left until we ring in the new year here on the East Coast, outside of Mordor on the Potomac in the once great state of Virginia. It is glorious to be here and be with you all. And we're going to talk right now because this is a beautiful segue. I'm going to keep an eye on what you all are saying because you all are brilliant. I want to talk more to you all. We're going to talk about the test is done. Last word on, on what I was saying, though, was that I wasn't going to give my victimizer the tool of whiteism to undermine me. So I praise the good Lord for those of you like JK160. Doesn't even, he's a great example of somebody that is not actively on the team, uh, like the outreach team, the OT, but he's out there swashing. There are, there are a lot of folks out there in this community like that. 
And I praise God for people like him and others who got into the chat of Mark Dice and using anti-whiteism as a as a concept and and then king dice king dice ends up putting it out there in the world we have to continue to push it just remember that if you're adding the hyphen you might be struggling with it now but you are empowering our victimizer by doing so that's the bottom line the other aspect of it was and you could you can weigh this at whatever you think it is. If and if I left it as a whole word, then it was a single concept that I and we could define. And who has the power when we do that? Even if they have all the wealth and they have, et cetera, who has the power? We do. Many years later, just a couple of years ago, the smartest people in the Jewish community on planet Earth got together and they decided to remove the hyphen from anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic. Long after I removed or didn't ever put it in, when I was contemplating how best, there were, and some of my first leaflets where I was totally still, I didn't know for sure, I had the hyphen a couple times, uh, I can recall, but the vast majority, I got rid of it for the reasons I gave. I did it in a couple of the first leaflets because I got kind of laughed at and criticized by nobody was really my age and as a peer as in my age, but so it was older guys and they're like, ha, 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 you know, and I was like, okay, well, I'll write it so you can get it. But then I was like, screw them, they're just wrong. And they are. And so now I have two years ago. All of the 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 one a very powerful Jewish organization, a world Jewish organization, with uh, no dummies in the Jewish community, concluding, "Oh no, you got to get rid of that hyphen." So that's kind of an endorsement of what I did, isn't it? I mean, you can weigh that at whatever you think it's worth. But you don't want to give anti-whites, whiteism as a thing. Let me see what y'all say to that. And we will keep rolling here. Oh, uh, would you kind of Saxony and say he's wondering if fireworks originated in or with Western kind? Well, that's a great question. And uh, I'm not sure where the first fireworks showed up. I know that by the time I was in school, they were happily telling us that it wasn't Italy, but China were the first in all of these things. Don't know. We're growing up in an anti-white world. That's what I can tell you. And today, white children are being taught uh, many things that are contrary to what you were taught about history, crediting non-whites with this and that, discoveries and inventions and everywhere you look. And we know that in 10 more years, the white children will be taught that more and more was done by non-white people. I predicted uh, when I was in some of these Southern heritage preservation groups, when I was a very young man, eventually they would say that the black race freed themselves from slavery, that they made an army in the United States and they marched down and uh, they were uh, a, a major factor in freeing black people from slavery in the South. And uh, they all laughed at me. They said, no, it won't happen. And of course, now they teach that today. And the story gets bigger and bigger of the number of battles and how important those battles were that the, the black regiments were engaged in uh, and decisive for freeing their brother. And, and I tell you, it's every, all of what you think is reality is off the table as things become increasingly anti-white. So don't think for a minute, well, there's no way they can say all of those troops 
I told uh, union reenactors that United States reenactors. I said, you know, y'all are celebrating this, but in the future, then I could be celebrating you at all. Because the white man can't be seen as a good guy. You're going to be like ancillary to the black effort. Because this is fiction. The world you're taught is fiction. It, when we recapture our destiny, uh, with you kind of Saxony, we'll be able to make an honest investigation about where that came from, who made fireworks first and all of that. And, and who made improvements and who, etc. I'm not, I wouldn't be, I'm not going to be hurt or, or, or bothered really one way or the other. I hope that happens. I hope, I hope we recapture enough of our destiny that we get, um, I guess, bored enough to go to make a serious uh, research effort into such a thing that there are people, I guess, who decide to do it. I hope we get there, but I uh, just can't say, unfortunately. It's a great question, though. I wonder. Based White is here. Based White says, I'm just stopping by for a moment, but I will be listening to the full replay during the work week like I always do. Well, God bless you, Based White. Thank you for being one of the heroes in the darkening days of the West. Cool Papa J Magic says, did you happen to see that a big account on Twitter used the term biospirit the other day. Really? Who? Oh, I think I did. Yes, I think I did. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then we're going to talk about that in a moment, actually. We'll talk. We're going to talk about it. Uh, Bishop says, anti-whiteism sounds like it's been around forever when you write it like that, uh, without the E. I rarely see people, for example, capitalizing anti-Semitism. Your thoughts? Uh, don't capitalize anti-whiteism unless it's at the start of a sentence. Or it's a meme and you, and you mean for whatever reason, like aesthetically it works. Uh, do capitalize anti-white narrative. Oh, you mean, you're asking me without the hyphen. Yes. It is what I'm recommending to everybody the world over but definitely to those who are white positive going free is that you don't use the hyphen for the reasons I articulated. I can't order people to do anything. I'm trying to help people. I make reason and logic based cases. I use examples uh, that are demonstrable, the real world, and that's all I can do. I can't order folks to do anything. I will make my case. Like, and that's another great segue to I've made my case for seven years. And I will tell you all where I went wrong and how we can in and good faith to ourselves and honesty to ourselves say that uh the the test or the 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 challenge, the test is over when it comes to making these cases to the explicit white sympathetic sphere. What is your take on RFK? Do you believe he would help change America for the greater good? Do you believe he has a good chance of winning the election? No. Uh, I guess to all of that, what he is doing is... You see this in challengers all the time. Look at uh, Ramaswamy. Challengers who have no chance. They always take up a popular notions, whether they are real or they know much about them or false. 
they always adopt them. And it's sort of a desperation move. It's sort of a hallmark of a candidate who knows, and you can, you can observe this like in your workplace as well. Somebody who is vying for a contract or somebody who is competing with somebody in the office for the promotion. If they're losing, if they have less chance of winning, they will adopt a popular notion, whether they actually, or notions, whether they actually believe in it or not. And in the hope that it will accrue to their benefit. I mean, it's logical that a human being would do that. Does that mean that, like, I don't know enough about him to say that he would be, uh, that he would govern well. What I do know is that the system that he would be plugged into is radically anti-white. So he would be able to get at most as much done as Donald Trump did in the first four years. And as much as Donald Trump will be able to get done in the next four, if he does not go the dictator route, which is it even possible for him to go the dictator route? Probably 0% chance. Why is that? Because what is the human material of the system? What animates it? What are the ideas in its head? I see Lavish is here. Great to see you. Please let everybody know we're counting down 2023 to 2024. And this, this is going to be the year for war. Metaphorical, that is. <laughs> But, but we're seriously going to step it up a notch. 2023 has been glorious. Yeah, and uh, Cool Papa, great for that, uh, great for that, that uh, channel. Good. Um, they, they, and, that, and that's what I'm going to speak to. They can, I have no control over them. We have no control over them. They can listen to the arguments we make. Listen to the arguments I make. As I say, the reason and logic, they can look at the evidence and they can decide whether is that honestly for the, I think you can clearly see that I'm honestly serving the well-being of white people. There's, if I wanted to do uh, a grift, I would instead appeal to what the masses already think, wouldn't I? That's the largest customer base, right? So instead, I would say there are racial enemies. And uh, if I wanted to be a grifter, I would say all the Jews and all the blacks, they have to all go. I would. And when you do this kind of a thing, you you explode your the size of your audience rapidly. You build the size of your audience rapidly because you are effectively uh, giving them just what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. And what they want to hear, why would, why would that ever be what would benefit us? It's like, why would the anti-whites ever create a villain that would conquer them for their narrative? Of course they wouldn't. Of course they wouldn't. I wouldn't. If I were in charge, I wouldn't create a villain that I was confident could defeat the white race. I wouldn't put the best arguments in the villain's mouth. I wouldn't give the, the villain the behavior and the dress that would best enable him to make an appeal to my people to undermine Western kind? Why would I do that? Why would the anti-whites do that? They wouldn't. So the Nazi marching and, and all of that, all of those statements that they give in their literature to play the villain, those are obviously things that cannot contend with their power. The fact that the people who preach those things get attacked by anti-whites is evidence that they are standing in front of anti-white guns, not that they're over targets. When you dress up like the villain for a group of people, you'll be treated like the villain. Imagine this. Imagine you have a big old male Rottweiler. And every day you come home, he loves you. He just wants to jump up and lick and get petted and follow you around and be the best buddies ever. But imagine he hates other dogs, like he can't stand them. 
He sees them and he starts chewing through chain link fence with his powerful Rottweiler jaws to get to them. He just wants to kill every other dog. So one day you decide to wear a dog costume home. What do you think the reaction's going to be? If you don the costume, the words, the ideas, the imagery of the villain, anti-whites are going to eat you alive. That does not mean that you're doing anything effective. It never has. Furthermore, I've argued for years and where it's pertinent now is the past seven or so streaming and making videos and talking to other content creators and email and organization leaders on the phone. Since I've been uh, on the internet, I've been making these cases. I've been using reason and logic. And the challenge when you make an argument that contradicts another person's position, the challenge, the, the onus is upon them then to say, well, I believe you're wrong for these reasons. They've never done that. They've never, I've been able to point to evidence in the real world about how my position is true, about how harmful it is to be, to play the villain, for example. They can't point to any evidence of how much it benefits the individual, which it will have to benefit the individual if it's going to benefit the collective. If it ruins the life of the individual, i.e. Ye's law, then it's going to ruin the endeavor of the collective. What is the collective composed of? Individuals. So when I was thinking about When I was thinking about the other day when we did the, when I was just elated, we all were elated and we're elated right now that 2023 is the year of total vindication. Uh, we had um, Tits Minadeo, who the, well, let me even start before that. Sorry, I'm just taking a look at what I have here. When I got into the white sympathetic sphere, when I got into the white sympathetic sphere, I was 17, 18 years of age. And... Um, I came from a sports playing background. I played sport and also, I guess, group activity, activity background. Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, baseball, basketball, football, all year sports, all year, every year, working together, working as a team, achieving objectives as a team. So when I started participating with the white sympathetic sphere. And as most of you know, some of you maybe don't. So feel free to ask if you're, uh, if, if you're uh, uncertain. Uh, Menadeo is the, the comment on the individual, but we'll get back to it. The tits McGee, tits Menadeo. So um, when I got into the white sympathetic sphere, I, joined a few groups, but worked with or helped out a bunch of uh, many more uh, because back then everything was, there was no robust internet. Um, almost nothing was online. L businesses, everything. So that was like a new thing. Get online and, you know, advance your business to record record sales. And uh, so the groups back then, if you want to participate with them, if you want to show up, you had to pay a due. And how much money did I have for that, right? So I offered my time, though, to other groups. So you want to leaflet? I'll help. You want to go? I was a, I was a member of a group that felt like they, they wanted the public to see the historical uh, flags of the Confederacy at 
battlefields, former battlefields, so that by doing so, they figured it would keep the history alive. And so I thought, I'll help. Okay. Everywhere I went, the conferences, and y'all remember, I think it was 18 or 19 years of age, the first American Renaissance I went to. And I wore my, uh, my father's suit, and it was too big for me. Um, but everybody was in suits, so you had to dress. I remember reading like the the uh, printout. It was like gentlemen wear ties and suits. You know, total like Jared Taylor, and he was like my hero because he had appeared on these trashy talk shows and stood up for white people. And I thought, man, this guy's amazing. I want to attend his conference. And the first ones weren't in Virginia; they were down in Georgia, I think. I think actually the first meeting for where American Renaissance got created, I think was in South Carolina. And then they were in maybe Georgia. And then they came up here. Anyhow, I was going into these environments with the mind of a athlete, with the mind of a team player. And all of these people who were older than me, there were no young people back then. I was the young person. And every now and again, there would be one other, but it was all white tops with what they would say. They would talk about it. Look at all the white tops. And we got this one guy here. He's got to save the world. And I'm like, are you kidding? So everywhere I went though, they talked about our effort. In fact, they called it a movement. And maybe you all, if you've been along, been around long enough, you've heard it referred to as that. But back then, I didn't see a movement. I saw a sphere. I didn't call it a movement because I did not see coordinated team-like behavior over the cross of the totality. There were a bunch of different groups and different leaders and squabbling and breaking apart. But where I was wrong... I was right about that, but where I was wrong, and it came from my being a team player and hearing these people talk always about the movement as a team, that I thought it was still like a loosely coordinated team. Like it wasn't a movement, I argued, because it, it, it didn't function like a perfect team, but it was team-like that there were that we all just like kind of wanted the same thing and we were all trying these different endeavors we were all hoping to find the key the magic key that would unlock the the chest of our destiny and that as a consequence if something was found that was working this loosely loose confederation of team like activists would come together for the thing that worked. So I thought even though there were ideas that I rejected, that I thought were ridiculous or even silly, I thought not that these things would persist, but that these people were holding these positions because, that the majority of them were holding these positions because there wasn't an alternative. There wasn't something that worked. And so what we needed was something that worked. I would go to these Amrin conference. I remember I got to meet Jared Taylor for the first time. And it was like, in fact, I had my uh, father's boots on too. And they were too big. Sue was too big. The boots were too big. And I was like this like young guy. I mean, I guess I was a, a, a man, but I was still this young guy. And I was just like, oh my God, I am in the presence of divinity. Jared was so young then, just like in his prime. C-SPAN was coming to the conferences and, and videotaping and, and airing them live and then rerun. Insane. How much has changed? And And so I erroneously thought that it was a loose 
confederation of teammates waiting for the winning playbook. Can I, mean, can I make that? That's as clear as I can make it. I began developing the go free method, started using uh, anti-white, anti-whiteism, 94, as you all know, argued for it. I was sometimes some of my peers, the older guys, they would they would say, no, no, that that's not going to work. No, no, the the elders don't use it. And so therefore, it's not important. And so therefore, that's not even a real word, Jason, I was told. Um, on and on. But it kept because I was convinced with reason and logic. And then I began to see examples of the success. I mean, beyond myself. As I applied it, it worked. Where I made errors, I got rid of what didn't work and then tried other things until I found something that worked. And I began to see like a mad scientist, just like there's like the story of Western civilization, isn't it? The white guy in his lab, which might be his basement, his garage, his, he's working for the monarch uh, and he's in the, 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 the king's laboratory or, or shop or whatever it is. Kind of the same thing. I was, I began to see like this thread that held true for what worked. And I just kept working with it. I kept using that yarn, if you will, building this, this tapestry. And then, as I say, I began seeing the successes in people who would adopt a little bit of this or a little bit of that because they would come back and they would tell me. They would say, you're not going to believe it, Jason. I can remember some of these cases like they were yesterday. I wish I could remember them all. I wish I, I, wish I had been a, a journal writer, uh, but I, I wasn't. But to be that kind of person and have it all written out. But they would come back and they would say, oh, here I used that and it worked. And they were so shocked. And then I would, I would be elated. And I would, that drove me to get more people to use these things because it worked for us. One of the earliest cases that really drove me to get people to adopt Go Free, you know, and let this go down into the books. If anybody's ever going to write a history about why I do, one of the earliest cases, and I, I think I've shared this before, was a guy whose brother was dying and they had... Uh, had been at odds for decades and uh, it was over racial issues. The brother was not hardcore anti-white, but he was, he was definitely anti-white signaling. Uh, and the, the brother that I knew older, also not terribly healthy either. He wanted to reconcile with his brother. He didn't know what to do. So he asked after I was given the permission to speak at this little meeting in a little tiny library, which probably won't be permitted anymore in some of these states, taking the money away if you're not anti-white enough. And uh, I was given, I can't even remember, maybe like 15 minutes to talk, not even standing up at the front of the room, just from where I sat at the table. And so he came up and he said, do you think some of your words, these concepts could work. And so I had him tell me what his situation was. And then I gave him some ideas. The next time I saw him, it was quite a little while later. Next time I saw him, his face lit up like the fireworks in the closet. He came over to me. He gave me the, the firmest, warmest handshake that could have come out of him in his uh, state and told me that he had been able to reconcile with his brother and that uh, he had used exactly what I had said to reconcile. And then, of course, his brother perished not that long after. So having something that worked for our people is what drove me. I wanted to do that again and again. I knew, logically, that it had to work for the individual for it to work for a collective. Because as I said just a bit ago, collectives are composed of individuals. So that is what drove me. 
year after year, I, I was against the headwind of jealous people, people who thought the concepts that go free was ridiculous. They weren't going to give any attention. Academic peacocks. I've talked about it all here and there who uh, didn't think that anything was legitimate if it didn't come from an academic. Uh, and if you weren't speaking with, with their ideology, by the way, just as an aside or their verbiage, just as an aside, the, uh, I, I keep, I keep forgetting to, to mention every time I talk about the great replacement, that it's going to be adopted for it, it's inevitably going to be adopted not for white people but for the popul the current population of the western countries so watch out for that watch as that gets usurped I tried to tell people it's that it's harmful for the the actual words that are used but uh it's going to be it's going to be adopted for the general population of countries, not the white race. Anyhow, back to where I was. Uh, I faced all that headwind and I didn't know at the time that I was also being undermined behind the scenes uh, by people who I thought were my friends. And uh, various motivations but also stalling and preventing go free from reaching more and more people. And some of these people I was being very friendly with, I didn't know. And I was just very politely like, okay, I'll pay my dues. I don't have to be heard this conference or the next or the next five or the next seven. I'll pay my dues. Um, so finally though, the internet is robust enough and I uh, had worked on Born Guilty and the, the books contained therein. I knew I needed this entire con construct, this entire construction to be in place. So that took years of work. Was I getting paid? No, I was paying for that with my time with my blood, with my tears, I, and, and also paying with dollars when with things I needed. I needed to talk to a professional in this field, a professional in that field. They had to pay for their time. I was paying with my money that I was working for. So for years, I did this. Talk about the lack of gratitude outside in the rest of the white sympathetic sphere. For years. Finally got all this done. Now I finally get to the point. And how many people do you know in your life by the way, you or and anybody else, how many people do you know say to themselves, I've got to do this grand thing. It's going to have intricate moving parts and it's going to take 10 plus years to make and then get started with it and bring it to fruition. How many people do you know? That's what I did for Western Kind with no payment. With no thank. In fact, the opposite, as I say, me paying and people slandering me, people stabbing me in the back, people, but always operating under the delusion that I had from when I got started. And thinking, if I could just make my case to the broader white sympathetic sphere, everything would change. If I could just, if I could just start. Uh, being able to give the, the conference speeches and I could share and I could show the successes. I could talk about the logic behind it all. Everything would change. But I wasn't being given those opportunities. Every time I got a chance to speak, uh, well, not every time because it depended on the circumstance, but I rocked the house. As you all saw when I went over there and spoke with totally dehydrated, almost no sleep during the beginning of COVID, when everybody said, are you going to die from this? Look, at they're all dying in China. Everybody was saying that. And I went there with, with my note, my notes I had written on a folded up piece of paper, just a couple of single words, and went to speak at the conference in the UK and rocked it. 
So every time I was given an opportunity to speak, I rocked it. And it was almost like that engendered more secret jealousy of me, more hate, more stab him in the back, more lies about him. But anyhow, finally got to the point where I could have the giant construct. It could all be built after years of effort in silence with no applause, with nobody knowing. Assiduously working. And I'm like, okay, I can get online and I can make my case to the broader white sympathetic sphere without others getting in the way. And once I make my case, everything's going to change. Because I thought that the white, explicit white sympathetic sphere was populated largely, not entirely. I knew there were cranks there. We've talked about that before, but largely by people who saw themselves as teammates in a, a great sort of confederation of teams. And that is the moment they saw something that worked, they would head to it. Folks, seven years I've been making the case to the greater white sympathetic sphere. And 2023, the biggest of, of vindication, vindicated on Tits Minadeo, vindicated on Kanye West, vindicated on NJP. There were hordes of people who sided against me cited against us and white positivity. Hordes slandered the shit out of me, us, slandered the shit out of us, use the worst kind of comments that are intended to characterize a person or group in a way as to destroy them. These were the people I thought were on the same team as me. We get to 2023, wrapping up 2023, and a full vindication. This is the last lesson. For seven years, I've been given the lesson that the white sympathetic sphere, the explicit white sympathetic sphere, is not a team. The number of people who are actually interested in ending our victimization is smaller and smaller than I thought it was. This is the last lesson. There should have been. What should have happened after this vindication? What should have happened once I and we were proven right over these big issues? If the white sympathetic sphere, the explicit part, had been interested in ending the victimization of white people as their primary goal, and they saw themselves as members of a greater team, and as teammates, they were going to do what was best for that goal, this audience right now should be full, 20,000, 15,000, 10,000, 5,000, listening to everything I have to say. You're not going to find another time in your life when an individual who's in the public can be right about so many big things against the storm of numerous communities slandering the shit out of him. And then that guy end up against all of those minds, all of those people end up that guy being right. You'll not see that again in your life. And so we don't see, we don't see folks showing up to apologize and to say, you were right. I'm interested in what's going to work to put an end to our victimization. Their goals are whatever they are. I'm not going to pretend to know. Uh, Ending our victimization is not primary because then that would coldly move you toward what was working. You would just like a, like a, an animal following a scent to a delicious meal. You would just go to it. 
other things, other interests, it's, it wouldn't matter. So it reminds me, really, of, it reminded me the other day of the quote from Macbeth, Shakespeare, that I am in this earthly world where to do evil is laudable. To do good accounted dangerous folly. And once again, Shakespeare is right. In the white sympathetic sphere, if you give people what they want, even though it hurts them, even though it destroys our efforts to recapture our destiny, they will laud you for it. They will celebrate you for it. They will destroy the character, the reputation of those who stand against you, even when you are wrong and they are right. And they won't turn around and change their minds when it's all revealed. This is what the white sympathetic sphere is dominantly populated by. This is the kind of person. You give them what they want, no matter how dangerous, and you are their idol. So seven years, I've been making the case for white well-being, and these folks have totally rejected it. So I got a few notes here that are conclusions of mine as a consequence. The people in the white sympathetic sphere, largely, almost entirely, are not a movement, but they're also not a team of any sort. They are not in search of something that works in the service of ending our victimization. That's not the primary thing in their minds. That's not the primary objective. It might be an objective, I don't know. But like I said, if that were your primary objective, you would be moving there with a laser focus. Fact, they are selfish individualists and uh, typical economic consumers. That's what they are, which means that they operate like consumers rather than oppressed revolutionaries. This isn't the white sympathetic, explicit white sympathetic sphere is not like this, this group of oppressed uh, few of Camp of the Saints, valiant, ready to do the right thing uh, for the whole, etc. No, that's a movie. That's a fiction. These people are consumers. They're interested in having their, the vast majority of them, not all, they're interested in having their uh, biases and their prejudices and their scapegoats confirmed by somebody who can eloquently do that for them. That's what they're willing to buy. Their buying may come with dollars. Their buying may come with support. Their buying may come with fanaticism, fanatical support. Their buying may come with attacks on other content creators who don't uh, as fully or completely or as eloquently satisfy their biases and prejudices and scapegoats, uh, are, are arguments for scapegoats, it can manifest in various ways. You have a lot of people also who are just there for the shits and the giggles. They don't care about the outcome for white children today, growing up in a world that will hate them, that's inconceivable to us. White seniors going into healthcare facilities, they don't care. They just wanna have a laugh. They just wanna say something that will insult. There will be no and this is one of the most 
I don't want to say painful. Although it is painful. I don't want to say painful, even though it's painful. It's sobering. There will be no acknowledgement or gratitude from the explicit white sympathetic sphere for our work and our successes. There won't be any. Don't look for it from a consumer of content or a member of an organization uh, or content creators or organization leaders. They can be good people. But the audience determines the direction of the compass. If you're going to be creating content or leading an organization, you have to satisfy what these economic consumers, you have to satisfy what they want. So is there a vested interest to create content for them that's going to acknowledge and give gratitude to a group of people that effectively take away their excuse, their pretext for what they're doing. If we are changing lives of individuals, if things that we have predicted come to fruition, like the excuse me, the use of uh, these concepts, exactly as I predicted, that the anti-whites would start using them and everything, if they acknowledge, if a content creator organization leader acknowledges and shows gratitude for that, or just even acknowledges it, then they have essentially allowed us to rob or caused by way of that acknowledgement us to, to rob the excuse from all of these others in the white sympathetic sphere for what they're doing. They want to say that it's for the white race. They want to say that it's for our Western countries. But if it were, then they would have to come and look into going free. Then they would have to give up their prejudices, their biases. They would have to give up their scapegoats. So content creators can be great people, but they're going to make, or maybe I should not say and, they can be great people and they're going to make decisions that are going to be self-serving because they want to continue creating content. They want to continue leading organizations. So you're not going to get, we're not going to get acknowledgement and gratitude. And I make, I'm making clear, it's not wrong of content creators to want to uh, maintain and increase their audience. It's not wrong of them to do that at all. And I'm pointing out that it's, it's not, I'm pointing out the obvious, it's not in their interest to tell the audience that, my God, that No Why Gill community are awesome, they're rocking it. It's just not in their interest. But it's so much so the case that you can look at somebody like Elijah Schaefer, a really nice guy. I can tell you that the conversations, there weren't many, um, few behind the scene conversation. He and I were very friendly. We hit it off. He and I were very friendly. He brought the wife on camera. We were off. Show wasn't going. Brought the wife on camera. We said hello, had a had a nice conversation. He's like, look, we got the new white girl. She comes over. We're having a good conversation. He's a very friendly guy. I'm not, so it's nothing negative about him. It's nothing negative about these kinds. Just accepting a reality. He has learned. He learned by way of me on his program. He learned by way of other content. I mean, of other audience members of his about the work that we're doing and how we're changing the way that our victimization as white people is discussed and how that benefits us and examples of how it benefits us. And 
For this change, he gives credit to Nick Fuentes. How does that make sense? Very simply. Nick Fuentes has an audience of about 7,000 or so people who will show up at any notice. They're also a very aggressive audience. They demand that you blame everything on Jews. And if you're not, they'll attack your genetic heritage, who you're working for, what your motives are. They're very aggressive. And they go after members of your audience. You all, as I have, have seen them attack audience members who attempt to uh, support their content creator, their favorite content creator. In this case, it's Elijah we're talking about. So Elijah, there's a clip out there where Elijah is talking about the Overton window, this nebulous thing. There's nothing tangible. It's not, here are the concepts we're pushing. Here's how they work. Here's why they work. Here's predictions. Here are the people that we are swashing on with these concepts. Oh, now these people are using them. That's all concrete. And they're working out exactly the way we predicted. That's all concrete. No, Overton window is this nebulous thing, this nothingness. What, what can be discussed? What can be... There, there, there are no definite concrete lines. But for the change in society... He said, for this change that everybody can see is happening, he says, Nick Fuentes, it is in Elijah's interest to credit Nick Fuentes because Elijah likes audience members. Nick Fuentes has 7,000 very aggressive audience members. He doesn't want, Elijah doesn't want his audience to deteriorate with attacks from Fuentes' audience. He doesn't want his own character uh, as, as edgy and funny to be besmirched by Fuentes' aggressive audience. And so, even though Elijah Schaefer is married to a Jewish woman, unless somebody is going to tell me that he was being dishonest about that, and has a Jewish child, therefore. It's a Jewish mother, it's a Jewish child. Even though it's a Jewish wife and a Jewish child, he credits Fuentes. We're not going to get acknowledgement or gratitude. The only way that could happen is if this audience gets so big that content creators see it in their vested interest of content creation, organization leading to credit us. Because why? We're not a team. We were never a movement, but we're not even a team. We're not even uh, all working in the same direction as teammates. As a consequence of that, What does happen with what we create and what we build? What do people who are not on a team working to achieve a goal for the totality, what do they do when they see something working? Well, We've been witnessing it, haven't we? For seven years and increasingly so, co-opting the work that we do, claiming that the successes that we have achieved here in white positivity are self-evident, that they've always been there, that everybody has always been using anti-white and anti-whiteism as part of a moral imperative. It's always been there. It doesn't matter how little evidence of that there is. It's always been there. <clears throat> because these are the actions of self-interested content creators. And now not all of them are going to do it, obviously. The really morally, uh, I guess, immoral 
content creators or organization leaders will say that are in the know, because this would make them immoral, that they're co-opting, uh, would just take our works and pass them off as their own. Uh, there will be other content creators and organization leaders that are moral people, that are good people, that are wonderful people, that it, it will be better for them to say that it's just, it's just uh, always been out there. Everybody's been doing, it's just, a, it's like a big group effort. Everybody's doing the same thing. Nobody's getting credit. It's just a big group effort. That will be the best that we will get. So knowing that the organization leaders and content creators in the explicit white sympathetic sphere are not a team, they're definitely not a movement, they're not a team, and that the, the, the population is composed of economic consumers looking to have their biases, prejudices, and scapegoats verified by content creators and organization leaders and to have fun LARPing doing this or that, knowing that that's the case. Uh, I think when, and you all can give me your thoughts, but probably the best way for me to to get on and talk with other people who are in the white, explicit white sympathetic sphere is not to talk about our victories. Just to get on and, and be a guy who talks about you know, white well-being, that we, we have a white positive approach, but not talk about our victories or talk about exactly, just use the verbiage the same way that we drop it into comment sections. And when it comes to explicit white sympathetics, not content creators or organization leaders, there's obviously one course here. For 2024, we got one year until we're there and moving forward. When you come across somebody who is an explicit white sympathetic and they're, they're clearly present to satisfy one of those things that I was talking about, a bias, a, a LARP, or whatever it might be. You have that one interaction where you find that out, and then you say, have a nice day. Move on. No fighting these people. No debating them. Every second uh, encounter with them is wasted time that you could be getting over to a fishing blog or a fishing channel and, and drop a comment to our brothers and sisters there where normal people will be showing up to have normal conversations, normal people who will not have an agenda, who will not be looking for a scapegoat to be satisfied, who will attack us vehemently because of the fact that going free and our successes rob them of their ability to legitimize their scapegoat and prejudices and biases. People get very upset when you take that away from them. They don't want responsibility. So when we come upon people like that from now on, if they show up here in the live chat, uh, I might engage them for the, you know, the education of y'all. But otherwise, it is, uh, it's a massive waste of time. You can just say, this is what we do. It works. Best of luck to you and move on. That's my recommendation. The, hopefully, the good people that are in the explicit white sympathetic sphere will see the interaction. Maybe they'll be the person you talk to and the person that uh, you know, decides to come away and uh, to go free and do something verifiably productive. I mean, I actually received a comment from some NJP twit after all of this, after all that debacle, and said, who are you 
uh, to badmouth the NJP, they have woken up hundreds of thousands of people. How do you talk to somebody like that? I mean, that's clearly bullshit. So I don't hold anything against. I mean, when I thought, when I was operating under the delusion that we were all a team, uh, then it was a deeply personal injury to not acknowledge the work we're doing, especially you all, uh, the work that you're doing, to not acknowledge it and to have gratitude, or at least acknowledge. We won't even be acknowledged, okay? When I saw it as a team. Now that the lesson, this final vindication here at 23 is in, and nobody has come back, no one, no one has come with apologies. No one, it should have poured in. How did? How could we ever have been seduced by Tits Menadeo? How could we have ever, we're so sorry, nothing, zero. 100% wrong, zero. Not a team. I don't hold anything against the content creators and the organization leaders. Um, we're not a team. We're not a team. And I respect what they're doing. I'm grateful in many cases where content creators are sharing uh, horrible things that are happening to our people or unjust things that otherwise uh, our folks wouldn't know. So there are, there are content creators out there with colossal audiences that sort of straddle the line between implicit and explicit and they've got enormous audiences i'm grateful that they're doing that millions of, of, of views on a video i'm grateful they're doing that i'm not gonna i don't hold it against them that they're not going to acknowledge us we're not on the same team now there are other people that content creators that are much more um, maybe closely aligned. And uh, obviously with them, I they're much more dear to me. But I'm not going to hold them. Uh, I, I'm not going to hold my breath, I guess, waiting for acknowledgement for the work we're doing. I mean, for the longest time, I was saying to myself, if somebody can pretend to be a Nazi party, and if somebody can pretend that they're going to take over a part of the country and secede, and somebody can claim that the South is going to rise again, if all of these people can be acknowledged for the work they're doing, why can't we be acknowledged for the kind of work that we're doing? Um, this is what we do, right? We specifically target the psychological warfare and undermine it and defeat it. What? I mean, it's almost like if we didn't have success, we could be recognized. So I'm not going to look at it like that anymore. The reality is uh, we have been making this happen on our own. I mean, just that's what we can be proud of. That's what we can really celebrate. We have been making this happen on our own. All of those big successes, we've done them. The, the white sympathetic sphere, the explicit white sympathetic sphere, they didn't roll in and everybody with teamwork did it. No, we were the people doing it. And that means we can keep doing it. That means we can do more. That means we can do better. That means we can be stronger and faster. That is what's positive. Recognizing that no help is coming. Recognizing that no acknowledgement is coming. That no gratitude is coming. Recognizing that enables us to take that energy and put it into, invest it into the work that we do. And that's why 2024 is going to be even better than 2023. And what are some of those victories from 2023? And I'll take a look at your comments. How about this? I mean, I, I'm not able to get any any remotely close. 
How about this? Kate got a tweet that went with her tiny account, tiny account. How many, how many people does she have? 3,000? That went over a million views with the website on it. No White Gill Clips has made countless clips that over 2023 by itself, all of them together, millions of views. Millions. We got iHeartMedia, something that's never been done ever is to get a mainstream media operation to bring them to heel. That's never been done, ever. It is a colossal achievement. We were able to get iHeartMedia to change the picture they were using on a story about a black teenage boy that beat up a white or Hispanic little girl or white presenting Hispanic little girl. They had put up a picture of a white boy beating up another white boy or white girl. We got them to change that. You remember? Salty Cracker had an, a live audience of 30-some thousand people watching him, giggling along with him as he, as he ridiculed iHeartMedia for using the picture of the white little boy beating up another white little boy when it was a black teenage boy who beat up a white little girl. They had a big laugh. We changed the picture, literally and figuratively. We changed the outcome. I emailed them directly. He has 30,000 plus giggling along with him. We have 100 plus uh, making it happen. That's just going to be the way it's going to be. These people are economic units. They're like any other consumer. What is, what is going to make them feel good? What is going to make them feel special? Being a part of a Nazi elite will make them some of them feel special. It doesn't matter how much it harms them or harms our people or undermines the word. It doesn't matter. It's going to make them feel special. You do this in sales with everything else. How does a cologne affect a person? How does a certain car? What about a certain jacket? We swashed our concepts through some amazing people. King, Mark Dice, Matt Walsh, Jeremy at the Quartering, Elijah Schaefer, Dr. Carol Swain, the all, gun, all things gun-oriented guy, nothing fancy, Amala Ekbundabi, Donald Trump Jr., Devin Gibson, Jack Posobiec, Charlie Kirk. All together, we're talking about tens of millions of audience that were able to hear concepts that empower them. We set that as a strategy. It wasn't happening in the world. Don't let anybody, don't, don't ever forget this. We set that as a strategy with that not happening anywhere in the world. Then we applied the strategy with volunteers. Then we had the outcome. We did it. Tens of millions of people. Tens of millions. Not an afternoon standing on a street corner, God bless them holding up a couple of banners to how many people actually read as they drive by, how many people give a shit. We have had over 2023 personal victories galore. We've had people get jobs. We've had people get promotions. We've had people get off abusive substances or to reduce the use in those abusive substances. We'd have, we have people... <laughs> in 2023, who had been lured away by subversives coming back to us, telling me that, that, we were, that we were right in these like individual cases where they were lured away. And uh, more than one of them calling the subversives demons. Demons. Note how 
we let these people go who wanted to leave. They were allowed to leave and nobody followed them and slandered their character or assassinated their character. They just left. Now, some of them coming back. Half a dozen or more babies born in our community over the course of 2023. These are children, sons and daughters of the West that are going to go on to be true champions, far better than, than we could be, far stronger and more spiritually, mentally, and physically pristine than we could be because we didn't have go free from the beginning. Personal victories that benefit everyone. Like I've shared a couple of times, Heidi and Raymond's victory with their son over the anti-white book at the school. And you can take um, all of the other ideologies, all of the other approaches and ask, what would happen if that was applied in that environment? What would the outcome be? If it's not going to work for the individual, it's not going to work for the collective. We've had wonderful guests uh, show up and appear on uh, stream with me. Not the least of which, Dr. Carol Swain, who used anti-whiteism. And in, that's like a atomic bomb of proof going off. And, and one of the highest caliber academicians, as remote as you could possibly be from a, a, a white guy in Virginia who wants to end the victimization of white people, is able to come in and grab the concept that we're pushing. And she says, that's moral. It's anti-whiteism. It's not racism. It's anti-whiteism. And she appears with me. Do you need any more evidence that the white sympathetic sphere is not teammates? Did anybody else get somebody of Dr. Carol Swain's caliber in mainstream media? What is that? What am I, what am I saying? In mainstream society, this woman is, is like a unicorn Pegasus in mainstream society. She's a, and did anybody else get somebody like that, that level to adopt anything that they're doing? Somebody that credible? Somebody who's not a crank? No. Somebody who wasn't tricked. Uh, Dr. Swain knows exactly who I am. She knows exactly what I'm all about. So the, she, when she showed up, she, she's not going to come away and say, oh, I didn't know who that guy really was and disavow me. We've appeared on programs with wonderful people. Wonderful people. Scott Balson, Henrik and Lana, wonderful people over the course of the year that have had us on. And it's it's no easy thing with all the pressure. So my heart, my love, uh, thank you. Go out to all of these wonderful, truly wonderful people. And looking forward to continuing uh, the friendship and also working together in a way that serves white well-being. Absolutely. So it's been a glorious year for that. And whatever victories that you all would like to share as well. We've had so many. But 2024 is going to be amazing. 2024 is going to open the door for significant trauma to Western civilization, specifically the United States and Western kind in the United States. And all of those, all of that trauma is going to be an opportunity for us to drop the concepts that work to recapture our destiny, to end our victimization. I don't know what ends up happening. Maybe you all have some ideas. I don't know what ends up happening with the explicit white sympathetic sphere. Um, the bottom line is, if our audience gets big enough, then it will be in the vested interest to acknowledge our contributions. And that's the reality. So I'm going to see what you all have to say. I'm going to take a look at the financial gifts. Tokolo, she I just saw. 
at the very bottom and it looks like the chat's moving. If you if your chat rolled off, please write it again. Please tag me again. I apologize for that. But we are uh, not quite uh, well. We're out just shy outside of 30 minutes until the year changes and we begin triumphantly marching in to 2024 as the heroes that we are. Tokolo, she says, the lack of solidarity goes back a while. Uh, as Kat Katanga, Rhodesia, South Africa, we're not destroyed by non-whites. That is the negative energy you will have to cope with. Precisely. Thank you for that. You're absolutely right. I can make cases. I will continue to make cases about why what we're doing is right and how other other things are destructive, but not not in the way that we were doing before, because make the case to who, to whom, to whom are these cases made? To people who are saying, are you going to uh, defend my choice of scapegoat, prejudice and bias? If not, then I'm not interested. That's the people you're making the cases to. That's the general audience. You know who was right long before me uh, was that champion, lovely Porridge down under, who said, I think like two years ago, we don't need a new message. We need a new audience. God bless him. Lovely Porridge. Danunaki says, I looked up uh, Loxus the other day, and the definition was defined as a neo-Nazi anti-Semitic trope. And they attached anti-whiteism as a key word on the wiki page. Well, we got a wiki page, though, also for anti-whiteism that spells it out accurately. Uh, and yes, the anti-whites are going to try to undermine our concepts, inevitably. Uh, and that's why we have to push all the harder. Regrettably, if we were a team, and you can see how lamentable this is for me, if we were a team and as many people as I thought were genuine, uh, genuinely concerned with ending our victimization, we would easily, with those numbers, push the totality of the lexicon into society. It would be in the mouths and minds of people. And at that point, there would be nothing the anti-whites could do with it. They would have to use it to talk to us which would demonize them. This is not something that the words, there are no words that in and of themselves uh, will defend themselves. Nothing jumps up off the paper or the page or the computer screen or your cell phone. And that's another reason why you can't just co-opt what I and we are doing and then think, okay, well now I've got this and now I don't need that guy anymore because it's dynamic. The victimizer is going to change the way he plays the game. And therefore, we will have to as well. If there was a source for a remedy that caused the victimizer to have to change up the way he plays the game, then that's the place you want to go for the next move. You don't want to go to the person or the people who co-opted concepts because they don't even know how you got there. Slots. Uh, says, instead of crediting the method for victories, credit the people using it. You can still mention that they are participants, uh, but give the victory to them. Yeah, I will. I can't say that they're members of this community, though. Yes, I can credit individuals, but I can't say that they're part of this community because then that's this community doing it. Uh, Sloss also says, I agree that recognition and that recognition will empower us uh, to produ productively focus. Thank you, brother. Yes. Uh, Spearman says, good evening, Jason. Happy New Year, brother. Is there any call and options for the show this evening? Yes. Skype. Uh, reach out to me on Skype. And then I call you back. Or you can get on with me on the Twitter space that I will be starting here in not too long. 
I think we'll probably ring in the new year and then I'll open that up and stay a little longer and then we will head out for tonight. Uh, the Great Four Null says, I agree. I go into forums for all my hobbies and gently spread the concepts. Brilliant. That's what we need to be doing. Like the great lovely porridge said, the brilliant lovely porridge. We don't need a new message. We need a new audience. There's a brand conflict of interest issue with regard to declaring victories. They see going free as a commercial endeavor. If you mention victories, it should be by individuals. So that's what he said, uh, the great Slot said prior to what he said a moment ago. Well said, yes. And I, I, I have to keep it as an individual, not say they're part of this community. The great dude bro moment chiming in. If you aren't going to talk about the victories, then you should talk about the reasons why uh, use of a topic is helpful. Yeah, I agree completely, brother. Yes. Yes. I mean, I think, I think, imagine, and well said, thank you. Imagine if I had been just showing up and dropping the lexicon not thinking that we were a team making a case to people that could be persuaded to do the thing that works. Um, and maybe saying why I say like the great dude bro moment is mentioning there, like why, why this is said. And maybe like great slots is saying, celebrating the people uh, you know, in the community, but don't say that they're in the community. Um, if I'd been doing that rather than trying to persuade anybody, then there would have never been, there would have never, uh, I, mean, I wouldn't have been able to stay, of course, just like I'm not staying now. I mean, I'm not, I'm a redeemer. I think that, you know, these people are going bad. They're going to hurt themselves. They are hurting themselves. They're hurting our people. So I want to redeem them. I'm not going to stay among the equivalent of like it would be me uh, like as a priest just like hanging out in the brothel not there to rescue souls but just to hang out talk about christianity a little bit here or there but hey they don't like it you know they're doing their thing there would be the priest wouldn't stay so there would be no reason for me to stay but if i had been doing that uh, then there would, there would not have been the, the big disagreement, the big, uh, vindication. There wouldn't have been any of that. I did not honestly did not know that such a mad, I mean, I've been, you all have heard me for several years. I was like, Jesus, this, the, the percentage that actually want to end our victimization is tiny. How many times do you have to hear the case made with reason and logic and then see the outcomes bad there, good here before you're like, OK, well, I want the victimization in. So I'm going over there. And then there's just some people, some of these consumers. This is really what they are. Um, are not able. I mean, let's face it. This is. Really intellectual. And I don't mean uh, academic. Academic is prattling. This takes a lot of processing power to understand how it works. It's, it's made accessible to everyone. That's where real intelligence is to make the complex accessible and useful. It had to be that way for the obvious reason of a bell curve. But a vast majority of these consumers in the sphere not only are not able to understand the extremely complex and all of the multifarious uh, connections, but they're also unwilling to submit to what works and what they can't understand. They don't know how electricity works, but they submit to it. They don't know how space travel works, but they submit to it. They don't now know how heart surgery works, but they submit to it. 
This, they're not going to do that because their objectives are different. When, you, when your heart valves are blocked, you want to live. Your objective is to live. So even though you don't know how they're going to run the catheter up inside of you and perform the procedures they need to perform, you submit to it because your objective is to live. If your objective was to end the victimization of the white race, then what works, the catheter of go free, you would submit to, even if you don't understand. So there are a bunch of people who don't understand or can't understand. There are a bunch of consumers who don't have the same objective or it's some ranks down. Like I, I gotta have my prejudices and biases and scapegoat and then end our victimization. So it's somewhere down the line. And if you're not going to give them the others, then they're not interested. There is a degree of, or maybe there's a degree, maybe there's a fine line with, for numbers wise, speaking a little bit to those things so that people can be enthused uh, and increase the numbers. And then we could still have our hardcore go free activists actually changing the world. That we can't give up, no matter what. Great points. Jason is here, giving hearts. Thank you so much. Chris Perry is here. Uh, Melissa says, oh, that was from earlier, I think. Well, she said, I found that over three groups. So maybe I found that to something I said. And then she said, over three groups, I found none cared much about me as a white individual woman. It was all about control, religion, color, anything. You mean in the white sympathetic sphere? Yeah, that's unfortunately the way it is. The great sloth saying here, and so true, so true, sobering. The end. How much have we got done? Twenty twenty three, and here is a very sobering, and we are behaving like the adults in the room. Slot says, I understand you sought a feedback loop to grow with the white sympathetic sphere, but instead you have to face growing without them. Promethean comrade. Well, God bless you. Yeah, precisely. Uh, you really honed in on the critical aspect of the Western people's psychology, says Spud Ruckus. In order to succeed, the necessity to carry the moral position. We are unique in how critical this is. Well, yeah. Precise. Thank you for that. Yes. We need that moral matrix or we can't act. If we don't have a moral matrix, we consider it theft. We consider it immoral. Whatever the act is, even if it benefits as a group. There are individual exceptions and periods where white groups can act contrary to that, but that is not the norm. Uh, Promethean Kitchen about the, will they allow the African bishops to not say blessings on gay marriages? I don't know. Probably for now. but to maintain their authority over the, the white masses, uh, they will eventually have to force it. Okay, uh, Slot says, I understand you saw, oh, okay, that was from earlier, gotcha. Thank you, brother.
Do we have a countdown? No, I don't think. We could do our own countdown. I'll bring up the clock. And actually, you know what? It'll be a, a tiny bit behind the actual clock because I'm a tiny bit behind what you're seeing. What you're seeing is a tiny bit behind what I'm doing. Art Acrobat says, Will said to something. And June says, no wine guilt works so hard. We would be nowhere in recapturing our destiny without him. I'm so grateful for him. Thank you very much for those kind words. I really appreciate it. They really, uh, they really are meaningful in the, in the presence of, of all of the character assassination that people in the white sympathetic sphere have engaged in. Uh, the great Sloth says, so great as an observation, brother, those who are here submit to what works. Exactly. JK160 is here, says, can you give my wife a shout out. Now they just had a daughter of the West, as I remember. So let's get some 07s, some emojis for JK160's wife, who had uh, gave birth to a beautiful, beautiful daughter of the West. God bless them. God bless you both. And the little baby. God bless her. It's going to be a great 2024. That I can promise you. Thank you all for celebrating. Daughter of the West. Franklin pointing out the year went by fast. Boy, it really did. Uh, Don, Don Anaki tried to email. Tried to email. Did you try to email a uh, Mr. V? It's he's in the description as well. Try that out and see if that works, brother. And see if we can't get it straightened out. Thank you. You possibly need a woman group to help with uh, reclaiming of reduced females. Uh, you mean you mean a, a a female group here? I mean, I I think I am shying. I think we're going to look into exactly how. We operate here a little bit at the beginning of 2024 because we want to limit the vectors of subversion. And it's too easy right now, even though it's it's made more of a challenge here than than elsewhere. It's there are still some vectors for some subversion that and, and by that, I mean, both organic and inorganic. Right. People who show up, they like the community, they like the people. Uh, but they still want their, you know, biases and scapegoats and prejudices and all of that. And uh, then what ends up happening is you have this bad mouthing, concern trolling, destructive criticism. Uh, and that lowers morale. We become less productive. And then subversives are able to say, look, it's it's people are down and out. It's all Jason's fault when it's really them. So we're going to be looking into it. So I don't know. And certainly with the number of people we have, I mean, we don't need anything really. What we need to be, let me just put it this way. We need to be an engine that is hammering the world with go free. The lexical dialectical power of go free. Everybody has to contribute their time. Everybody's a volunteer. Uh, we, we shouldn't be dividing people's volunteerism uh, or burning through their volunteerism with a bunch of other activities. You know what I'm saying? Because if you like, if you have a situation where people have to show up again and again and again for other things other than getting better at going free, actually practice and studying and coming to know go free, and promulgating it. When you have people doing other things, uh, then they can burn out and quick more more quickly, and then want to step away. Also, when there's other type things can, going on, that's another vector for 
subversion, destructive criticism, concern trolling. So, and again, concern trolling, that subversion can be organic. In other words, it's people actually in the white sympathetic sphere. They're real people. And it can also be inorganic, anti-whites pretending to be white sympathetic. It's a, it's a very sophisticated way to use concern trolling. It's a very sophisticated way to burn down faith in a leader, a group, a community, a content creator. That's one of the tried and true way to burn it down when the person's actually not doing anything worthy of a loss of respect or loyalty, et cetera. So we, we just can't let that, we got the. I think when we look at, when we look at the reality that we're not going to have like half of the white sympathetic sphere be people who say, okay, I'm going to go with whatever works and this go free thing is working. So I'm going with that. And, and then just have such numbers that everybody can give like a little bit and you can have more waste than you can with a smaller community, uh, which is the reality of it. I mean, we've really been part of something special. 2023 is, has been huge for us. There should be folks, you know, I, I wish I could, I feel there's a part of me that feels really bad. There's a part of me that wants to just go to war against the people in the white sympathetic sphere, the explicit people who know about us go to war against them and, and shake them and say, what are you doing? Why aren't you celebrating all these people that are doing it? Should, all of these people should have a stadium around them, applauding them saying that's a, amazing that's never been done so part of me wants to do that the reality is that it's not going to help i would love to give you all stadiums of applause i mean if if for no other reason my if i didn't care about y'all at all if all that was left to me was my concern for our people and putting an end to our victimization I would want you all celebrated for your investment of time and genius and effort so that you would stay and do more so that we could end our victimization. If there was nothing else to me, if I didn't care about anybody, not even myself, but our, but my objective, that's what I would want. So it's upsetting. Man, I'll tell you, it's upsetting, but it's, they, they can't be persuaded to a new objective. That's the thing. I mean, if you're going to have, if you're going to have Elijah Schaefer with a Jewish wife and Jewish baby crediting a Jew hater in Nick, come on, let's not even parse words. He loves everybody because he's a, that's using Christianity. Chris, real Christians should be very angry with that. That's just using it. This guy condemns Jews. And as though he's the first one, he figured it all out. Give me a break. And here's Elijah with a Jewish wife and baby. He's like, Nick Fuentes, the guy who's changed everything. The nameless one is here. Great to see you, brother. Bulldog Boris says, in bookstores of the future, there will be an anti-whiteism section, and Jason's book will be the bestseller. Be on the bestsellers list. Right there in front. That would be awesome. It would be awesome, brother. I love it. Thank you for saying that. Oh, Promethean Kitchen. I actually spoke to that earlier about the Oak Island.
we have to, we do have a mailbag today and we're running out of time for midnight at least. So let's do that in 2023 before we run out of time. Let's take a look right here. We have, I want you to get your raucous emojis together. I'll still be reading your comments. Your 007s, your big celebration. We got a Christmas card right here. Take a look at this beauty, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, sending best wishes for a wonderful holiday season. The one and only Wing It production. Financially gifting 50 white well-being dollars. God bless this guy. Celebrate. Throw him out some raucous emojis. Throw him out. Let him know he's loved here and white well-being. God bless you, brother. Maybe some floating emoji hearts or whatever it might be. God bless you. Wing of production showing up. He said, I got a card coming. Did you get it yet? I have it now. God bless you. 50 white well-being dollars in the mailbag. Protect the baby dollars. 50 testimonial. This shit works dollars, right? You know what I'm saying? 50 this shit works testimonial dollars. I don't know if he's with us tonight or not, but thank you so much. When you listen, Wing It Productions, we also have in the mailbag, keep those raucous emojis going, ever faithful and loyal, Randy. Randy in the mailbag. God bless you, Randy. 25 white well-being, protect the white baby dollars from Randy. Thank you so much, Randy, for that financial gift here at the end of 2023 we are going to make 2024 even more dazzling. The year of vindication has passed, and now we can move forward uh, with, a, with a, a new and realized focus and energy on driving white well-being into the future, into swashing it into people's minds and mouths around Western civilization so we can end our victimization. Thank you so much. The mail, well, wing it is right here. He says the, the card is from the once glorious Confederate Air Force. Was there, what is there? Confederate Air Force? I don't recognize the airplane. It's a warbird. What is it? Which war bird is it, brother? A big thank you to Winged Productions and Randy Champions. Uh, koala bears, I love it, Franklin. Creative. Let's see, we have uh, Brush with Darkness. I've heard about your dancing ability. <laughs> Let's see you cut some rug at midnight. I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know about tonight, maybe some other day. It is true, though, I am a magnificent dancer. So it has always been that way. As far back, as soon as I started to train myself, I didn't dance as a child. You know, some people get the kids to jump around. I didn't really do that. Uh, but when I reached high school, I was like, hmm, I think I want to know how to dance. So I taught myself. Unfortunately, I watched too many girls dancing. I mean, it was just normal. And so a lot of the moves I ended up imitating were moves that females did when they were doing what they did that attracted my attention. And so it's a, a curious repertoire. But maybe some other day. Thank you for that. The Great Slaw says, I think the only way people are persuaded to new objectives is experiencing suffering, either by envy of who they can't reach or a genuine grievance with anti-whites. Great point. You know, and it might be that as we will be here, you know, as things are getting worse over this coming year, and we have on the East Coast here of the United States, what, not many minutes left now, just a little over 10. Uh, we have a lot of suffering coming our way for 24. 
it's not going to be like world ending. Don't, you know, don't take that away from what I'm saying, but we talked about some of it here today. So there's going to be a lot that's going to be scary and make life hard and challenging, et cetera, for folks. So hopefully maybe we'll see that. Maybe we'll see people will change their objective and decide, well, you know what? My, uh, my scapegoat is less important now relative to the Central South American gangs that are rummaging through the neighborhood and the enlistment of those same people into the United States Armed Services now driving official vehicles down the road. Franklin says, again, I believe the Jay Walker wife thing is a joke. Okay, well, uh, if it is, if it is a joke, it's a, it's a long-standing joke. He's doing a great job if it is a joke. Me and a, me and a co-host, we pulled off a big joke one, one, uh, one month. It was hilarious. Triple five is here. Hello. Uh, JK160 asking, can you play Tomorrow Belongs to Us by Synthesize? I will look for it. Perhaps I have it. Let me refresh uh, the financial gift options and I will see if there is, looks like, nope, blank over there on Odyssey. Did anybody say if they had tried and it didn't work? Okay, I don't see. Oh, interesting. I did not see this. Open Borders for Israel says that Michael Moore said that Jews and I guess, Palestinians, I guess, shouldn't be fighting because the real enemy is white people. Yeah. Which doesn't which doesn't, uh, you know, exactly as we said, it's not changed for anti-whites. Anti-whites, whether they're anti-white Jews or anti-white Arabs, anti-white Palestinians uh, in the U.S., Europe, they'll have no problem coming back together on every other issue to be anti-white. So siding with them, thinking you're making an ally, very foolish. But uh, it's foolish as far, I guess, as our objective, ending our victimization, We have Fledgling donated a diamond. I think that is what I read earlier. Yes, yes. There's the little kangaroo over there on DLive with a little frog riding his back. All right, over here as the time. Let's see if I can. I don't know if it's. Uh, let's see. Let's see if that will pull it up for us. I could put that on the screen. You'll see it a couple of mo it'll it'll hit midnight a couple of moments after it actually does. Will it will that you know be a big deal breaker for you? I hope not. Um, we'll put that up in one moment, and let's see. Oh, for the love of God! Entropy did its thing where I have to reload. We have here. Oh, can I go? Wilson Bear. Did I get that? $5 financial gift from Wilson Bear. Thank you, Wilson Bear. My brother recently joined the army. 90% non-whites at the swearing-in ceremony. Wow. Yeah. Was that in the U.S. or what country? Are you in the live chat? You could put it in the chat here on Entropy. 90% non-white. Wonder what they'll be willing, anti-white non-whites, wonder what they'll be willing to do to the white population. But I guess, you know, Billy Bob with his rifle, 
he'll hold them off. Wilson Bear also back again, five more dollars. Uh, thank you so much, brother. Thank you. He says, what other reason could there be for the immigrant invasion as articulated by Donald Trump? Other that uh, they'll eventually be turned against us. They can't replace us uh, at work. What other reason could there be? Well, there doesn't need to be like a grand reason. That doesn't mean that there isn't a grand reason, but they are not white. And so that means the world that they're going to create is going, is going to sully the world that we create, is going to change the world that we create. Doesn't mean that it's, you know, I, that's, there is no cosmic stick, as I've talked about, measuring stick for cultures, but it inevitably will change what we, what we create. So for an anti-white, there doesn't have to be any more than that. This is going to harm white people. Do it. That's all there needs to be. There's, there's, and that's how we have to understand it. That's how we can most effectively understand it, productively understand it. Uh, retrodictive and 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 predict, retrodict and predict it, is just to understand that. Uh, there can be like a, a greater scheme. But I think it, it's not necessary, really. Just harming us. I hear fireworks going off outside. It's not DC under an invasion. If I, if you financially gift on, if you financially gifted, hmm. let's see. On entropy. Okay, I didn't miss anybody. Okay. And I don't think, no, I think I got everybody. Okay. Ooh, we're running out of time to put the clock up. Ringing in 2024, I am so fired up for us. And absolutely, we're, we, our, our energy is going to be more focused. We have gotten rid of some dead wood that was just a pulling down morale. And it, we're going to be so much better. We're not going to be trying to change people's minds anymore. We have a better understanding of the lay of the land. And that's a good thing. Even if it means that we're going to have, uh, it means that there, there was never that audience there. There was never that possibility of people coming to support this work. It was never there. We now have that information and we can move on. That is a powerful place to be. And so I'm optimistic. I've been optimistic about it uh, since the, the, the grand uh, vindication. Let me pull this up. Of course, we've rung in the new year, many different time zones. for our people. If the clock would appear, what's it called? Hmm. Will the clock appear in time? Let's see. Ah. There is your clock and we are counting down to New Year's here on the East Coast of the United States. I'll take a quick look over here. And uh, we have Raucous emojis, ladies and gentlemen, for one of the champions we were celebrating today for all of his hard work in the trenches, swashing in the trenches. It's cool. Papa J magic. Man, the champion. He just cannot be stopped in the good he's doing for white well-being. $20 to protect white babies. $20 to 20 24 to get started right. $20. Cool, Papa J Magic. He says, looking forward to an epic 2024. 
with you all. I love it. God bless you, man. Thank you so much for your service over this year to white well-being. I know next year you're really going to be. If you already were rocking it and so quick, so quick, this guy was become amazing. I know next year it's going to be even better. Let me refresh here and make sure we're not missing anybody on subscribe star. Thank you all for celebrating. And Danunaki, who was the guy who created the epic Promethean metal album, the one uh, that used the concepts? That's Eminent Rain, also known as Luke Mason. The Great Sloth says, absolutely, cold in the belly toward Whitnigs, white negatives. And they either come to us or they go home. Exactly. Unacceptable living in left field is with us. Great to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, LG, thank you very much, says, thanks for all the great streams in 2023. Boy, there have been a lot, haven't there? There are a lot of streams. Some of them may be a little better than others, but there have been a lot of streams and there have been some good ones. I appreciate that. Thank you. And then tomorrow belongs to us. I've got to find... As we are kind of almost a minute down. So let me see. Where would that be? That's the problem. That's been a while. I got to remember too how it even. How it even goes in my head. Because I don't have a specific folder for him I don't think well we're 30 seconds out I have to come back and find it well folks 10 9 8 7 6 Five, four, three, two, one. 2024 is with us, ladies and gentlemen, on the East Coast of the United States. We're following suit after all of our good brothers and sisters further east than us. The fireworks are going off outside. The Capitol is not under attack, I assure you. It is a celebration for the new year, and it's going to be our year. God dang it. It's going to be ours. We're really going to make us shine Looking forward to the successes. I'm going to bring up the, boy, I hear people cheering outside. They must know that we're going to take the world over this year. Uh, I am going to, let's see, I'll take a quick look again to see if I can find that song. And I can't play it on YouTube because it'll sound like trash. That's one of the problems with playing the songs on YouTube. I don't think it would be under any of these other. Happy New Year to you all, though. Give a big hug to everybody that, that's there that you love. A virtual hug to everybody else. What are you all most excited about 2024 that you think that we could, that we could do? Or that might happen? Anybody have any ideas or hopes or predictions? We're going to have to settle while you all figure that out. Uh, we're going to have to settle for the totally awesome song that you wouldn't settle for. Uh, and of course, is asked for often, which is White Step. And uh, we will we'll play White Step. I will be gone just for a moment. I'll come back and then we're going to set up anybody who wants to call in. We're going to hear what you have to say or join the Twitter space, which will be up and running shortly as well. And White Step. Let's find White Step.
so we can step and maybe I'll still find synthesides tomorrow belongs to us. Everybody likes white step. back yes 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 2024 is underway the twitter space is now up if you would like to jump on the twitter space i'll take a look at my skype to see if anybody has reached out here i don't see that but it looks like uh, the great slots has uh, said hello and happy new year there god bless you brother so if you would like to chat let me open my microphone here if you would like to chat on Skype or the Twitter space, hop on over there, let me know, ask for the microphone, and I will give it to you to grow in Go Free and in my Catholic faith as well, Promethean 
kitchen saying, so there had to be a first part to that. And uh, where is it? Where is it, my friend? Slaw says, more growth outside the white neg sphere, concepts spreading tons, my health improving. Amen to that. Let's send some prayers and a positive energy to the great sloths. Let's do that, folks. Think of him. Send a prayer that his health improves. He's on the carnivore diet. And uh, meme judoing the anti-whites in 2024. It's war, ladies and gentlemen, metaphorically, metaphorically, uh, against the anti-whites. I'm going to be, I am pledging, I'm going to have some New Year's resolutions. And I'm thinking about them. Uh, one of them, of course, I guess, has to deal with uh, the reality that I'm not going to not going to debate uh, the white the Whitnigs anymore, the Whitnigs, the white negatives anymore. I'm not going to debate. I'm not going to try to make a case. It's over. We won. We're vindicated. Uh, they were wrong on all of the biggest di d disagreements. 2023 is now past. It's time to move on with the successes. And refocus. Let's go, says JK160. So I love that prediction by a slots. What he's looking for. Cool Papa J Magic says a new line of work for him. Uh, and he is he's tired of abusing his body. So let's get some prayers and some positive energy for Cool Papa J Magic for a new line of work. He's tired of abusing his body. Both of these folks. If you would like some prayers and positive energy from the community, speak up, tag me. And uh, we'll make sure to add you to the list. You're one of our, especially these folks, big champions, doing so much good for the totality of our people. We want them to have their best life and uh, make them even more effective. Triple five. Uh, can you play the heavy metal song that has the lyrics, Because I'm White? That's all I know. Oh, boy. Does anybody know what song that is? Happy New Year, says Melissa. Big Happy New Year. This is It's tomorrow. That's how far they are into the new year. Uh, Reynold White Wolf is here. Lots of people uh, on millennials celebrated the spreading, uh, uh, the usage of the term anti-white. That's fantastic. But no one mentioned that you've been the one promoting it the longest. Disappointing. Uh, not only the longest, but... The effective one, the, I and the people that came here, we are the ones that made it happen. You know, just like using anti-white here or there is not doing anything. Anti-white is part of a cohesive whole of, uh, of a white moral imperative, undermining the anti-white moral imperative, and then strategically targeting large content creators and we did that for obvious reasons uh, to get them to use these concepts. All of that is what has resulted in this. And so, yeah, it's a real shame. Uh, that's the that's the reality. I mean, look at what Reynold White Wolf wrote, wrote here, folks. Lots of people on Millennial. They're all over there celebrating the spreading usage of the term anti-white. We are it. We are the people who did that, period. Into the conversation. But nobody's got anything to say about us. They're like, oh, we're happy that's happened. It's just randomly happened. And then if we ever come up, they're like, oh, no, it's everybody's done it or some other group uh, 10 years ago that, by the way, it, it wasn't being used. By the way, was, I mean, for as, as much good that they did, and I support the good, uh, it was uh, anti-white with a hyphen, not part of a cohesive, uh, organized theory of practice and a white negative as well at the end of a uh, at the end of this long mantra and it, it didn't result in anti-white being used everywhere so now anti-white's being used everywhere in multiple countries after we are the ones pushing it in these places we did it so I mean that's that's the unfortunate reality they're like Yes, it's so great. Other people have been on other shows and, and they were celebrating, literally saying that they're celebrating the change in the conversation. 
and specifically identifying our concepts that we're pushing and not a word, no us. You know, it'd be different if they had no idea who we were. But, you know, that's the way it is. It's not going to be otherwise. Um, Otto is here. Hello and welcome, Otto. Says, it's a waste of energy to give them, give them who don't care of you. It is. It is a waste of energy. In fact, uh, there is a video that I'm going to make for you all, and it's really pertinent for us because it is uh, some motivational guy. And, you know, normally they share a bunch of crap. Sometimes, you know, they take like Aesop fables, they repurpose them, they give them like a new sheen. And those always have truism. Those always are legit. But this, this video is really, actually, you know what? I don't think the motivational guy had anything Did he even share. Maybe he was him that shared the news. Anyhow, there was someone of immense value that all I'll say is this someone of immense value that went to a place where he wasn't valued and no one valued him. So that's the case with us, I'm afraid. Just stop by to say this is the year to make shit happen. Praise to God and no white guilt. Kip, keep it Promethean, writes B. Great to see you. Thank you so much for that. So Promethean, oh, I see. It was just a direct answer to my question. What do you want for this new year? And the great Promethean Kitchen says to grow in go free and in my Catholic faith as well. God bless you. And by the way, on, you know, millennial uh, woes, is it's not in his interest to say, I know where that came from. I mean, he's fighting for an audience. I don't blame him at all, at all. He's fighting to have an audience, to grow his audience. I don't know how big his audience is. I hope it grows, whatever it is. I hope he achieves what his objectives are. I hope so many, because I, I don't see, unless woes has somehow become wildly destructive or something, but I hope they get what they're looking for. I hope they grow their audience. They make the money they're looking for. They have the happiness. Just like I was telling the entire time that NJP, the great NJP that uh, came into existence while I was on PWR and then began immediately saying, chipping away at my involvement and saying I couldn't participate. And I was saying, of course, to Mark and Laura, Sam, I don't want this to get in the way of your families. I have all of those messages. I, th this is my actual, this is how I feel. So while they were saying, get rid of that guy because we're the new Nazi party. I was saying, look, if it's going to be a problem, I want you to be able to have a stable family and be able to do for your kids. And Laura and Sam were always awesome to me. Uh, they were not, never not awesome. Sam, I, I mean... Uh, the moment I met that guy, awesome, great. Laura, great. I mean, remember, we had Laura come over and everything wonderful. But, you know, I'm a guy. Sam's a guy. And fantastic guy. Uh, so, again, nothing against people. I want them to have happy, happy lives, happy kids. And uh, so I don't, I don't blame woes. If his audience were all saying, hey, no, I guilt did that. And, and the white well-being community, they're the ones who made that happen. I would imagine he would say, that's great. Why would he Why would he object to what his audience, you know? So be, and if, if he know, like, I don't know to what degree he's aware, but if he's aware, then it would be very easy to agree with him at that point. So Promethean Kitchen, growing and go free and in his Catholic faith. Well, God bless you, brother. Reach out to God for some of our champions here. And he says, oh, and fit and stronger as well. Fantastic. That's a great goal. Anybody else have 
New Year's resolutions as we are ticking into the first minutes on the East Coast, at least. Into uh, Oh, we got a request now on the Twitter space. So we're going to take that. Let me just see quickly. Uh, what do we have here? The, cre the Cretinous Sympathetics. They saw anti-white accelerating as a concept and then jumped on and said, hey, yeah, promote it. Hey, yeah, I promoted it. Yeah. So that's what, yeah, these white sympathetics out there are out there trying to take credit for our work. What a surprise. What a surprise. Nothing quite like dedicating your life, working for years and years and years to construct something for our people, selflessly for our people, spending your money, your time, your energy to have members of your people just steal your work. <laughs> Nothing quite like it. I also heard many of them struggle to encapsulate how whites are different. I kept wishing they would use biospirit, my personal favorite word in the go-free lexicon, says Ronald White Wolf. Thank you for that, brother. Thank you. All right. The nameless one. Uh, he says he's optimistic for 2024. I don't know how to say it. How to, I don't know how to say do it, but I say claim the year. Every live watch, I'm better equipped and get really charged up. I just want to share the power and embolden for white well being and with most intention. Amen to that. Well, very well said. The nameless one, ready to make this year a glorious year for white well-being. Let's give the mic over. Who asked for the mic? Oh, it looks like thunder from down under. Here it goes. I might have to turn him up here, but we'll see. Are you there, brother? Let me turn you up. G'day, g'day. There he is. Uh, good day to you, my friend. Good day. Gra gra glad now. you're calling in. Happy 2024. Oh, it's bloody good to be here. Had a quit of a, a breeze through 2023. It's been a great year for us. Oh, my God. Enormous victories all year long. We really have a lot to look back on and be proud of. Yeah. I mean, it's been an absolute tremendous success, like wherever you look. I mean, 2023, in my mind, is the year we push the snowball with all of our might, going to all these content creators and spreading the lexicon. Um, yeah. It will now move on its own and with increasing speed. That's what will happen in 2024, I believe. Um, but this doesn't mean that we should stop pushing. The faster it reaches the bottom, the more of the West we end up saving. Um, and I said that in the live chat earlier. I think you might have missed it. Uh, but how you classify 2023 as the year of indication. Uh, I would say, I predict that 2024 will be the year of independence. Oh, where The lexicon will nice. be spread by itself without our direct control by all these content creators that didn't originate here first. That's what I reckon. Well put. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we'll continue. I get, you know, we'll, we'll continue pushing. But increasingly, as the greats like uh, King Dice, Donald Trump Jr., and, and maybe Donald Trump as a consequence, uh, as they use these concepts, we'll, we'll continue to play a role of kind of like keeping it on track as time goes on uh, more and more. But uh, the, uh, the successes, I think you're right. I mean, we're looking, at a, we're looking at a year, a coming year, where our actual deeds – are going to result in things that are even bigger than 2023 and uh, really change the the game field really change the board for how our victimization is discussed so well said man yeah and it was greatly put how you put it before uh as us being the engine that drives the lexicon wherever it goes we're not going to be a mass movement kind of thing um at least not in the next few years, um, it will take quite a bit for us to reach that stage. Um, 
but yeah, we're definitely going to be that engine and we need to make sure that we are there present on the track at all times um, and we cannot lose focus. Um, that being said also, I wanted to ask your thoughts on an idea I've had uh, bumbling around in my head for a while. Uh, for context, the Dreamtime people here in Australia have their own tribal t-shirts uh, produced by a community initiative called Deadly Choices. I sent you an example photo via a, t a Twitter DM, brother. Okay. These shirts are usually donned with Dreamtime art and Australian animals illustrated using the spotted way uh, they historically mm. drew their art. Um, perhaps Western Kind ought to have our own tribal t-shirts with the beautiful spiral patterns and art uh, that we would uh, find in Scythian and Proto-Indo-European art, for example. That's a it great idea. A design that it's, yeah, it could be a design that fits all of Western kind and can then be improved to resonate with the various hues of us, runic art for folks in Scandinavia, woad-like art for Celtic folks, etc. cetera. Um, it can be a way to help vagues identify with us and our history. And uh, when folks start making IRL friend groups made up of fellow white positive Westmen, it'd be pretty cool to look around and see these Western tribal t-shirts everywhere you turn. So I was wondering what your thoughts on this would be, brother. I like it. I really like it. I mean, I can see looking at the uh, design that you sent from the non-white people there that our own would look really cool, especially uh, for those of us who are in shape and we could have them a little bit more form fitting. That would be awesome. I like it. I'm writing it down. Yeah, absolutely. And, and these shirts would be another source of revenue as well. Uh, if you need another incentive <laughs> as you could sell these uh, on the noah collectible site i can imagine uh said revenue would increase when the various hues of western kind get their cultural specific tribal t-shirts yeah so yeah it seems like a good endeavor in my mind love Just it man it great there. idea love it maybe that'll be a big 2024 thing yeah maybe what i'd say I don't, I don't have the uh, artistic ability with um, like putting pen to paper and Photoshop and all that uh, to make the designs, but I'm definitely, you know, I've got that in my head and I need to put it out there, uh, but I need skilled people um, who want to do this and want to volunteer their time further to make these beautiful works of art that we can all wear in the future and hopefully by 2024. Yeah. Oh yeah. We can make it happen easily during the year um, without question. And first last is with us. Great to see you, brother. And he's he's recommending Stonehenge as some of the, I guess, symbology on such shirts. Yeah, I mean, it could be anything from like animals uh, to, you know, the specific animals of any country like bears and wolves for Scandinavia. Uh, and then you can touch on the, the multiple wildlife kangaroos, goannas that we have here in Australia. Um, and just utilize our art. I, I'm particularly partial to like all the swirls uh, that you'd find in like the proto Indo European art. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love it, man. That's a great idea. But yeah, it's great being in 2024. It goes by so quick. It, it really, it really is. And if somebody else is uh, in the chat, uh, Lundu, you don't have to go um, off the mic. I think we can have a couple on the mic at the same time. If anybody else would like the mic, ask for the mic and uh, then I'll see it. It'll pop up here and I will give you the mic as well. But Lunder, if you got to go, then you can hop off, brother. Oh, I can stay for a few if that's all right. right. Cool, man. That's a great idea coming out of the white well-being community, which will immediately be co-opted and uh, claim to be originated with someone else outside, somewhere in the white sympathetic sphere. We have uh, the wolf, yeah, uh, the wolf I mean, throne. Go ahead. Uh, you mentioned before, um, like with Mark Collette, um, and just like how he he just chose his side, he went his own way. Um, I actually had a back and forth with him on Telegram um, right after the NJP split. I sent him a, a message saying, "So you're going to like apologize? Like, what's the go? I mean, the, the group you allied with is now gone. It's in the dust." And Jason is around and still kicking, even after a small split. So, you know, who's right and who's wrong? And he doubled down and said, no, the NJP was the right thing to do and the right people to ally with. <sighs> it's just insane. Yeah. What can you do? I mean, it's his. <clears throat> it's like I was, you know, mentioning tonight with our, our conclusion 
about uh, the the test, the seven year test, if you will, that the content creators and I again I I I don't blame them for uh, this specifically, uh, and that is that making decisions that are going to maintain or increase their audience. And uh, as as you all can see, I don't make that those decisions uh, here. As you all can see, I I take very hard positions for the benefit. Like the things that I take, the positions I take are not just contrarian positions. Uh, to be contrarian, they are positions that we end up being right. So you have to think back and you have to think, wow, Jason took those positions that seemed so destructive and and looked like they were going to ruin us. But in, in reality, he was caring for us. He took all of that shit, the shit storm, because he wanted us to be right. He could have just said what the uh, audience the, the largest part of the audience, uh, the most active or rabid part of the audience wanted to hear and led us in the wrong way. But instead, he took that shit storm on so that we would be right. Now, I'm not perfect. I do plenty wrong. So don't mix up. But when I do right, I'm, I'm not going to uh, be ashamed to say it. I know there's some some of our white ethnicities are like, oh, oh, you should not do it. No, no, no. I stood up and nobody, you, you know, the, 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 the larger sphere is not going to mention it. The larger sphere is not going to be saying, you know what? That no white guilt guy, he really took a lot of shit and he ended up being right. So why did he bother to take on all that shit? Why did he not just go with the flow, which was going to, you know, net him the most followers and the most uh, money and the most fame and the most praise. Why didn't he just go that direction? He must actually care about the people. No, they didn't do that. They do the opposite. They're like, he's clearly a Jew. <laughs> That's everything. And talk about like the, the, this is another thing. I feel just so y'all know, and, and folks, if you want to reach out on Skype, you want to reach out on uh, the Twitter space, let me know. We'll have you on. But I have always felt sympathy for intellectually, not challenged, but like people who just aren't getting it, right? I've always felt sympathy because when you think about this, and I don't want to make it seem like it's really condescending. I guess it is kind of condescending, but it's not intending to be. But think about when you see a child or an animal making a decision that you know is is not right, is bad for them. It's maybe especially, yeah, like a very young child or an animal because you can't really communicate to them. You can't say, let me explain this to you because they can't get it, right? The animal, the very young child is not going to be able to understand. So when I see these people and, and over the years and every answer is the Jews, you gotta just say the Jews, it's the Jews. When I see them, there's a, yes, there's a big part of me that's like irritated, but there's also a part that of me that says that's really all they can get. Like they can't understand it in a deeper way. It's the most like superficial argument, the most superficial understanding of what's really going on in the world, of what's destroying Western civilization. As a consequence, since society human dy dynamism is immensely complex. It is not anywhere remotely close to an answer that will benefit them. In fact, uh, as we see with Ye's law, proven right enormously again, and, and Ye is, I played the bumper there, coming out in Hebrew and apologizing, deleting all his Instagram comments, making a bitch out of every single person who argued against me nastily. Um, he made a bitch of all of them. I didn't even have to do it. You know, when they came up and they're like, it's this, it's just all they can do. It's all, it's all they can understand. You've got to make it, they've got to have it as simple as it's a bee's nest and you just get rid of the bee's nest because that's it. So there's a part of me that feels sympathy for them and their inability to understand, but they quickly burn through my sympathy when they're like, what? He doesn't want to just, just blame all Jewish people for it and say that the world would be perfect without them. Clearly, he's a fed. Clearly, hey, I heard he rapes iguanas. Is that true? He's an iguana raper. 
<laughs> Lunder, you still there? Lunder's like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, he's an I iguana mean, raper. I've been, called, yeah, I've been called a Jew as well. It's like me, like with the last name Lunder, I mean, it's among the whitest names you can get, Old Norse origin. And they'll still find a way to call me a Jew to the point where it's become an adjective and even an adverb in itself. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lucky is, is he's Jewish. He's going to be like a Jew. He acts like a Jew. So like everything that's wrong with the world, it's Jews. That's yeah. what they say. And it's, it's insane. And I can see how people like that are going to end up in prison later on. It's just they're going to restrict the, the anti-Jewish laws to the point where it becomes, un, you know, they're unable to speak their mind, um, but we will be able to. And, you know, I saw, uh, was it the, the wolf throne in the chat was asking if there was uh, any white positive Jews. Um, I've come across one in my travels, at least on Twitter. Uh, I'm not sure if they're um, a constant viewer of uh, No I Guilt. Um, I haven't seen them lately in the live chat, but no doubt there's a few wallflowers that are uh, of Jewish ethnicity and they're white positive as well. And we welcome them. Uh, precisely so, yeah, and what, we have no problem with the yeah yeah precisely what's really important there and sometimes and i'm not saying wolfram was doing this but i've i've just had to deal with it for so many years that they'll say they'll make the argument of how many jews are going to side with you as though if the answer isn't significant then uh the right thing to do is to condemn them all to hell uh no that's not right at all because it's about who we are are we white positive? Or are we white negative? Our brothers and sisters out there in their hundreds of millions are only going to be able to adopt a mindset, a view, a lens, concepts that are white positive. So it doesn't matter how many or how few Jews decide to uh, stand for white well-being. The one guy in the community many years back, I've talked about him before, uh, he was... Jewish guy, and he he's opposed to everything that's happening to the country. But they'll say, oh, well, that's one guy. Yes. And the fact that he is welcome is the thing that turns the key for all the white people out there, and including us who are here. Because a, an environment where you're going to condemn somebody because of the way they were born is a, an ugly environment that is not going to persist in good people for long. They leave. Good people leave those environments and ugly people populate them. I've watched groups that have that have been, and we talked about this before. I mean, it looks, we got another request here and I'll give them, uh, hand the mic over there as well. Um, but I've seen groups that said nothing about Jews at all. Nothing. In fact, there's one, a Southern one. I'm not going to mention it. Nobody mention it. If you figure it out or guess, there's a Southern one, uh, pro-Southern, uh, that means pro uh, the white people of the South, not just not like Son of Confederate veterans stuff that are celeb measuring themselves by anti-white metrics, but totally focused on white Southerners. And at the founding, they had I think there were uh, at least one Jewish person that was endorsing the creation of the organization, maybe two. And in fact, their like proclamation that they wrote up had uh, some stars of David on it, probably because the Jewish person asked for them to be there. Anyhow, the only reason why I mention that is because they had no problem with Jews at all. Over time, just as happens all the time in the white sympathetic sphere, is you slowly get this pressure and these litmus tests to say everything is the fault of the Jews. And if you don't go along with that, then you're slandered as everything under the sun. Your character is assassinated. Your reputation is assassinated. Then people stop participating in the organization. And if you go with the flow, if you let them in, the conversation becomes about Jews. The whole group becomes about hating Jews. Being pro-Southern completely evaporates in the sun. And suddenly... You find yourself at the end of a dwindling uh, membership and, more importantly, a membership that is losing the best white people. They're leaving. They don't want to be a part of it. And then you end up at the end of a lawsuit and you're sued into oblivion. So this happens again and again and again. 
So it doesn't matter how many or how few Jews decide that they're going to stand with us against anti-whiteism. I don't care. If, if one, if none came, I, I would still be against condemning someone on the basis of their birth, including Jewish people. But having said that, I am firmly against anti-white Jews, no less so than anti-white blacks or anti-white white people. Let me pass the mic over and uh, we'll see who, let's see, who is this that's asking? It is Alabama, the Bama Hammer. So I don't know who is, who's the Alabama Hammer? We'll see. Lunder can stay with us and uh, the Alabama Hammer is on. If you unmute yourself. Uh, says he's just listening now. If you unmute yourself, you should be able to talk. No? Or was it just a message? Did anybody ask for the mic that that uh, did not get it? The only messages I see are from Matthew. Um but yeah, the X, uh, the, yeah, X bases are a little bit behind. That's why uh, every time I call in, I'm a little bit, it takes a bit for me to start talking. Oh, thank you for that. That's nah, good information. We didn't know. So we're a little bit ahead with uh, YouTube and a little bit behind with the calling on X space. So we'll keep that in mind moving forward. So if you want to ask for the mic, go ahead and ask. And uh, we will give you the mic. You want to agree, disagree. You want to share a story, 2024, the Wolf Throne is here. You want to praise Lucky, join in. You want to praise uh, Lucky, join in in the praise of this champion down. I got to say, in all honesty, I, there, are, there are content creators, one in particular, I won't say his name, that uh, he may have already been said tonight, and it's not woes, uh, but that will praise Australians, but really doesn't give a flying shit about them. But our actual experience is that uh, the Aussies are, some of the Aussies are some of the best uh, white positive activists and people. It's just, I mean, you look at so many of the folks from Australia who have come through. We are, folks, we're one people. I mean, let's accept it. Australia is my country too. America is London's country too. This is what we create. Oh, we got a request. And it is the Alabama hammer again. We love the state of Alabama. And he should have the microphone. Now, if you unmute yourself, you'll be able to talk. There you go. Hey, Jason, can you hear me, brother? I can, man. The microphone is yours. Oh, yes. Love Alabama. So whatever whatever else, uh, Alabama is fantastic. <laughs> no, my dude, it's nice to uh, have found you. Uh, I was in California for a long, long time and uh, was around a lot of the TRS crew and never, never got involved like with the uh, – NJP stuff, but it's just been a pleasure to uh, find this community a hell of a lot more positive and uh, just want to for everything you're doing. It's, it's definitely been a place I've, I've not met IRL people in this space, but it's it's a, it's a healthy space, man. So I wanted to thank you for it. Well, I really appreciate that, brother. That's really, a, I really do. And if you're ever up in Virginia and uh, you want to meet somebody IRL, I will uh, meet up with you. Maybe I'll bring the great Franklinator along, but uh, there are a lot of people that are good people that are in like the TRS community. I've met a bunch, good folk. I went down to South Carolina, I met a bunch down there, good folk. And uh, um, I like them. It's easy to get wound up into an idea like NJP or uh, you you see these things, you hear these arguments made that this, is, this has worked before, it'll work again or some kind of a thing. Uh, so I understand that there are a lot of good people. I'm not I'm not slandering those good folks ever. Uh, I, I have a problem with leading good people 
into destruction, self-destruction. And every time it's self-destruction. I mean, Ye's law is real, my brother. Ye's law. I, I coined that right after he did this. I, and I told everybody, and all those streams are still up and people can go back. I said exactly what was going to happen. That's exactly what happened. He he lost the vast majority of uh, what two almost three billion dollars. Now he's down well under uh, five hundred million and and falling. And here he is screaming, yelping uh, like. And he abandoned everybody, just like I said. I talked about the temper tantrum that he was having with regard to his soon-to-be ex-wife, and that that date was coming up, and he was. It was finally going to be final. And you remember he was saying things like he still loves her and he would still take her back. And that was all the evidence that this guy was throwing a tantrum. And uh, then it was over. He disappeared. He abandoned everybody, got this new wife and uh, has another crazy out. Uh, 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 I, I came apart, I guess. I don't know exactly how to articulate what happened to him that that evening, uh, but he came apart. And uh, and then here he is, deletes all the posts, and he's crawling back. Please don't destroy. And this is the other thing, Alabama, uh, is that people look at the Jewish community coming together. And it's again, it's a, so I can be very clear for everybody with their ear at the door and everywhere else, that this is a, a percentage of the Jewish, overall Jewish population achieves individual well-being by way of group well-being. That behavior is dazzling. That behavior is wonderful. That behavior is magnificent. That behavior we have to have for ourselves, that behavior we would love. We would love it. Like if somebody does Alabama wrong, and then I have the ability to sweep in and, and correct it, not even knowing Alabama, that's the kind of people we have to be, right? So we have to be careful when we criticize a group of people what are we criticizing them for? Because if we criticize them for doing something that we need to be doing, then we are preventing ourselves from ever acting that way, uh, which is something we definitely need to do. So the anti-whiteism, 100%. No accepting it. And if we didn't allow it, it wouldn't be present. I mean, let's, we're, we're men of the West. You're not called like the Alabama hammer because you're a pushover. We're men of the West. And so if we say there won't be anti-whiteism, there won't be anti-whiteism. Anti this is what we have to communicate. And, uh, and at the same time, like I say, not condemn working together. So when they all came together to destroy Kanye West, or not them all, but the ones that came together to destroy Kanye West, when that happened, I saw it and thought, man, I wish my people could do that. Others were seeing that and saying, you see, it's the Jews. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> what is that? But yeah, uh, yeah, man. No, I mean, <laughs> go ahead. No, I had positive Jewish influences, like in Los Angeles. Uh, I mean, I came, I came at this whole thing from kind of just a laissez-faire, uh, old school liberal vibe, if you will, like healthy eating, bro. And you know, it was in LA and all this kind of stuff. Right. And it's like the heart, from my understanding, the genesis of a lot of the. Well, I don't know if you could call it white positive sphere, but there's a lot that was going on in Southern California. This was several years ago. And I just, you know, didn't know about this and, and then found it. And listen, definitely met some good people. But I just found that within the circles of which you spoke, you know, the, the TRS stuff, if you will, as a whole, it's a lot darker versus building things, building things up, positivity, beauty, um, creativity. Uh, collectivizing in a way that builds, it builds a community, collaborating about business, you know, connecting on, you know, nights like this when everybody may be out partying versus going, you know, well, for all the libations and so forth, doing something, you know, drug free, alcohol free. And it was a lot of it felt like just kind of a, a drinking club, so, right. uh, which is, you know, it's, that, that's, that's fine. But, uh, yeah, it, it, that's not what I was looking for, you know? <laughs> right. So, and the interesting thing is, though, being displaced from Alabama for many years being out there, though, you come here, and it does feel kind of like people are slower to be waking up. There's been so much white guilt down here. Yeah. There's so much worship of valorizing college football and putting your identity in that. And, yeah. And, um, and yeah, and it, 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 and the churches are, you know, they, they leave a lot to be desired. I'm trying to be patient, but it's it's kind of 
it's interesting. <laughs> well, so no, I mean, you're speaking the truth. I really appreciate, and I'm looking forward to you participating more. It's fantastic. The positivity, you're absolutely right. That's the thing that's constructive. And right. you're absolutely right when it comes to, I mean, it comes to our personal health. It comes to, and it's sort of like a, a spoken, but not really believed already in the white sympathetic sphere or not really applied uh, idea that our bodies, our, our, our bio spirit are our temple. And we shouldn't be sullying these things. We should, these are beautiful things. We are beautiful people. We've accomplished glorious things and we can accomplish glorious things. We can, we can pull our collective titty out of the ringer. Uh, but we're going to have to be productive to do that. We can't sit around and complain. We have to take ownership and responsibility. So, yeah, and eating right rather than going out and getting drunk and uh, partying and whatever else is going on. There are a lot of good people out there that we want to redeem. And now I'm going to just sit back more. You know what I mean? I'm going to sit back more and I'm going to say, hey, here we are. If if you want to participate with something positive, you want to have the objective, be improving yourself and ending our victimization we're here for you man we're here for you we want to help you do that and if you want to uh secure the 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 reasons for your scapegoat or the whatever else it might be then you're going to be happier someplace else and i guess that's just the way 2024 is going to have to be but like the kind of things that you're saying that is the exact mindset that we hope and have been and we hope to continue to attract so I really appreciate that, man. You got it, brother. I'll get out of here. So I'll let someone else speak. But happy 2024. And I uh, look forward to getting to know the community better and better. So uh, cheers. Thank cheers. you so much. Cheers, man. Promethean Hales, Alabama Hammer, folks. Bye-bye, brother. Cheers, Alabama. Peace. Thanks, man. All right. Well, we have. And if anybody else would like to talk, let me know. I got I got the glorious uh, Lucky Lunda, the thunder from down under. If you can feel the vibrations uh, on uh, the phone with us in the Twitter space, I'm going to take a quick look at any financial gifts we might have here at the beginning of 2024. We are almost an hour on the East Coast into it. Of course, the thunder from down under is a day into it, uh, so he's ahead. We have on Entropy the Wolf Throne. Financially gifting three dollars. God bless you, brother. That's a great name. That is such a cool name. The Wolf Throne. He says, Eternal Hails. I love that. Uh, question for you. I know you say racism is an anti-white slur, but do you think anti-whiteism is also an anti-white slur? Or is it just as is it just as valid a term? Oh, wait, maybe I missed. Oh, anti-Semitism. I'm sorry. So he says, but do you think anti-Semitism is a, see, this is what happens when thunder, when your, uh, when your vision gets a little blurry, you just start like reading words that you think are there. <laughs> and so you're like, I, I'm pretty no, sure it's I, I, I have this problem. Why was it good? Good, man. Good. Well, hold on to that. Cause I went from 2015 to something less. I had that for so long. I got spoiled. But okay, so he says, do you think anti-Semitism is an anti-white slur? Or is it just a as valid a term as anti-whiteism? Thanks. Great question. Anti-Semitism is definitely not, well, it depends on who's saying it, right? And who and, and who's being called an anti-Semite. Is it possible, I guess is the question, that somebody could be uh, just an enemy. They make themselves an enemy of Jewish people. And the question is undoubtedly yes. We see a lot of po people out there in the world that make themselves enemies of Jewish people. So is it is it possible that anti-Semitism anti ex exists without it being an anti-white slur? Well, have, you know, have you looked on the internet? Have you, have you looked at Gab? Have you looked at the people who get kicked off of Twitter? Having said that, our experience, the average white person, the the average black person, like I know there's a black conservative right now, content creator, big, gigantic channel, uh, really nice guy, who's being called anti-Semitic because he doesn't like the war in Israel. In that case, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic is being used 
as a slur. Uh, for us, where it matters is how does it intersect with our well-being? That's how we need to look at everything in the world. How does it intersect with our well-being? Are we called an anti-Semite and anti-Semitism? And if you look in uh, Wolf Throne and Go Free, I believe I articulate it in uh, the current edition, that where we intersect it the 100 the percent of the time, because we here don't have the irrational hatred of all Jewish people, where we intersect with it is always an anti-white slur, just like racist, just like bigot. We are not all of those things that they are attempting to convey to our brothers and sisters. Now, remember, this is why this community has to be smarter. What is being conveyed to our brothers and sisters? Why is what's the target there? Our brothers and sisters. What is being conveyed to them? What's being conveyed to them is all of the things that they've learned in entertainment media about uh, the victims or the targets of anti-whiteism. So that's the purpose of it. So it's in those cases, it's going to be applied by an anti-white Jew, not like your average Jewish guy who doesn't hate white people, who doesn't want to burn down Western civilization. He's not going to say that about us. And that's going to be one of the ways we know uh, who is anti-white and who's not. He's not going to say that about us for advancing white well-being. So when somebody says, oh, they serve white well-being, they want white people to not be victimized, they're anti-Semitic. Or here we say, for example, uh, there is a uh, contention, a disagreement about what should be done in, say, Florida when it comes to, or any of the other states, when it comes to uh, laws being put in place to uh, prohibit and make illegal, criminalize uh, criticism of Zionism or something like this. That's clearly anti-white because it's harming us in our countries. It's changing our environment. It's changing what we project into the world. What we want is the ability of people to be able to share their minds, to share their thoughts. So white erasing uh, these and putting muzzles on and restraints is clearly anti-whiteism. And so therefore it's an anti-white slur. And you say here, is it valid? Is it as valid as anti-whiteism is? As I just said, thank you for the question. It's a great question. It's the kind of thing that we need to talk about, I think, to clear things up uh, for folks as best as we can. It is valid when a Jewish person who is not acting anti-white, not, not behaving in that instance, because we don't know if in the rest of their life or in other situations, they're normally anti-white or what have you. Uh, in those cases, those people are identifying irrational hatred of Jews and blaming of all Jews for all harms and all woes. It's legitimate then. But when is that actually going to happen for us here? Like, when are we actually going to interact with that? Almost never. And for us, almost in every case where we meet, where there's an intersection between that word or those words and us, it's an anti-white slur. So it's obviously a far more complicated thing. We're talking about, like, you could even have a, a Jewish person who is anti-white, but using anti-Semitic or anti-Semitism in a legitimate way about behavior on the internet or elsewhere, Kanye West or what have you. That's also possible. So we're clearly going to end up with people who have a, a higher IQ. IQ is processing power, not, uh, not necessarily uh, a greater and greater long-term memory or what have you. It's the ability to hold many points at the same time in one's mind and to be able to see how they work together. The lower the IQ, the fewer points you can see in your mind and therefore the fewer things you can see of how they work together. That's why people who use this, it's the Jews, it's the Jews. You can see that they are limited. Now their content creators are usually not as limited intellectually, IQ wise. They just are appealing to these people. They're telling them what they want to hear because of all of the benefits of doing so, the money, the fame, the sex, the celebration of your intelligence, on and on, right? So that's a great question. Thank you for that. Let me, that was a long answer. I'm sorry. That's a tough, that's like a, 
uh, mini layer. looks like we have another request for our mic and I will pass it over. I'm just making sure that we haven't missed anybody. Geez, nothing over there at Odyssey. I hope they haven't cut me off uh, and are not letting people financially gift. If you have tried to financially gift on Odyssey, even 0.001 of a library token, it won't let you. Let me know. Please write over there in the Odyssey chat. And I uh, wouldn't be surprised. But we got great things. We got great things in 2024. I want to tell you right now. Uh, I submitted just days ago the audio book of It's a Comedy, Damn It. And when this is gone through the process and I have to juggle or deal with the people behind the scenes, we'll see what happens. It'll be available. This is going to be, and it's going to be uh, cheap. I don't get to decide the price, but I know it'll be under $7. This, this will be a book that will be great. It's full of laughs for regular conservative people. And that'll be a way for them to come to know who Jason Kuna is, who's Jason Kuna, and therefore this community. So this coming year, I'm we're going to be promoting it in a big way as soon as it's available to conservative-minded people. And that can be something that we can all work together to bring people over. As you all may know, once it's going to be under $7, you know, who knows? They could make it $2. They can make it, I don't know. Uh, they get to set the price. That's part of the contract. Having said that, after they Amazon, iTunes, and what is the other one, Audible, take their cut out of it, there's almost nothing left. And then the nothing that's left, I have to pay taxes on. So there's no money. There's no money. I, there's no money. Uh, this is, if I want to do money, I would do politics. And I would get people fired up about politics and, and donating huge sums, thinking that they're going to make some political change. This is about getting to conservative content create or conservative population the people who listen to the content creators so that they can be introduced to us in a way that is uh, is not going to, hold on one second, in a way that's not going to challenge them immediately because you know, they're gonna be really concerned. They've been taught about how we have horns and I use a lot of gel, uh, but they're still gonna be looking for them. So it looks like uh, we're blank over there. Hello to anybody over there on, looks like we have FY, L, is that what that is? Happy New Year. Uh, the word anti-white has literally been co-opted by every everyone I know. Whoa. Do you hear that, Lunder? This guy's saying over there on Rumble that anti-white has been co-opted by everybody he knows. Uh, it is Damn. One, of the sh one of the sharpest tools we have in the uh, tricky minefield that is the go free narrative best wishes 2024 and thank you nwg well thank you so much for sharing that and best wishes to you looks like uh f y l and then maybe that's a d and a y and an s i'm i think says that he is in uh he says new year's resolution is to fight harder for the well-being of anyone who cares about the obvious assault on our norms and values. And that it's 5 a.m. there in West Yorkshire, UK, a beautiful place, a beautiful place, I'm sure, populated by our people. You know, it's wonderful. Thank you so much over there on uh, Rumble and Blank on D Live. Let me swivel around here real quick, and then we'll see about that other mic. And we have... Refresh. We also have in the live chat, the nameless one has said, uh, I was saying I demonstrably live in my car and a Jewish lady has really, really helped me in recent nights, fed me, invited me in her home to eat and shower. Uh, and then he says, I guess that was the guy, but he's saying his, her wife, her wife was cool. He said that he told them that He's got their back. All right. There you have it. Uh, and uh, did I miss anybody else? Uh, it looks like Melissa saying something superficially of thinking is related. Superficiality of thinking, she says, is related to selfish individualism. I guess that is the lowering of IQ and so on. Yeah. If you want to and adopt, and there are various reasons like we were talking about tonight, people want to adopt positions 
and it's not always because um, they're awful people, but you have folks who have grown up in the anti-white narrative. It has ruined them and they would rather have a scapegoat or they would rather have some, rather than take responsibility, they would rather have, uh, they would rather have their, their prejudices confirmed. Like it's a good thing that I hate everybody born that way or whatever. Now, remember folks, what I've said before, and I'm going to pass the mic over. What I've said before is this. I don't ignore racial realities. I knew and studied racial realities before uh, some of you were born. Uh, so I am not going to live in a place, for example, that is going to be dangerous for me because the population is wont to more violence. I'm not going to advise people to live in a place that's dangerous for them uh, because the, maybe it's a religion that is violent. At the same time, I'm not going to condemn people who, because of their genetic disposition to uh, violence or otherwise, I'm not going to condemn them for the way they were born. That's the way they are. I just have to protect myself from them. I just have to say, hey, maybe you're going to uh, behave this way. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're going to be like this uh, black a content producer that I know that's a really nice guy. Or maybe you're going to be like Dr. Swain. Maybe that is who you are. I'm not going to condemn you as an individual because that's who I am, because that's who I want to be. Uh, and my problem, and it, it, it totally simplifies things. My problem is with anti-whites. It makes, this is something we can actually do. We can shut down anti-whites. We can put an end to anti-whiteism. You're not putting any end to any group of people. So... I'm not making that case to the folks who want to do that or whatever. I mean, you can, this is just not the place for you. That's all. Let me pass the mic over. And uh, let's see. We have GFWWB. And you should have the microphone. Just unmute yourself. And then uh, we'll see what you have to say. Hey, are you able to hear me? Yeah, brother. Good to hear from you. Mike is yours. Yeah, this yeah, this is slots. So the great <laughs> I, to, oh. I know the great slots anywhere. Awesome, brother. <laughs> great to hear from you. Thank you so much for so, your magnificent service, by the way. Oh, thank you for the appreciation. Um so earlier today, uh the stream, I had tagged you uh saying one of the reasons uh I had said we should be cutting it off with the negative uh, negativity sphere is I was also having fear that we're empowering the wrong people. And I just wanted to mention that because I think you skipped over it. So, um, but there's two other things. Yeah. There's two other things I wanted to bring up here. Um, I have a MP that conservatives typically uh, use, which is, denying that white people are the target. Mm -hmm. So um, when it comes to that, uh, I came up with an MC okay. for it. Um, it could be, you know, just an additive one to help you out or someone out. So okay. the substance of the targets in a rebellion toward a hallucinatory villain will always be the innocent who are not grouped in with the victims. Right. So that's the MC just for, you know, your own internal thought process. So you're not morally questioning, you know, some people are really deep in the anti-white narrative and they need that kind of basic MC. Uh, that's even though it's long, um, just knowing that these, this basic logic and having it uh, outlined is a help for them. But one of the dangers of using that MC if you're, if you're using it publicly, uh, anti-whites can try to turn this on its head by saying our victimization is hallucinatory. So I would suggest only using it among conservatives mm -hmm. uh, because they're not going to do that typically. So um, well second thing uh, is the Israeli and Gaza conflict. Um, the Michael Moore comment reminded me of my take on it a month ago. Um, and I just wanted to kind of give my take on it, um, because his comment is a demonstration of what I assessed about it. Uh, the, the fact is anti-whiteism is the primary obstacle 
to peace in the Middle East. Instead of talking into the substance of their problems, every side tries to accuse the other of being more heretical to anti-whiteism than they are. Yeah. This only creates more suffering and nothing in result. So anti-whiteism is killing them. Nice. Yeah. And that's the way that crafting our perception from the perspective of our well-being can benefit us. Brilliantly said the great sloths. And he has, we have years now of the great sloths uh, sharing uh, great insight. And another hero who came out of circles that were not good and were leading him in, in some very unhealthy ways. But he clearly had the intelligence and the courage uh, when he came across white well-being and go free that, hey, his real objective in his heart is to end our victimization. And so this was the way to go. He left a lot of uh, people he knew uh, behind, but you unmuted, brother, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say that's true. I didn't want you to speak for me the oh. whole time. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank, yeah, it's magnificent. Uh, you don't have to jump off. I don't know how many people we can have on uh, the mic at the same time, but if you got to go, you can uh, drop the mic if you want. But if anybody else would like to talk, let me know. Or did you have anything else that you wanted to add just at the moment, brother? No, I just wanted to bring that up. But if something comes up, I can unmute. Cool. Well, that's the beauty of the Twitter space. And uh, I don't know, maybe if y'all can, is it possible to share the Twitter space on your Twitter platform to encourage anybody else to uh, come over? Maybe we can get some uh, some other folks who are home, you know, okay, great. Uh, Wing of Productions. Thank you so much, champ. Financially gifted 0.1 of a library token. And it worked. He said, uh, see what we've got. It worked. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. I thought we were going to go into 2024 with uh, having to f battle it out with Odyssey, which wouldn't be a surprise to me. These alternative platforms are not our friends. Uh, they are the, uh, the fiefdoms of the people who own them. And uh, they will encourage and discourage on their platforms whatever they favor or, or do not favor. That might be in part to allow content creators uh, that are popular that they don't necessarily agree with so that the impression is that they allow free speech. But people like us, there isn't a big enough audience uh, for them to, to concern themselves. It's the same way. It's just content creators. Uh, these are uh, content venues who have owners. And it's just like a venue for musicians or bands and what have you, uh, and to maintain their credibility with their audience. So I don't blame them uh, for, for doing that. It's just a reality that we have to deal with. They were never on our team. I never thought they were on our team. So it's not, a, uh, it's not somebody or, or a group of people that I give up. It's just a reality. We're not, and if we get, if the audience bigger and they like what we have to say, then maybe we'll be pushed in these places, but otherwise, no. Or if the audience gets bigger, we, they don't like what we say, but they want to keep up the impression of freedom of speech, of ideas, then maybe we'll be able to grow in those environments. Otherwise, uh, there is no growth on these environments. We've investigated, we've tested, we've tried. It just doesn't, it, you, have to, uh, you have to be pushed. It's not like the old YouTube uh, with the algorithms. Everybody still thinks it's the old algorithms. You're going to be given what you're interested in. No, um, you're going to be given what the owners of the platform are interested in. It's like, are you given what, uh, what you in particular like at the local music festival? Well, if you like the music they're playing, then maybe you think you are. But if you don't, if you want a different music and there aren't many of you, then uh, they're not going to set aside a corner of the venue for you and those who like that particular music. They're just going to continue to push what they want to push, what will bring them uh, dollars to a degree. Because remember, ideology always comes faith, uh, immorality slash ethics. That always comes before money. How many companies do we have to watch? Like Victoria's Secret, run the company into the red before finally saying, okay, we'll pull back a little bit on the anti-whiteism for now. Target the same thing. We'll pull back a little bit on the anti-whiteism for now. And then you have the conservative masses uh, begin to cheer. They think they've had some sort of uh, victory over the, like Bud Light. You remember we were right about Bud Light uh, and they weren't destroyed. Uh, Budweiser didn't crumble. They didn't get rid of the brand. 
Uh, and uh, money is not money and the pursuit of money in the, an this anti-white world is not the most important thing for the anti-whites. Victoria's Secret will remain anti-white and they will continue to push right at the edge. Next chance they get, they'll be right back to it. And if there isn't, if people like us don't intercede with our concepts, then they'll have a population that is more docile before anti-whitism, which means they'll be able to go even further with the next uh, anti-white uh, action, activity, pursuit, policy, uh, decision for the clothing. I mean, who knows what they'll be dressing up next in lingerie, something that, I mean, they were already inducing vomiting with uh, with some of the folks that they were dressing up. Reynold White Wolf in the live chat says, I initially sided with Mark, and this would be, he's talking about the divorce uh, that uh, we had. He says, I initially sided with Mark because I thought your last rant before the split was extreme about people talking about the JQ. But since the split, Mark has gone off the deep end Jay Spurging. Brother, I got to tell you, Renna White Wolf, God bless this guy right now. God bless him. He's not alone. I've had people reach out to me and there are more that are reaching out. It, it seems like may, maybe this year, well, 2024, we'll see uh, a bigger increase that have actually come back and said the Jay Spurging has gone insane, which of course it would have to. I mean, you you took in uh, Tits Minadeo and NJP and you began worshiping and celebrating Kanye West. Uh, of course it would, it would have to. And uh, Kanye's activity, of course, NJP as well, but really what the nail in the relationship was, was when Kanye showed up and uh, began saying what he was saying, Jay Spurging, and then Tits Minadeo and his clan, which by the way, his group of people have now even been denounced by, oh God, what's this guy's name? I mean, the guy is normally, he, go, he, he, he goes on some platform where he like shocks, or at least a bunch of his videos that I've seen, or the only videos, I haven't seen a bunch where he goes on and he like shocks young non-white people by using an anti-white slur or Jay Spurging or something. God, what is this guy's name? Might come back to me. Even that guy denounced Tits Minadeo and that whole group as uh, non-white and drug addicts. And so, but they came in. That's what Mark- Mar Martinez. Martinez, that's it. Yep, thanks. That's that's the guy exactly. He, he I just saw a comment by that guy uh, saying that about Tits Minadeo and that crew. So, and of course, uh, Tits, we can shorten it for him. Uh, we, there was no law we said that against distributing leaflets. He started with that, uh, going to synagogues and all of this kind of stuff and saying the things they were saying and distributing the leaflets that they were saying, which by the way, one thing I thought was very strange. When he came on with Mark, uh, and Mark asked him about positions. Uh, maybe it wasn't the first time, maybe it was, I don't know, but I just saw this piece of it that I was shared with me where Mark asked him some very basic questions about, you know, quote, the Jews, and he couldn't answer them. He had to take out one of the leaflets to read about the Jews. So, I mean, what's going on there really? But uh, he started doing that, we said, as a consequence of what he's doing, a law will, will get passed. They're gonna they're gonna write a bill, and it's going to restrict freedom of speech there in Florida. As a consequence of what they're doing, I was attacked incessantly because of it. Then an anti-white Jew in Florida writes the exact bill, and they vote on it, and it goes to the governor there, and they pass this into law exactly as we were saying on stream after stream exactly as we said and then these people attacked me saying oh they were going to do that anyhow they were going to put that law in place anyhow no they weren't now is how is the law potentially dangerous for people who support white well-being well as you can see with prosecutors across the country and indeed around the entire west around the world where they can dilate the law literally write law relative to something that's already on the books to ensnare white people. If they're anti-white, they do it. 
So now we get a law that's even closer to just saying, hey, don't victimize us. And it's a consequence of Tits Menadeo and his and his group, which Mark embraced. And he said, apparently he told uh, the great Lunder here that he did the right thing by doing that. But thank you, Reynold White Wolf. Um, as I said, you know, back then that um, I've, ne I've always been against anti-white Jews. So what was the disagreement? It was that I wouldn't condemn Jews who weren't anti-white. Really, is that where you're going to draw the line? And that's where they decided to do. But we got another request here. So let me see about passing that over. Oh, looks like somebody has to drop off on the mic for me to be able to let the next speaker. Oh, no, maybe not. No, no, maybe not. I just wanted to mention two months ago, Odyssey actually had to auction off all its assets. So there's a possibility an anti-white bought it out. I didn't know that, brother. Thank you for mentioning that. Let me, I'll bring, it uh, looks like um, Alabama Hammer wants to come back. Let me bring Jews genociding uh, Gentiles. I will allow, uh, I'll bring Alabama back too, but first we're going to give the mic to Jews first. Uh, can you hear me? Unmute yourself. And uh, can you you, hear me? yes, I can. Go ahead. Brilliant. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to give you credit for, um, for kind of, you know, redirecting attention away from being excessive on the Jews to focusing on uh, you know the white the problem that white uh, basically white anti-whiteism is you know arguably as big a problem as as non-white anti-whiteism right yes right well, well said yeah so so much much credit to you on that and um well, thank and, you. and that's just a, yeah thank you i appreciate that man Thank you. Sorry, I was I was just walking. I was, I apologize for being out of breath. But no, um, no worries, no worries. Okay, quick. So so question on the on the topic though, um, kind of trying to reconcile the the deal. Um, it goes to leadership, and so you know. So on one hand, you might say, well, you know, don't talk about the Jews. On the other hand, you might say, well, just talk about the Jews. The the politics. The question I have has to do with leadership. So, if you identify a part, you know, um, a particular group as playing a leading role in non-white anti-whiteism, does it not make sense to basically raise awareness of that? Well, the question is, what are you? Let's just say, for argument's sake, that uh, anti-white Jews play the biggest role or the leading role in anti-whiteism. I don't believe that's the case. Uh, anti-white, just as an aside, but I, I'll get to your question. Anti-white, white people are far more numerous. They are, they're not as conspicuous in their anti-whiteism, but the reason why white anti-whites are more problematic is because they capitulate, they participate, they're, uh, they're anti-whites too. It's like what I was talking about earlier when it came to the Tucker communities, these micro-socialistic communities that live off of the working white guys and women like us, they are uh, ipso facto anti-white. They wouldn't be living off of us. They wouldn't set up these communities to benefit themselves at our expense if they weren't. And so as a consequence of their anti-whiteism, other anti-white groups, other leaders of other anti-white groups uh, are able to uh, participate in our societies and harm us while working with these white anti-white groups. But let's say for argument's sake that uh, anti-white Jews play the leading role. Well, what, is, what does it really mean to play the leading role? But maybe I'll just go to the personal first. When it when it comes to 
anti-white Jews playing a leading role, what can you and the people you talk to do about it? And the answer is nothing. No. Right? You, can tell, you can tell people about it, right? And some of those people are going to care. Some of those people are not going to care. It's a, it's a thing that is condemned as morally reprehensible. The audience you're reaching are going to conclude a lot of awful things about you. Uh, and as a consequence, you're going to harm yourself. So the question is, yeah. do you have something that do you have a belief? Do you have a position that you can do something with as wherever you are in the world with your contacts, with your money, with your job, with your family? Do you have a tool that you can do something with? And the only thing that can be done with this tool of focusing on another race of man as the problem is harm yourself. We can look to the history of people who decide that they're going to tell the world and uh, all the way back to uh, Henry Ford, who had far more money uh, than net worth than Kanye West. He had a totally white population and he ended up apologizing and being harmed by what? Was it Jewish anti-whiteism or was it Jewish people doing something, some Jewish people doing something that is absolutely wonderful. And that is coming together <clears throat> for their individual well-being by way of their group well-being. And that's what happens when you condemn a group of people. And when you take a group of people like Jewish people who do that spectacularly, right? I mean, they will show up at a university and uh, not know any of the Jewish people at the university, not have any children there, but they will, some Jewish people will show up and say, not going to have a president that has negative opinions about Jews. The, the Jewish kids are never going to know about that. That doesn't, that's an act that is not anti-white. That's an act that we wish we were able to do as well. And so just well, on the personal level, you walk into a minefield of the totality of Jewish people that will come together for their own defense. Not a smart thing to do, which is why we see so many people get ruined by it. Go ahead. Agreed. Yeah, no, great. <laughs> all, I, I, I agree. It's all, it's all, it's all very well put. Um, it's just true. Um, I guess maybe one thing I could tack on, and, and I've kind of wanted to mention this for a while, but the, um, you know, so the going free method, brilliant, uh, you know, um, just kind of adding on the notion, the idea of thinking about it in the context of a rhetoric. Mm -hmm. Which is to say, that, you know, there, on one hand, you have sort of like specific, um, you know, memes and meme pathogens, and then and responses and things like that. But in, in a in sort of a in a general sense, we're really dealing in, in the realm of rhetoric uh -huh. and rhetoric, rhetorical devices. And so people can, if they can't remember or like memorize certain things, you know, basically you just it's really just a matter of saying, okay, you know, what am I being presented with, whether you're reading stuff or dealing with talking with people or, or whatever it is, it's the aspect of, you know, analyzing it from a rhetorical perspective. And, and, and you know, so if, if one group has the word, you know, anti-Semitism and another group doesn't have the word anti-whiteism, well, they're obviously at a massive disadvantage, right? They're going to get killed. Yeah, big time. So, yes. Yeah. Very yeah. well said, man. Very well said. Yeah, let's. Thank you. Yeah, the, the really and thank you uh, for uh, calling in and and uh, sharing your thoughts with us. It's it's clearly it's clearly something that when we think about it is obviously detrimental to us to condemn whole groups of man. The focus is not on us. The focus is on other people, things we can't control. And if you really want to incite warfare. If you want to cripple a people, you want to get them to do a couple things. You want to get them to think about and to talk about what they don't have. You want to get them to think about and talk about what they can't do. And you want to get them to think about and talk about the past or an impossible future. And if you do those things in psych warfare, you've crippled them. They, they'll never do anything. They'll never act. 
They'll never take charge of their lives. They'll never. Now, you don't need. And if they don't take charge of their individual lives, you can't have a collective of individuals taking charge of our destiny as a people. You don't need. Right. It's important to, to understand this as well, that you don't need like a, a cabal uh, sketching this out for it to end up being the case in nature. Things that right. work for an objective end up getting used. Things that don't work in pursuit of an objective end up uh, getting discarded. So we can in, we can be exposed to anti-white individuals who end up creating an anti-white narrative, which they have in entertainment, that does these three things in a pronounced way, psychological warfare way, to undermine us. That we got there because they just had the objective of victimizing us. We didn't need uh, people sitting around and saying, I've got an idea. And this is now it doesn't mean that nobody can ever do that. It doesn't mean that anti-whites can't later look back and say, ah, oh, we see what works here. So let's apply it there. That can still happen. But what's important is verisimilitude. That means that what we're sharing is believable, whether it's true or not. So when we are communicating with our brothers and sisters, we want to share things that are believable things that they can accept so that they can be persuaded, they can be convinced, convinced of our ideas, that it's immoral to victimize us, that we're being victimized to use concepts like anti-white, anti-whiteism, and then persuaded to take action against that victimization. So we want to be, we want to achieve those objectives, which means that we can't go to them, even if it were true, like I've made the joke over the years about like if turtles actually controlled the world, nobody would believe that. If we went down and we found that turtles were in charge of everything, you couldn't actually go tell people that turtles are in charge in order to fight against the turtles and their control because no one would ever believe you. And this is obviously something that's uh, more sophisticated and requires some more processing power to understand. Go ahead, you want to say something? I was just gonna, it's like the allegory of the cave almost, right? They won't believe you, yeah. Plato, exactly. It absolutely <laughs> is like that, well said. Schlotz, were you gonna add to that? Yeah, there's two things I wanted to bring up. I wanted to emphasize that the audience when we're discussing our well-being is our people and the potentially sympathetic. It's not anti-whites. Um, yeah. White people occupy a unique space where we are concerned about freeing them of anti-whiteism because we share our bio spirit with them and knowing them is knowing ourselves in that regard um the second thing bringing up anti-white jews to claim that they lead anti-whiteism is really to re-reference the immutable group and speak to what their nature is instead of mm -hmm. focusing on the ideology and that appears as negativity and that's what i wanted to bring up there well said I think Alabama, you wanted to say something too? Yeah, Jason, can you hear me? Yeah, sure can. Hey, brother, pertinent to, pertinent to this, I was laughing my ass off the other day when you were commenting on uh, E. Michael Jones, our favorite uh, Catholic uncle um, online. Uh, he <laughs> had a uh, an interesting discussion with Jim Goad here recently too. Oh. But, it, but, but yeah, the, the whole uh, promoting this, this Catholic ethnic group and this, obviously, it's all Jews, 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 and all this from him as well. And this denial of, of a white identity that's positive is, is uh, again, kudos. Thank you, because I heard a lot of that before I found you, is, is uh, the, kind of the discovering this, uh, the Catholic, the cat, the trad cats, you know, the right. Fuentes crew and so forth, right? Yeah. And it, it's, it's interesting because lately I'm seeing the divisive, the, the divisive nature of these arguments against generations, which Fuentes does. Uh, Goat pointed that out. I was listening to him on stream the other day. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with, with uh, EMJ, it's just because I remember when you interviewed him uh, you know, years ago with Colette. And uh, oh, <laughs> it's just <laughs> like, man. <laughs> so, and, and dude, and, you know, and he would say, oh, well, I am white because I'm from Alabama. That was an actual ethnic group. But, you know, when you're trying to, to argue, no, man, I mean, listen, we're not, uh, you know, you don't have Irish guys, uh, you know, up in Philly now identifying as, as Irish. You know, we, we are under attack, uh, you know, as a collective. Precisely. So, 
Yes. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. Precise. Yeah. He's a, he's doing the same sort of thing. He's this appeal to the illness in uh, the masses. Just tell them what they want to hear. If they want to, this, the simplest thing is we'll just have this really simplistic. It's just quote the Jews. Uh, they'll get it. And then they'll show up. His audience will grow as his audience grows. He gains uh, cred with other content creators and org leaders interested in the size of the audience, how much money they're bringing in, et cetera. And uh, I think for him a lot is it's the sort of the intellectual uh, self-satisfying, self-pleasuring he likes to do. And he is dead set against the white positive approach to viewing ourselves and our victimization. He wants to revert to a strategy, and it's very common uh, to that we see this everywhere, revert to a strategy that's already been defeated. This argument that there are no white people, there are Italians, there are Irish and everything, and, and we're losing because we don't have these ethnic identities. We had those, and I said this to him on the phone call. I know he's not going to remember, but I said it to him, on, or I'll never own up to it, on a phone call. Uh, that I said, we had these ethnicities. They were, they were pure as could be here in America. They had their own neighborhoods. They also, and yet they were beat by anti-whiteism. As the, the world wars, all of this has demonstrated that we need to not sectarianize. We need to identify that we are a single people and create many different beautiful countries. And that uh, by doing so, we'll be able to defend each other. Whereas you can see anti-whites, and anti-whiteism already exercised by the different ethnic groups that we talked about before with these claims that, well, that ethnic group is low I of white people is low IQ. You're condemning, as I've mentioned, the sons of your mother. They might not, maybe they don't have the same father, but they're the sons of your mother. And by doing so, you condemn yourself. These, uh, these uh, strategies, this anti-whiteism in the different ethnic groups have come down to slander the descendants of the slanderers. Uh, it nobody gets to say, well, I'm white, but I'm not uh, this part of the white or I'm not that part of the white. You end up slandered as a consequence of what your German or Irish or Polish or whatever ancestors uh, were saying about these other groups used against each other for their in their personal in, uh, enrichment. And there are I have been in the white sympathetic sphere for a long time. There are writers, thinkers and the vast majority, 90% of them probably, are not even talked about anymore, not even known anymore. And I'm trying to pull some names even to mind. But they, I read books by people talking about how the Catholics, uh, their anti-whiteism, and they grouped with other anti-whites to victimize some other white people. And then, of course, it redounded to their harm. The Italians, the same thing. The, the, the Irish, the same thing. This is something that it kind of works in some of the multi-ethnic Arab countries where you see it's much harder to go in there and condemn one part of the country, one ethnicity in the country. They all kind of come together, like in Syria, for example, they'll all kind of come together and fight against the condemnation of the whole. It's maybe they're a different tribe or whatever, but they're still us uh, fundamentally, fundamentally different from the outsider or the other. If we behaved like that, uh, then there would be no anti-whiteism. And it's merely, it's not, a, it's not a wish. It's not like other content creators or org leaders that will tell their audiences, if we have this person in office, if we are able to take control of the printing of money, it's, it's nothing, it's not a wish list. It's something that we're dem we've demonstrated for years now. You can take white people from all different backgrounds, even different languages, and we can unite each other in a, a, a single purpose, a single people objecting to our victimization. And believe it or not, and a lot of people kind of hit on this and then they kind of, they, they not necessarily, some people do totally get it, but some people kind of hit on it and they don't totally get it. And that is that since we're victimized as a group by the anti-whites, it makes it easier for us far easier than it would be to come together as a group than if we weren't being victimized by the anti-whites. Far easier 
The victimization is uniform. They don't ask if you're German. They don't ask if you're Catholic. They don't ask if you're atheist. You're white. And so a lot of the people who end up following, like we were talking about earlier, somebody like EMJ, it are folks who they're looking for their excuses and uh, EMJ is going to give it to them. And a lot of good Catholic people, they want to hear that their religion is the way out of the misery. And I perfectly understand that. Uh, but there, we have to be honest about it. I mean, I grew up going to a lot of different, primarily Southern Baptist, but I went to everywhere, the Mormons, the Catholics, I went everywhere trying to find someplace that I could get preached to without anti-whitism and I couldn't find it. So I just had to accept the reality that anti-whitism has ruined this too. Uh, lodges, they've ruined that. They've, they've ruined our university or the anti-whites have ruined the universities. Everything that's gone before we can't turn to. That's, that should be one of the, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of painful, but it should be one of the most obvious things. We can't go back to the same playbook. We can't go back to the same plays. There's a, in sports and probably a, a bunch of the uh, former athletes here will recognize the phrase that you can't go back to the well. If a play worked uh, during a game, it's like calls for huge celebration if you try again and it works again. It's like, it's like, wow, I can't believe it worked again. If you go, if you run a play that's a loser and uh, you lose yards or you lose the ball or whatever it might be, you don't go back to it. You don't go back because you want to win the game. And that's our mindset. That's what our mindset has to be. We're not going to go back to what has failed us. We're going to move forward to what is working. I don't know if anybody had anything to add on that. I don't see any other requests for the microphone. Looks like Alabama might or... I, I have something to add. Okay, go ahead, and then we'll have uh, uh, Jews genociding next. Oh. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to point out during that topic uh, with E. Michael Jones uh, and his uh, basically negativity, saying you support white people invites people asking what you're doing for them or how you can do it, unlike with hating non-whites with a wish. So yeah. there's a... There's an expectation that you put on yourself an obligation. Unlike when you're hating with a wish, you don't have to do anything. You just wish harm and, you know, talk a big game. Right. And with selfish individualists, they perceive an easier time by their lonesome just hating on something rather than negotiating the well-being of their people. Yeah. Perfectly said. Hey, Jason, if I could ask you, uh, being in California – being away from the South, you get back down here and I have love for the folk here because I grew up here. Right. Mm -hmm. But that you see that there, it's very defeated. The guys, there's a lack of vitalism. There's a lack of awareness. I think in many ways they're, they're kind of buffered in some places from the bad that's out there. If you're in a larger urban area, but when it comes to identity, I, I don't really, I mean, I love the Confederate flag. I love the history here. It's great, but I don't, I don't know your thoughts on this optic and you know, optically, but I've gotten such a, I, I've experienced such an amazing camaraderie with guys in our circles, uh, folk in our circles throughout the country now that, I mean, do you have any thoughts on, on regional, you know, what, what in the whole Southern nationalist thing, it, it, it just doesn't resonate with me. And I don't want to be some contrarian with that, but it's, it's more just about this whole, this bigger picture that, you know, I feel like some, Oh, you know, I've been away from here so long, so I, I see a bigger picture, you know, you know, versus these guys that are more localized. But, I mean, what are your thoughts on the Southern element versus just kind of the entirety of, of the American, of white Americans? Well, that is a, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a great example, a great question, uh, by the way, thanks, uh, of, of one of the challenges that we face, which is we don't shed our particular uh, hue of Western civilization, albeit Southern or uh, American, say, or Canadian, whatever it might be. We don't shed these things, but we, we, we keep them aloft, sort of like in our sky of virtues and our identity. We just crown a, a new one above those. So we keep them in place. It's still, if you're a Southerner and 
and my vision would be that you're a proud Southerner, that you get together with other people who are going free and you're using the lexicon and dialectics, you're white positive, and then at your get together, because everybody's a proud Southerner, uh, you're gonna have cantaloupe, you're gonna have dumplings, you're gonna have the flag, uh, the Confederate flag is gonna be there. And then in another part of the country, but you're recognizing that that is your just, so in other words, it can't be the central item of the work for our redemption. Your hue is not going to do it because that's that's like referring back to the ethnicities. It's, a, it, it's essentially the exact same thing. So other parts of the country or Canada, I've told people from at the very beginning of getting online because I was saying it long before. If you're in Canada, use the go free method, the go free practice in your life, lexicon di dialectics, get together with similar minded things. And I don't know if, if Canadians still love uh, the national flag or not. Maybe you got a regional flag, maybe you got an older flag, but let everything be Canadian there. We're not seeking to, so it's a really, it's a, it's a complex question. I appreciate you asking it. We're not seeking to uh, homogenize the Western world. We're not seeking to make everybody the exact same. Everybody is going to have like a, a, a flag with a picture of me drinking coffee on it, which was, by the way, that was one of the funniest things I ever did on PWR. I ran and got that flag really quick and pinned it up on the wall. And I said, we should all unify. The green was on. We should all unify behind a new flag and <laughs> and turn my, my camera back on. But we don't all have to have that. We just all have to be white positive, using the lexicon and dialectics, and then adorning it with our uh, regional uh, identities, our cultural identities, our particular hues of Western civilization. But the point you're, you're going to is, can it be like a Southern nationalist uh, revival or fight? Absolutely not. What is What do modern Southerners understand about the South? It's something that has been given them primarily through the anti-white narrative, some by way of family, but you think about it, how many generations now have been influenced by anti-whiteism and their understanding of what the South is and therefore that unifying bond and et cetera that we think is there has all been infected by anti-whiteism. For many generations, you can't even talk to your great-great-grandfather without coming across anti-whiteism. So these places were defeated and uh, we still celebrate and, uh, and we grow anew. We don't go backwards. We grow anew. Because here's the thing that's really beautiful when you think about it. And then I don't know if Jews uh, genociding wanted to talk as well. But um, it's, really a beautiful, it's really a beautiful thing to, to think about that the South, brother, that America, that uh, the Irish, that et cetera, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's in us. So there aren't things out there that we have to go find and try to resurrect. It's all in here, and we have to treat ourselves for these poisonous anti-white ideas that have told us, uh, if you're Polish descent, you're dumb. If you've got blonde hair, you're dumb. If you are white male, that means you're guilty of all, everything that's awful and evil in the world. As we shed ourselves of these poisonous ideas, we come more and more into contact with that spirit, that instinct that's in us. And as we do, we will express all of uh, Ireland and Scotland and the Southland and America, etc., more beautifully, more vividly than we could ever recollect. So it's a matter of going forward. But uh, Jews genociding, speak up, brother. Yeah. Yeah, I know that this is great. That is totally true. Um, shedding, shedding the negative is, you know, that that's that's cute. I think I can parlay that into the possibly like something I have a question about, which is like uh, has to do with the verbiage. Okay, white, right? So we have the word white. Um, we have the word Western. But I'm, I. I feel like the word European um, carries some some validity to it, some merit to it, but we don't really incorporate that. 
Um, so a couple things here. So like white is really, I think one reason why it's, they're able to use it negatively so powerfully is because it doesn't have any like, well, okay, so it's right, it's like skin color. So there is a, a deeply exclusive attribute to, to like strictly a racial distinction. Whereas like take something like, um, you know, implies that like, let's just take Judaism for the example, right? You know, Jewishness can be kind of a race, it can be a religion. So even if they think of it as a race, there's this rhetorical value of, the, of it being for, a, for like a religious thing. Um, so anyway, so what are your thoughts on like incorporating European as a more validating attribute um, in terms of geographical and basis? It, you know, it's kind of more obvious to people and less, maybe less, you know, embraced in, in, in a racial term like white. Yeah. Great question. And I would, I would be delighted if we had an environment where, in, especially in these countries that we have created around the world where European had an immediate uh, value and meaning for the most, the majority, or at least a substantial percentage of our population. Regrettably, it carries with it, especially, well, inside Europe as well, the stark divisions. And also in places like America, you'll probably have witnessed that European increasingly means less and less white people and rather just a place on planet Earth that can be populated by anybody of any race and anybody born there is as much European as white people who are born there. And so that's where it can become a little problematic. In my experience, trying to use, and then there, were, there was a, a time when I used European, and I made a real uh, test of it with brothers and sisters trying to spread the message. And I found that it was easier for me to initially say white people, they knew who I was talking about then. I didn't have to deal with, and remember when we are talking with people, we only have so many disagreements in time with them. So right. if we burn right. some of the disagreements up on What's really meant by European? And right. another thing that can be problematic there, and you've probably seen it with people like uh, Spencer and, and the others, who anti-whites uh, can very easily trip them up on, okay, well then let's define European. Let's, let's say who exactly are the European peoples? Where are those specific lines on a map? Where are those? And that's another conversation that we would rather not have while we're trying to advance our well-being, put an end to our victimization. Uh, ultimately, what I've said when it comes to that is that time and conflict will resolve it for me. I don't, you know, the people who can be victimized for being white, uh, they're either going to be victimized and capitulate or victimized and stand up. Uh, but yeah. European brings in that baggage of definition, description, et cetera. So what I do, and it's a great question, thank you is I use white initially to identify the people on planet Earth. Everybody has known, I've never had a person who was a regular brother or sister. I've had anti-white say, well, what's white? Or there is no white. And then I immediately know what I'm dealing with because they never say that about any other race or any other group of people. So right. it's a category I say, of the mind. what's that? It's a category of the mind. Sorry. Yeah, but, yeah, well said. So. I will use white and then I will drop in uh, words like Western kind and referencing the same group of people. I will also drop in words uh, like Westman, M-A-N-M-E-N, in the conversation. Here's the thing that I have found over time is that my audience, I've had uh, both blue and white collar jobs, lots of co-workers, colleagues over the years, and I, I hit them up sort of with my tests and these conversations. I've never had, and it's, it's one of the important points in developing the concepts that we use, is are people able to get what I'm saying without having to reference a dictionary, without having to have been taught it before? 
So do they are they able just to put the pieces together and say, I know what that is. Western kind is works beautifully. Westman, uh, sometimes I've had people say Westman, like they'll repeat it like they haven't heard me correctly. And then I say, yeah, us. And then they, they meet, oh, Westman, I get it. And I don't get, I don't have an argument there. That's not in the conversation. So that's not saying there can't be a debate or that somebody can't walk away and say, I don't know if, you know, if, if I like or, but the point being that in that conversation, in those conversations, I don't have to have a discussion about what a West Westman or a member of Western kind is. So I can get to the substantive things of putting it into our victimization and using the uh, concepts that liberate us. Does that make sense? Love it. Yep. Totally. Cool. We have, uh, we have a couple, two more people that are requesting the mic and I will hand it over in a moment. I'm going to take a first quick look at the live chat. And it uh, looks like uh, Pants is saying, Jason, your insight on psych warfare and rhetoric are of incredible value. Thank you. I, thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. This is where this is the value, like where the value is in the Go Free Method is finding out how to overcome the psychological warfare that has been used against us so that we can put an end to this victimization. And in a way that everyone can participate in a way that your your, your grandmother, Martha, or whatever, she's... She's uh, less likely, not impossible, but she's less likely to say that you are one of those fire-breathing Nazis that are going to end up in jail or something like that. You say, Grandma, I want everybody uh, to be free of discrimination and persecution. You shouldn't be so immoral. And uh, and I've said that to older people. Looks like uh, uh, Rapunzel has joined us, too, in the live chat. Hello, young lady. How are you on this 2024? Great to see you. Son of Europa is here. That's a great name. Good to see you. The, the blue flame is with us. Oh, my God. The champion, the blue flame is here. And uh, great to see you, brother. A real champ in the trenches on Twitter and elsewhere. So is Lavish. Great to see Lavish has joined us on 2024 as well. The blue flame, quite a uh, champion. I see him everywhere rocking the world. Uh, wonderful to be in the presence of the hero. Let me have a... Look over here at the requests for Mike. And uh, first on the list, we have Freddie. So I will approve you, Freddie. And you are now approved. If you unmute, you will be able to speak to us. And the mic is yours. Hello, Hello Freddie. We can hear you. OK, great. Um, so I, I got two little pieces here, I guess. Cool, man. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty new to the community. I've only been here for about a week or two. Wow. Uh, welcome, welcome uh, to you. Thank you, thank you. So I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not telling you what to do or anything, but I think it would be easy to share your ideas or share your platform better if you had potentially a 10 to 15 minute video to where you describe some of your uh, definitions of white erasure or other stuff like that. And that way it's easier to share with friends other than a four and a half hour live stream. <laughs> or an eight plus one like tonight. No, that's a great, uh, great suggestion. And I really appreciate it. And uh, I would like to, I would like to, uh, maybe try that again. I did that, but you're, but speaking specifically to the definitions, that is uh, a great suggestion. And I should do that here in 2024, make them uh, short videos. And if I can get some people sharing these, if I can get some people commenting and sharing and getting some numbers onto those videos, uh, then I would be more inspired to do that. Otherwise, uh, we have the great No White Gill Clips and anybody else who wants to step up and who's watching the stream and can take these uh, clips and pull them right out of the videos and then share them. Uh, no White Gill Clips has done an amazing job and he's had some of these uh, clips that he's made at 100,000 plus views. And so to your point, Freddie, far more people are going to be able to heed, uh, watch, digest a shorter piece of information, especially in this age. Than, right. than these long uh, videos where we cover many different subjects. But that's a, a great suggestion, and uh, I, I will put my mind more to that. I appreciate it. 
Okay, no problem. And the second little piece is is I watched a live stream a day or two ago, mm-hmm. and you were referring to like the prepping community. Okay. And I, I've been a part of that longer than I have this community. Yeah. And I agreed with your point to some extent, mm-hmm. but like with anything else, uh, you know, I think you have to be careful who you listen to and not base all your thoughts off of one individual person mm-hmm. and, and whatnot. But at least for the stuff that I consume, it's all based towards prepping towards becoming a homesteader mm-hmm. and building a your own community per se to where it's away from governmental infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Per se, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, would you say that that would be a worthwhile endeavor? Like, for for example, I think the highest count for your live stream today was around two hundred. Mm-hmm. And you know, when I think of that, I think how incredible would it be if all two hundred of these families were able to find land in one spot and build that community, have our own rules, have our own livestock to where, like you said in some of your other live streams and clips, you know, the community works for us, we work for the community, and uh, what's the other one you said? Uh, the betterment of the community for the betterment of the uh, individual lifestyle, per yeah. se. Would that be a worthwhile endeavor? Yeah, absolutely. And I've been uh, in favor of uh, both. I, th- I think maybe I, I would see a little bit of a divide between prepping and and uh, also homesteading. Homesteading right. is more of like a, a lifestyle. And that's awesome. Uh, the the less uh, the less reliance we have on the system uh, insulates us against hiccups in the system and things like anti whites criminalizing something we do, firing from our jobs. And so therefore, we're able to rear uh, families away from anti-whiteism. We're able to be advocates for white well-being. It's all about having that base. It's all about creating that environment. Why, I mean, Slots and I had a great conversation the other day on the phone, creating that base, having your health, having a, an income that supports your life. And if you got a family, your family. And as that is secured, you're able to be a better advocate for our people. You'll be a better advocate for our people uh, in those in your immediate vicinity, family members, children especially, but then broad, more, more broadly, the totality of Western kind around the world. If it went no further than just you and your family or your family of origin or you and your friends, and, and that was your interaction in the world as far as communicating the lexical dialectical power that we share here and go free, and you're able to do this by way of homesteading, then that's glorious. That is dazzling. I want that. I want advocates, people who adopt the go free method to be uh, secure financially, secure in their health, secure in their relationships. That's the first and foremost, because advocates that are doing well are some of the biggest, I guess, uh, sales, some of the biggest marketing material. You adopt this, you do well. You adopt the people want you to do well, you do well. When people can get together and uh, have, I'm all for families getting together and uh, homesteading if they can do that, or even not, even just moving uh, within proximity to each other so they can help each other out uh, who are going free. Uh, I'm all in favor for that. Where I uh, deviate is when there are arguments of building a whole town of us because first of all that is like one of these like pie in the sky kind of a things they're usually conversations to not do anything it's like an excuse if we're talking about it then we're doing something but you're not actually uh and also if you did put a community together how many times do we witness the government come in, the anti-whites come in and kill everybody or take them all to jail. Or So the other aspect of that, of course, is more broadly thinking, is the secessionist idea. We're going to go to an area, we're going to take it over, and then we'll just say we're no longer a part of this anymore. That's impossible. That can't be done. We need to be, if you can think about this, 
We need to be everywhere and nowhere. We need to be where the anti-whites could say, oh, there they are one moment and the next moment they don't know where we are. So if neighborhoods become white positive in a city or in a suburbs or an exurb or the rural uh, countryside, wonderful. If people go out and you got a handful of, of families, they move together in proximity to help each other out. Wonderful. That's fantastic. We want that. We want happy. I wanted to see white kids all playing together. They're all white positive and they're all inoculated against anti-whitism. That is something we want. Individuals securing uh, their well-being and the well-being of their families and transforming the world we're in, there, thereby transforming the world we're in to benefit all of us. That's a wonderful thing. When it comes to prepping, I'm all for, and I, we got another uh, requester here for the microphone. I'll get it to you in just one moment. Hold tight. I'm all for prepping that is adult. <laughs> and by that, I mean the, the idea that some of these prepping channels have that you're going to be able to survive uh, the apocalypse or something like that is, is fear porn. They're manipulating people into giving money. They're manipulating sure. their audiences. It's a horrible thing. Yeah, I mean, if if the water in your areas and most of the water everywhere is no good, uh, have a way to filter, have clean water. You have a generator if you can. Have fuel if you can so that when they're – and get as much as your food as you can if, if, if uh, this is your won't. Uh, get as much as food as you can from your own work, your own labor, so that – uh, that food, you know, is not corrupt with pesticides and other things that are going to make you and your family sick because sick white people are not good white people. There are people who are relying on the anti-white system. That's what anti-whites want. Um, I want all that. So mature, uh, reasonable prepping. Yes. Homesteading. Yes. Uh, surviving the apocalypse by prepping. No. And secession by way of homesteading. Uh, no, so I'm opposed to those things. So I'm really glad you're here, man, and I'm glad that uh, you've come over from the prepping community. Some of our coolest people have come from the prepping community. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm glad to be here. That was my that was my only two little things, but uh, I appreciate you talking with me. Awesome, man. We'll come back. We want to hear more from you. Okay. Yep, I sure will. All right, let me pass the mic along. Who is up next? uh ethelrod is that it or pronounce it right or wrong we're giving you the mic you'll be able to tell me i should put my glasses on but you should be able to unmute and speak now i hear somebody or is that me i see although i don't see you now i don't see well try Ask for the mic again, and I will grant you the mic again, and we'll see if it will, if it'll work this time. Yeah, you're still with us. You're still listening. I see you. Is it Ethelrod? So, yeah, ask again, and I will. Or uh, if you're having some kind of an issue, message, message us, and. Uh, I, I guess, Lunder, can you see the messages? Um, I don't think I see anything from him. Okay. All right. Well, we'll be hanging out here for another moment. Janice is celebrating the great No White Gill clips showing the way in the live chat. And I see, looks like, who was that? Was it uh, the Wolf Throne mentioning the word Aryan? And I know there are a lot of people who are wedded to the word and uh, they've done their study. They know what it, uh, what they believe it really means. I'm not saying it doesn't mean or does mean uh, one thing or another. They like the way it sounds. It does sound cool. That's a cool word uh, for a name of a people. It, according to your reading, it might be historically 100% accurate. Uh, that being the case, when we're talking with our brothers and sisters, we need to consider what they understand that word to mean. And so uh, privately uh, with friends who also study the same material, 
uh, and uh, talk about those things. Having that conversation, using that as the name for our people is not going to harm. But when you go out into the world, if you tell our brothers and sisters, you start off and you're like the Aryans, they are going to see marching Nazis. And it's not going to be what maybe your research tells you about marching Nazis, right? It's going to be uh, what they have learned through the anti-white narrative that means. And it's just, it's one of those nasty realities that we have to contend with. We have to take into consideration. It's like, and it's, I say a nasty reality because if for you, you've done the research, you believe it to mean something noble, pure, it's the original name or what have you, you want to use it, then it's uh, most unfortunate. It's like for me, I am a very, very proud Virginian. And uh, so that means I'm proud of my Southern heritage. And I would love more than, I think the Confederate flag is the most beautiful thing ever designed. In fact, just as an aside, there was a, uh, an artist, a professional, I can't remember who he is right now. Years ago, I remember reading about this. And the, I think he was in France and he was very well known and not, not for doing garbage expression as art, but like a legit artist. And he made a public statement that got him into some trouble because he said the most beautiful flag ever drawn, I hate it, I hate it, but the most beautiful flag ever created is the Confederate flag. And he was talking not about the battle flag, which is the square, uh, but uh, what is called the Naval Jack and also the uh, flag of the Army of Tennessee, which is St. Andrew's Cross, 13 stars, and is a rectangle, is beautiful. I mean, just like aesthetically looking at it, but it's beautiful to me. Maybe it's beautiful to some of the listeners. Maybe it's beautiful to uh, white people around the world. But the average brother and sister out there, they have seen that flag on every. I mean, do you remember like the couple of years ago, the the political ad where the pickup truck with the Confederate flags, like literally driving over non-white kids? I mean, that's the kind of way that they've experienced it. So they don't know it as hearth and family and custom and history. They know it as bigotry and what you're really all about is you might be saying these things here, but really you're dog whistling about exterminating whole groups of people and putting people. I've actually had people that are otherwise you would think are normal, ordinary white folks and have them say, what are you for slavery? Why would you put black people back in slavery? And so you see what immediately happens. You then have a conversation about does the Confederate flag mean slavery? Does it mean that I want to put people in slavery? Does it mean, and now you lost them. You've got to dig your way out of a hole. I've actually walked through, I've actually said, okay, sorry, I started the conversation. That's happened in a few different ways over the years where I've just, I just immediately saw, okay, I'm, I started off in a hole. I shouldn't have even mentioned that or that shouldn't have been present. And there's no redeeming it now. It's going to be like 30 minutes of them use like squinty eyeball looking at me uh, and still wondering, is he legit? Is he legit? Is he real? Does he, is he going to invite me to a clan meeting next? So uh, it's just like that for me is unfortunate uh, because of how meaningful it is for me. I mean, it was so meaningful for me. And uh, that, and I'll pass the mic over. It was so meaningful for me that when I decided to rebel against anti-whiteism, when I decided to stand up for my people in junior high school, the book Crucible tells the real story. I dug out an old Confederate flag from a, from the one, from the one event that my parents took me to, uh, to share uh, what these Civil War reenactments were like. And I, I remember I was like, I love that flag right there. Uh, which side is that? And they were like, well, we're Virginians. So that's, so, I mean, they bought me like this little Confederate flag and I kept it. It was in like a box in the garage. And I went and dug that out and, and sewed that to my shittily, but uh, onto my jean jacket, it got fixed later. 
so that that was my statement. It was the rebellion. That's how much it meant to me. But since then, I've learned that uh, I would rather convert. I would rather bring my brothers and sisters to resistance to our victimization than get them to love uh, the Confederacy or the Confederate flag or what have you. There's just there's just no people there. And that's one of the that's one of the big debates I've had over the years is when people go out and they're like, our people, our people. And I say, where are they? Where are they? They're, where is this great like Southern? Where is this great British? Where is this great? They're not there. They are horribly infected with anti-whiteism. And so they can't uh, they can't identify as a people. You can make like, for example, you can make a case. I see that it looks like we lost the request for Mike. Uh, but click it again and I'll just click on it right away this time. Uh, you can, if like you're Jewish or if you're black, anybody else but us, you can make a case to your community about what's a danger to you. And you'll hear, this is where like you, you see some, some Jews uh, will get into pretty heated debates about what they think is best for their community, what they think is the biggest threat to them. And you get like these kind of these these two different factions. I would love for us to have that debate. We don't get to have that debate. You can't to point out to say this is a threat to our people. You need a people behind you. There's nobody there that's going to say, yep, I'm white and I'm going to consider how that's a threat to me. Instead, they're going to say, uh, instead they're going to say, uh, well, I'm a selfish individualist. I don't have a people. How can I uh, become part of this system? that is uh, de destroying, that's doing what it's doing to the West. How can I become a part of it so that it doesn't harm me in the immediate? And that's why these, these great appeals about the, one of the big reasons about uh, sharing the threat to the white race always falls on deaf ears. You go out to, and I've had, I've had friends over the years who, who know or who knew back then wealthy white people in different parts of the country, but specifically right now, uh, we'll talk about Southwest US. And they have shared with me what those wealthy white people talk about. And it's never, uh, when relative to, you know, like our people, this is happening to us. They are never thinking about that, never. It's just selfishly, uh, how can I get out of the way of the damage? How can I and my family profit from this? How can we not be uh, consumed as part of the anti-white machine? How can we identify as other, which is why you see so many white people try to say that they're anything other than white. It can be, like I mentioned before, it could be like rappers, it could be metalheads, it could be, well, they're actually a black because they're one thirty-second black or American Indian they love to choose. Just anything to get away from it. So I needed, back in the day, I needed to figure out a way to get our people to think about ourselves as a people without having to make the argument. And that's a huge challenge, but we've done it with the go free method because you can't go, you just can't, I've tried. And so have others smarter than me have gone out to white people and tried to convince them um, that uh, we are a people. They've tried various ways. Uh, and very often you see now with like the America first uh, that we're a people, it's America first or whatever. And, and then I asked like in this very stream, what does that even mean anymore? What is it? What does it mean to be America first? Well, there'll be more definitions for what America first means that are harmful for white people. than there will be definitions that are beneficial for white people. So you, I realize you couldn't argue white people into not being selfishly individualistic. So we had to Find, we have to find ourselves. I used to talk about it as uh, you have to back then into the room, the room of identifying as a people. Uh, I gave us a couple of speeches where I was like, you've got to back them in. They've got to back up into it and then say, oh, shit. You know, and then they find themselves in there and it's like, oh, it's too late. You're one of us. And uh, that's how they're acting. And it's kind of like after the fact, they figure out, oh, that's why this is benefiting me now, because otherwise you just uh, you're you're preaching is falling on deaf ears. I don't know if anybody else had a 
a thought they wanted to add uh, to any of that. I don't see the request for Mike back, but I do see Ethel Rod is still um, with us. Go ahead. You mentioned before at the start that um, you're asking whether or not the Confederate flag has any, um, I don't know, significance to anyone who isn't American or at least not Southern. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can say uh, that I personally love the flag. I've got two. Um, I bought one myself oh. at a, um, a local at one time. It's in pristine condition. I haven't taken it out of the packet yet. That's <laughs> um, awesome. There's no place for me to hang it up. But uh, yeah, and the, um, the the first one I grabbed was actually from a uh, mate of my dad's who was a Texan. He uh, immigrated here uh, when he was younger and he brought his Confederate flag with him. Um, I don't know if it's a different version. It's the uh, it's the squared version, uh, okay. with the cross with the, the main stars. Yeah. Um, it was a bit dirty too, a bit rugged, but um, he kept it in relatively good condition for all these years. And he um, he uh, gifted it to my dad when he passed with cancer a couple oh. of years back. And um, my dad gave it to me. So now it's, it's in my cupboard somewhere along with the, the pristine one I bought. But yeah, it is a beautiful flag, I must say. Fabulous, man. That's 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 a beautiful story. I'm sorry about your father. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful story. And you have that I'm now. my father's friend. I'm sorry? My father's friend, not my dad. Oh, your father's friend. Sorry about your father's friend. It's a beautiful story uh, that you that you have this. And uh, the the wear and tear is the character on it, man. So, yeah, I yeah. I remember when I was I've been in a number of like pro Southern groups over the years. And um, more than one time there were there were a couple of these uh, Southern groups where I kid you all not. They got excited over uh, both black Africans in Africa and Arabs in the Middle East using the Confederate flag. They literally, it was in their newspapers. They mailed out monthly newspapers. And uh, I got it and I was just like, you're celebrating? Like you, they're not pro-Southern. Uh, they, they don't care about white people. They've they've just decided like maybe with this tribe or that faction that they think the flag looks cool and therefore they're going to use it. This is not a cause for celebration, but that's when you have nothing but losses. And that's the kind of thing that ends up getting celebrated. When you have nothing but losses, you end up celebrating the deeds of other people or the accidents of other people as something that is of your team that you're that you're a mascot for, that you're a cheerleader for, and then you claim uh, victory um, by way of that happy accident. And then you speculate, is he really our guy? All of these things are, are indicative of people that don't have anything going on for themselves. I feel sorry for them, I'm not making fun of them. Uh, I, I feel bad for them. I want them to have something going on, but uh, the world is just such that it's, uh, these ideas don't work and they'll they'll never work they've already been defeated we have a five dot a five i'm sorry uh token library token financial gift over on odyssey from who to thunk it and uh, thank you so much for those library tokens it says happy new year if you have to say there's exceptions in quotes you're already victimized you've already victimized the innocent well, precisely, well put, applies to white negs about others and anti-whites uh, about our people. Very well put. Yeah, if you have to say, and this is what we hear, we've heard, and we've all heard too many times, that, oh, it's it's the this group. Now, but there are a couple good ones. You've you've done it. You've you don't redeem yourself in the eyes of our brothers and sisters by saying, well, there are a couple good ones. It never works. You're never redeemed. You have taken a white negative tact and uh, your audience is just not going to have. Think about like all your white neighbors and your white co-workers and all. These are the people that you have to bring around. And uh, I knew that we weren't going to be able to get them into a, well, after trial and error, that we weren't going to be able to get them into any sort of like political machinery or cultural machinery to push back, or his preservate, uh, preserving his history uh, machinery to push back, or it's just, it's not there. 
And uh, we have to deal with the reality of the world, which is the white race. And uh, D Dutton uh, essentially says the same thing that I do when he talks about uh, the spiteful mutants. Somebody reminded me of that. That's what he calls it a couple of weeks back, where he says his premise or his hypothesis is that human beings have uh, genetic urges that served us well over time and in much more primitive environments. And that now, since the white man, at least in Western civilization, has defeated these challenges to our safety, our security, our well-being, since we've done that, now we have all of these urges and things that served us in different environments that now are running amok and are detrimental. That argument, that hypothesis, I believe in conjunction with the hypothesis of uh, downbreeding and people reproducing that uh, that would not have been able to reproduce in the past and therefore a worse and worse genetic stock. Um, but if you look at my argument, it's, a, it's essentially the exact same thing. We're making the same argument that white people have a, uh, maybe back then it was a predilection and a more primitive time and a, and a more serene time a predilection to selfish individualism, which benefited the totality of our people. In a multiracial environment, this is a proclivity. Selfish individualism is a massive proclivity. In and of itself, it might have been something that we could have uh, dealt with. But with the presence of anti-whiteism, fanning what's already an urge, think of a dog who already uh, gets down on its belly when you walk up. How easy is it to teach the dog to lie down? It's already doing it. It's very easy. My parents' dog many, many years ago already liked to lie down and then roll like halfway over. So it was infinitely easy for me to teach this dog to play dead when I pulled out the fake gun of my fingers and went bang. It would fall down, roll over all the way like it was dead. If I had a dog that it's its uh, propensity was I walked up and it was jumping up and down on its hind legs like a maniac, like some dogs do. It would have been really difficult to train the dog to die at the pistol. I mean, I trained the dog how to die at the pistol in might have been 15 minutes. It would have been a much harder challenge. Whether we have souls or not, and I believe we do, as I mentioned, we're in animal bodies. And so there are animal instincts. If we have, and I do believe, this instinct that served us well when we were in pristine environments, uh, and then it has been fanned to this fanaticism of thinking like it's this great virtue to be as selfishly individualistic as possible, then we have to adapt. We can't just complain. We have to say, okay, this is now a big challenge. It's right in the way. How do we get around it? And that's one of the things that we do with the go free method. So some great questions. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention everybody. Now that it's a comedy, damn it is done and being reviewed and hopefully will be available in the next couple of days. And I will start marketing it like crazy to conservative uh, individuals who watch big, big con inks, uh, content creators. Now I can begin two things. Uh, working with you all on Sundays uh, with uh, concepts for the third edition of Go Free, but also recording the audiobook of Prometheus Rising, uh, which is very exciting. I've been waiting many years to get to that. That's been the thing, uh, one of the main things I'm very excited about. So that'll be a work for 2024. And uh, maybe the lessons I've learned from It's a Comedy, Damn It, we'll be able to apply, I'm sure we'll be able to apply for uh, Prometheus Rising and be able to move through it much more quickly than it's a comedy, damn it. I didn't know. I don't recording an audiobook with multiple characters, and there were only a couple scenes where there are multiple characters. I had no idea how challenging that was going to be. Also with the reader, but I think also, I mean, I set uh, the narrator. I think I set the bar kind of high for myself so that at times when the protagonist 
was anxious, for example, I wanted the narrator to be light, slightly anxious as well. So to be conveying that energy. When there was more placidity, I wanted the narrator to convey that. But then having to do the characters is literally acting. And I've not been an actor. So there was a lot of trial and error. I can't tell you how many times I came up to the computer and I listened and I was like, oh my God, that's crap. That's, that is garbage. They can't stay. It's got to be better than that. I just wasn't going to do, I mean, it's not perfect. I'm not a professional actor or voiceover actor or any of these things. But it had to be something that when it was done, I would be able to look back in time and say, clearly I gave it my best shot. If conservative people liked it, if they didn't like it, if they moved on or whatever, I gave it my best. And that's all you can ask of yourself is that you'll give it your best in the end. Uh, Sloth says in the live chat, oh, Streaky Bacon is with us. Great to see you. Sloth says, ha ha, no white guilt. Yeah, doing characters is hard. It is. And especially for me on the protagonist, I wanted his voice to be like a little uh, nasty, like a little gravelly. And so every time I did his voice, well, I also wanted it, this was one of the ways that I forced myself, I cornered myself to have a, a bit of the right attitude for the character, was I wanted his voice to hurt a little bit when I did it. Because if his voice hurt it a little bit when I did it, then maybe that energy of that irritation from the hurt would come through as the irascible character that the protagonist is, if that makes sense. So that was one of the strategies I employed. And hopefully it pays uh, dividends and conservative normal folks picking up, seeing me and thinking, well, he's not so bad. He, he, he made a ridiculous book, <laughs> uh, so he can't be that bad and maybe acclimate them a little bit to the work we're doing here. But let me take a quick look. I don't see any more requests for the mic over here. Oh, Jews of a genocide, you have something to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was that was, that was great. Um, I guess uh, it got me kind of thinking. Um, yeah, like I worry a little. Um, about the uh, terms of uh, talking about forging people, you know, basically making the white people kind of identify as as, as a people. Um, when you think about maintaining and sustaining that, you know, you think about things like um, the Muslims, they have Islam that sustains them as a people over time. And, you know, Jews have Judaism, you know, Indians have, have you know, the religion, and, and, and China has, like, um, Chinese have what's called ancestor worship and their Confucianism. And so I just wonder, like, are white people, let's take it in two stages. If, if we were to, the first stage is eliminating or free, liberating from anti-whiteism. Let's say, let's, let's, say we, let's say we achieve that and we liberate people of anti-whiteism. Then you still have a billion or however many, you have the diaspora all over the world. What, don't we need a creed, like, you know, a creed, a doctrine that effectively is like, a, you know, on, on a daily, weekly, you know, whatever basis you're being inculcated with to, to maintain uh, peopleism or peoplehood. Does that make sense? It sure does. And, and, Yes, and it, I guess maybe is to your to what you're saying here. Do you, do you see going free and kind of Promethean um, as going to be the foundation of that? Potentially, uh, definitely, the go free method will, as we recapture our destiny, will take an evolutionary track, if you will, uh, that compels those of us who are maybe uh, turning more toward uh, Protestantism or Catholicism or Mormonism or some other type of atheistic, uh, I don't know, maybe you want to call it maybe a spirituality or view of the, the, the material world. It will inform all of those creations as well 
potentially, well, as you know, ancestral uh, religions of Europe, but as well as the spirituality and the lessons that are taught in Prometheus Rising, that what is communicated by the Gopher Method will inform all of those later emendations uh, and, and or creations so that they are secure against anti-whiteism and the resurgence or recrudescence of anti-white ideology in its various forms. We're not going to be able to, and it's a great question. It's one of those long range questions, but there is nothing that we can do today that we see into the future because our perception of into the future is going to be a permanent now, which is going to make it automatically incorrect. So there's nothing that we can do for a, a, a wide narrative arc that will result in exactly X down the line, way down the line. What we can do is we can inform the here and now with, with tools like this uh, that, can, right. that can then make alterations or maybe something entirely new, alterations to something we already have or something entirely new or a generalized uh, spirituality. There might be something, brother, like a, a, a generalized, like bio-spiritual awareness that suffuses the white population of the world so that we know, and it, it, might, it might really unleash a renaissance, sort of a cornucopia of a celebration of our variations. The, the possibility of creating a, an ideology or today or a religion or even a spirituality that enough of the white people of the planet would adopt that would make a difference is I, I say zero. It's just uh, the day the day of religion creating or the day of I mean, not even I would not even imagine that the brightest of the brightest of artificial intelligence could answer the question of what do a people need today for tomorrow? I mean, if the AI is is at all worth its uh, its its bites in value, uh, then it would have to say, I don't know what tomorrow can hold. I mean, we can know, as I've talked about before, and and you're you're fairly new, so uh, yeah. maybe you haven't heard. So we can set people on what we refer to as a, a thought chain or a thought path so that we can't say specifically what the derivatives will be, but we can say that on this path, all of the derivatives are going to benefit us. So that's the kind of thing that we can do in the here and now. Uh, so I think that we end up with something that, uh, or some things that sustain us, maybe something we can't even entirely articulate or even understand today. And, and maybe something that would be similar, a little bit more similar to it, since we are a single people with many nations, is rather than the Jewish religion uh, being the, the sole thing that uh, uh, it appeals to a certain number, there are variations of it too, uh, and that appeal to different, and this is like Adam Green's territory in his study, but right. um, there is also just the identity and the conclusion that they are a special people. So they don't need, they'll give respect to religious elders and thinkers, even of different sects, uh, but they don't necessarily need Judaism to be what perpetuates uh, their people and to be what I guess and what does perpetuate mean what what's relevant for us is what will motivate the individual Jewish person and this is not all Jews this is a, a segment of Jews that it appears to be the case for that will conclude that they are going to be safe they are going to do well in this world if other Jews are safe and if other Jews do well and that in a communal environment is absolutely the truth. 
where you have people that are doing well. We have white people that are doing well and they're worried about you and doing well and you're worried about them and doing well. You're going to have opportunities that you would not have otherwise had when you are uh, oppressed, when you suffer challenges. White people would come from far and wide to benefit, to defend you because you're one of their own and they know that their well-being is determined by your well-being, by the group's well-being. So you almost become, if you are the victimized party, you almost become the avatar for the totality of the community. If we have this, uh, then you, brother, could be, uh, and other white people could be at a university somewhere and being persecuted for being white. And white people who have no idea who you are, to them, you're just the avatar of our people being persecuted. And they show up to defend you as a consequence. Um, that's the same thing that we need to be able to achieve. So we need to work people into that sort of uh, mindset and we'll be far better off. I've never had, and I know you have, and no white people have, a situation where we say, oh, well, you know what, got that job because I'm white and they were white. You know, I'm not, uh, you know, I got, and white people will actually complain. They'll complain when other people of different groups hook each other. I grew up in Northern Virginia. And I saw all of the, I had all these friends of all these different racial groups, and they all talked about hooking each other up. I'm going to easily get a job here, and I'm going to easily get a job there. And they, my father just brought this guy in from the country and uh, hired him over here, got him a job in the government here, got him a job at this company there. White people don't do that at all. White, not at all. So if we start doing that, the world will change really rapidly. And in instead, you know, white people are like, damn it, they shouldn't do that. You know, well, okay, but they do. That's the way the rest of the world functions. I, they shouldn't or whatever, but maybe they shouldn't. Right. But the bottom line is that the rest of the world functions this way. Of course, not everybody of every group functions this way, but uh, a, a percentage do, and it appears that way. And if we do it too, then the world will change and our victimization will end. So, right. I love that. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, man. Amen. God bless you, brother. Well, I don't know if anybody else uh, wants to have a, a shot at the mic. This is 2024, and we have come into it. Oh, we have uh, Wolf Thrum financially gifting again. And then I did see a comment over here by Wolf Thrum that I sympathize with on the live chat that because people have a, a bad opinion about the word concept Aryan, it doesn't make it the case that it's bad. And that's correct. It's just like my flag. Uh, because our brothers and sisters have been given a bad opinion about it, doesn't make that the truth. But that is the truth that we have to contend with. You, you follow me? So uh, you can be 100% right. They can all be wrong. But the bottom line is that we need them. They don't need us. They don't need us to continue being selfish individualists, right? Uh, they can just keep doing it. We need them to start seeing themselves as a people, as Western kind, so that we can put an end to our victimization. So I, I completely sympathize with that, and I understand. Um, and I, I mean, I was, I followed all the, the great, if you will, I guess great, we could call them historical revisionists. And I went through their material and I was like, wow, they really done a lot of research. There's a lot of truth here. And you can have this, this sort of, uh, you know, like the, the zealotry of the convert, like, I can't believe it. I've discovered this and I've discovered that. I had those exact same like moments. Uh, and I went out into the world and I have a really good memory. So I could just memorize reams of the, the stuff that they were teaching. I went out into the world and I, I would share people. And because I can be persuasive, because I can read people well, especially when they're in front of me, I was able to use those skills to get people to really think about things. But then I realized that it, some people, not all people, but then I realized, number one, the small percentage that I could get really thinking about things, uh, that's too small of a percentage. Number two, I was using a bunch of skills that I personally have 
that I'm not able to teach to other people. I can't like bring everybody in person and say, this is what it looks like when somebody's beginning to and position your body like this. And this, I can't, that's just either you learn it kind of on your own, you kind of have it intuitively, you understand it or you don't. And so I thought, no, this won't work uh, for various reasons. Uh, like I've talked about before, the fact that even if you convince somebody, they then know that the rest of the world doesn't agree. So they're not going anywhere with that information. <clears throat> it's like you've hit a cul-de-sac in them. But the other thing, the other thing is that, uh, oh no, my train of thought was just interrupted here. Um, the other thing is that if I'm using skills that I can't teach to you, then it's no good. It's like, like I've talked about before with people who are really trained in this material and the people that are people like are re really erudite, like Jared Taylor. When you go to repeat what the data that he shared, you don't sound like Jared Taylor, right? I mean, I don't sound like Jared Taylor when I repeat what he says. He has a demeanor. He has a, a cadence of speech. He has a presentation. There are all these things that, and he has an uh, academic background. He has all these things that work well for him that can sort of like uh, get some people to uh, maybe lower their guard or at least be understanding, at least think it's coming from a, uh, it's sort of an honest and a uh, place where it doesn't mean any harm, but you don't have it. I don't have it. It's like Nick Fuentes. He has a like a, a little boy and i don't mean it to be cut down here i'm i'm actually it's a it's a positive for him he has like a little boy charm and so he can say things that are very ugly and they're taken with a grain of salt when they see him say it when they hear him say it, they take it with a grain of salt and then if he's really pissing you off and he knows it he can always just sort of give it the all shucks little boy charm and uh, people disengage and they're not pissed off anymore. But you go say the things that he said and you've got like five guys ready to kick your ass. You've got like your dad ready to throw you out of the house. Uh, you've got your mom wants to disown you and you can't, you don't have the little boy charm to say, Oh, shucks. Didn't quite mean it that way. You're just getting burned. So I knew that whatever it was that was communicated needed to be something that, anyone could replicate anyone. And that's why I shared the ultimate argument, the ultimate meme curative in the entire go free arsenal is MC is to say, I don't care what your reasoning is. I don't care what your arguments are. If you arrive at an anti-white conclusion, I reject it. I specifically developed that meme curative so that everybody, no matter what they, I, what their background was, what they looked like. Some people look really mean, right? I saw somebody put up a request for Mike, but then it disappeared. Uh, some people just look mean. And there's no way getting around it. And some people, very slow uh, mentally. It's just nature. It's just what happens. And so how are they going to contend with their environment? I need them winning. So what do I have to give them tool wise for them to kick ass? Bing, there's that MC. Here's a request. Let me see if I can click it fast enough. Oh, Ethel Rod is trying again. Let's see if we can make it happen. I'm clicking the approve for you. Uh oh, Ethel Rod, do you have a weak connection? Maybe, how many people do we have as speakers? How many people are we allowed to have as speakers? Looks like we only have two people with. Mike's other than me, so it should work. My presence counts as two. Okay. <laughs> it should still work. I, I think we had five at one point. Did we not? Oh, it looks like, is Ethel Rod here anymore? Dropped off, so maybe it's the connection. Damn. Maybe I'll have to try another night. Somebody tell Ethel Rod that uh, we're trying to make it happen. It's not our fault. Uh, the Wolf Throne has come back and said, much respect. I appreciate that, good brother. We do have a financial gift. 
Uh, Wolfron says he loves Jared and Amran. I do too, man. I have been uh, friends with Jared Taylor uh, for a very, very long time. Uh, Kingdom of Inland, let me get to this financial gift from the Wolf Throne. Says, $3 financial gift. Thank you so much. And this is over on Entropy. What are your thoughts on pagan religions like Asatru and the Asatru Folk Assembly? And do you think pagans and Christians can work together to defeat anti-whiteism? I think it's a wonderful group of people. I've actually started attending these ancestral religion, uh, religious groups going way back in the day in Pennsylvania. Most of them were in PA. Uh, also a couple in Virginia, Maryland, and West Virginia. And it may have, I think I went down into North Carolina one time for one. And good people, wonderful people. And uh, looking to uh, the lore is uh, something I think that in our, in our, customs of the past that many of which have been forgotten, not just because Christianity exists. I know many will, will think about that, but also because materialism exists. Look at what it's uh, the consumer environment has done to Christianity. Uh, Jesus went from being celebrated on Christmas to being a plastic afterthought on Christmas to not present at all on Christmas everywhere you look. And that's the cause of anti-whiteism. So I think it's good people. I think that uh, many of the people are trying to do really good things. And uh, like with everything, whether it's, uh, as you say, pagans here or Christians or atheists, they all need to go free method, in my opinion. I've met um, in, in the ancestral religions communities, uh, maybe a higher percentage of people who think they don't need the go free method. Um, they think that what I've been told by some of them, not about, not all of them. And this is uh, no way a comment uh, representing all of these different groups and people, but that uh, all they have to do is worship the, the old gods. And uh, by way of worshiping the old gods, they'll have power. They'll have fortune in very, I'm not saying that they're claiming that they're going to magical powers or anything of that nature. Um, but that there'll be strength, there'll be good fortune, there'll be all of this. And so they don't need a strategy. It almost strikes me with some of them as like maybe they view the go free method or any type of method outside of worshiping the gods of their you know particular bent, uh, almost like they see it as like sacrilegious. I have found more Christians, although I've had the same kind of responses from some Christians, that it's like set notes. To, they'll say it's the Bible. It's nothing but the Bible. If you're going to don't need any other method. It's just the Bible. Maybe EMJ uh, falls in specifically Catholicism in that category. But as far as my opinion, I met a lot of good people uh, and uh, met some bad people. But that's like everywhere else. Uh, a lot of good people, some bad people. Uh, that's my, and I think it can be as far as the, the researching and, and, and dredging up and, and saving some of these old customs. I think that's something that we can all do, even as atheists, even as Christians, Catholics, etc. we can all benefit from those kinds of activities. And uh, they're really beautiful. I mean, I went to um, some of these events some of these events were actually uh, pretty big, and there were there were a couple different pagan groups, if you will, and uh, even uh, Christian family members would be allowed to attend, uh, which was uh, which normally there's a conflict there, but uh, they were there, and of course I was there because I'm there for white well-being, uh, but. Uh, some of the events were really nice, just like other, just like Christian events as well. Uh, similarly, uh, different adornments, you know, but do I think that people practicing ancestral religions or European uh, derived religions and Christianity can work together? Absolutely. They do work together. 
Uh, they have worked together and they must work together. Now, working together, what do I mean by that? I don't mean that they have to stand shoulder to shoulder. Uh, sometimes they have a, unhappy views about histories and feuds. But this is the same kind of thing that happens with the different ethnicities. There are longstanding feuds, like uh, the, the boundary here is on our side of the mountain, but in the past it used to be on the other side, and so screw them, and we're going to take it back one day. These, these feuds, these sort of uh, uh, situations of contention are the kinds of things that we need to recognize that, okay, they exist, uh, and at the moment they don't matter because we're being wiped out, all of us. It doesn't matter whether we're atheist, Christian, pagan, or whatever you're gonna call yourself, we're all being victimized. And so sometimes working together means having the same goal, but not actively being together, but knowing, okay, those folks over there, they're doing, they're working for the same thing, I can rely on them. And that is how we have to function. There was a time in the white sympathetic sphere, and I, if there are any old timers listening, they'll know I'm right, when it was like, no way. You couldn't get uh, a ancestral religion and, and Christian in the same room. They, it was like, absolutely no way. And I, th there might be a little bit of a, an idea that, well, um, if you are upsetting your god or gods, then they're not going to uh, empower you. Uh, maybe there's some of that played a little part of it. I don't know. But I, even as a young man, I stood with uh, Sam, who was a Christian. Uh, we stood together and we were like, no, and others came as well. And we said, no, everybody has to work together. And so years ago were some of the first conferences that some of the old timers said never happened, where we brought people together in the same room that uh, celebrated these different religions and uh, they weren't at each other's throats. You know, they could say, all right, I understand. You know, we're not the same. We don't necessarily like everything about each other, but we're in the Alamo, baby. We are in the Alamo. And I can promise you this too as well. This is part of what I made my argument uh, back then was when we recapture our destiny, and this is an incremental thing. So we have victories recapturing our destiny uh, the entire time. Tw uh, 2023, enormous victories recapturing our destiny. I mean, we got people saying the concepts that liberate us, enormous recapture of our destiny by doing that. Uh, that as we recapture our destiny, at some point, uh, we will be able to resolve these differences equitably, peaceably, without, without anti-whiteism. Nobody's gonna have to walk away. It'll be like Donald Trump style Win-win on both sides. I have no doubt about it. Uh, cooler, cooler heads have to prevail in these instances because it is the Alamo. You can't imagine two guys in the Alamo arguing about the future economy of Texas and like breaking up over it while they're surrounded and lead is flying, right? I mean, it would be the silliest thing to do. So it's a great question and uh, we must. We must work together, even if we can't literally be together. We have to be able to know that, hey, they're good with me. I'm good with them to ending this anti-whiteism. Just my, made that rhyme for everybody. Maybe I'm. Maybe it's like Jesse Jackson vibe. This is, <laughs> I not only deny the alle allegation, but I deny the alligator. <laughs> All right. I don't see any more requests for, let's see if we have anybody. Okay, Wolf Throne, thank you. And that's a cool name though, The Wolf Throne. It's almost as good as mine. It is, <laughs> they're almost the thunder from down under. He couldn't have done it better. He set that up for me. The first time he showed up with that, I was like, damn, it's the thunder down under. Lunda, okay, who do we have? Oh, Mestizo Carf wants to talk. The mic is yours, brother. If you can hear me, unmute yourself. Can you hear me? There he is. Hello, Jason. Can you hear me? I can, brother. Man, it's great to talk with you. I have your using. Thank you so much for those 
illustrations with the NWG and that awesome looking warrior Santa. I don't know what to call him, but ended up using those uh, and it looks beautiful. Thank you so much, brother. What's on your mind tonight on this 2024? I just wanted to say that I uh, finally uh, have the opportunity to speak with the great Jason Kuna, the same guy who absolutely trounced the skeptics all the way back in 2017. Oh. Yeah, Worski, Crouch, Jeff Holiday, all those uh, individuals, uh, Chris, etc. Some black guy, <laughs> funny stuff. God bless you, man, for remembering. That was awesome. That was that was my agmatic yeah. video. Thank you, man. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, uh, hold on. All right. Yeah, do you think I'm getting calls about, uh, you know, New Year's, uh, the, the ball's going to come drop down uh, in a few minutes? But I just wanted to say, uh, you know, you really are an ins inspiration, Jason. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. So are you. Happy, yep, uh, happy New Year to you. What, what else, brother? And uh, just want to uh, really uh, say uh, I look forward to this uh, 2024. You know, this uh, election is really going to be crazy. And, um, yeah, I think uh, I better uh, get on going uh, and uh, celebrate the New Year's with the family. But, yeah, uh, shout out to you, Jason. Shout out to Jared George. Please come back. We miss you very much. Yeah, he's a great guy. God bless you, man. A big salute to Mestizo God. Happy New Year, brother. Looking forward to some excellent service to White Will Bing. We love you, man. Love you. All right, man. Bye-bye. Thank you for calling in. Celebrate that ball coming down. All right. You too. All right. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the great Mestizo Carr. Been around for a long time in service to white well-being. And he is uh, calling the first time we're hearing him tonight. God bless him. He's got a... Um, I've seen what he looks like, and man, this guy's cool. So, Kingdom of Inland, by the way, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on electric cars? Well, what are my thoughts on them? I think it's an abomination. <laughs> it's a total abomination. Uh, and when I saw that they were making electric cars with audio that sounded like an engine, I felt like those people should be drawn out of their vehicles, beaten unmercifully, and uh, and then maybe uh, maybe tied to the hood of their own electric vehicle. For other EV drivers to see what happens when you try to fake a real automobile. Seriously, uh, that's partly true. <laughs> Seriously, though, um, if we were without anti whiteism, I think electric vehicles would work by now perfectly. They would drive themselves perfectly, the roads would be pristine. Uh, we wouldn't be limited to electric vehicles. Uh, white people would not want to limit, uh, regular white people would not want to limit other people. We would recognize the, the real, I guess, mystique of a fire breathing engine. Um, at the same time, I don't know if that would be a personal item. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have an electric vehicle. That, that's your. If that's what you want to do. Do it. I'm not gonna. But I think it would probably be more, um, maybe almost like communal travel, not necessarily mass transit. But the problem with electric vehicles is that they are one of the other problems. One of the biggest problems is how damaging they are for the environment. We mankind are building obviously predominantly western countries white people like individual spaceships for people so like everybody is getting their own spaceship and the spaceships are full of materials components that are very rare many of them very toxic for the environment when they're done being used I think if we wanted to do something to, and, and by the way, 
the majority, as I understand, and I'm open to being corrected, the majority of electric vehicles are charged by coal plants. There are obviously nuclear plants that are providing power, hydro plants. I don't know very many solar or wind uh, uh, power production sources that are charging many electric vehicles. I just think by nature of coal still being a driver of power that uh, most of it is being produced by coal plants. Now in the United States and Western countries, those are what are referred to as clean coal. So they, I, I could be wrong, but I understand that they uh, just largely emit water vapor, uh, cleaned again and again and again. Uh, maybe as we are, instead of splitting, we are fusing atoms and you have this limitless source of electricity, limitless source of power, you get more power out than you put in. Electric vehicles would be able to charge better, but I think the the complexity is probably for me what is problematic. I don't think that people need spaceships made out of rare materials. It, if we're going to protect the planet, vehicles should be simpler, not more complex. But I I understand the drive to have the newest thing, the latest thing, the newest gadget, even when the thing can you can only actually operate. 2% of all the different things that the tech can do. It also opens the door for tyrannical control over your you and your vehicle. I think several auto manufacturers have already talked about and are implementing uh, systems where they can turn off things like radio, AC. They can lock you out of your vehicle if you're not making payments. They can drive the car back. All of this is not is theoretically possible right now for many of these cars drive it right back to the dealership nothing you can do about it if you've missed too many payments and who gets to decide what that is so there's a part of me who likes the science side of it and they're they're blazing some of them are blazing fast some of them are total junk uh, i saw a video of a 600 cbr cccbr race uh, a Tesla, I don't know which Tesla it was, but the Tesla was staying with it the entire time and then began to walk away from it without a sound. And the guy on the CBR was, couldn't believe it. I mean, he was roaring through the gears. And if you know anything about cross rockets, it's a missile. It's a missile between your legs. And that Tesla was just like, see ya, with no sound. So there's a part of it that's like, wow, impressed with the speed, impressed with the tech, the like science of it. Uh, and uh, there's a part of me that says, I, I, I want the roar. I want, like, if I could have my druthers, I would have something that would really thunder, muscle car style. And uh, I, see, I see a lot of non-whites, unfortunately. Like, I don't get to participate in their, their high-paying jobs, but with these fantastic, they sound great. I'm the Jaguar a couple of years back, maybe it's more than a couple of years back, maybe like eight. What was the, what was the Jaguar? I, I can't be right by saying J, Model J, but they had put all of the sound into the exhaust that you were allowed somewhere where the car was gonna be produced, maybe even here in the States. You have a decibel level for off the line stock vehicle. And they put all of the sound, the motor's almost silent when it runs. The sound is all in this complex exhaust that just sounds like otherworldly when it drives. And that's part of the whole mystique of driving for me. I, I don't, I, I don't, would not like, I mean, I had, when I was a child, like a little battery operated uh, motorcycle and there was no sound. I would not be happy with that. But uh, so they're a complex answer for electric vehicles. If you have a more specific question, uh, other than yes, they should all be dragged out of their vehicles and beaten and shamed and maybe pantsed. Maybe that's what it should be. Drag them out like at every red light, <laughs> drag them out of the vehicle. And uh, all the people in real cars, I mean, even if you're in a junk, 
even if you're in a pilot junk, you're in a real car, it's got combustion in it. You, you go over and you pull this, the EV driver out and then you pants them in front of everyone and everybody in the real cars can like honk and laughter and then you can drive off. Maybe that's what we should do. I'm half serious. But when these things started coming out, God dang, I was like, a battery car? Give me a break. But I'm not one of these people that like rejoices when they burn up or anything like that. Because it's just, it's total toxic, total toxicity for the environment. And this is where we live, folks. I mean, you can't, we know this. We, we love the environment. We take care of the environment. That's one of the reasons, another one of the reasons why I've always despised this artificial right-left in the anti-white narrative. Because if you care about things like having a border that functions as a border, then they say, well, you're also supposed to want to pave over the, the rainforest. You also want to you know, put a parking lot in every uh, stretch of forest where you live. And no, I absolutely don't want that. And no, it, white people might say that in jest, uh, especially like to pick off, piss off an anti-white, but nobody really wants that. Everybody I know from all different walks of life uh, who are white, we don't want the environment destroyed. And uh, so screw that fake left-right paradigm that they force us to live in. Oh, we just had Wilson Bear come back with a financial gift. Right now, Lunder's thinking, yeah, we should pants them. We're going to pants them from now yeah, on in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hear about like a spate of... Uh, people getting pants it's gonna be like a new trend in australia where ev drivers are subjected to the wickedest humiliation ritual at red lights and we're gonna see like lunder like running away <laughs> from some guy trying to pull up his pants well it's gonna be the next bigfoot photo of me running away from the scene yeah can you can you identify <laughs> this man do you have any idea yeah, well, a mate of mine is the He's a multi-millionaire CEO of a petroleum company here in Australia, and um, he had a board meeting not too long ago with a, um, a bunch of other uh, petroleum CEOs, and they have concluded that hydrogen vehicles are the future, not electric vehicles. So there's a bit of uh, insider knowledge for folks who want to stay ahead of the curve on that one. Really? Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh, if I only had some finances to invest, maybe, in into one of those companies, but unfortunately, um, no. I do see these vehicles in Central South America blowing up from time to time that are on natural gas. And yeah. I'll tell folks right now, if you are considering having your car converted to natural gas, do not take it to one of these like cut rate shops because your car will blow up. You will blow up fire will show up on the inside of the cabin it happens again and again you got to go if you're going to have it done at all you've got to go to uh, the expensive places to do it i understand i mean there's so many of these videos i saw one where the woman the car started acting weird and and you're just like what's what's going on it's like she are she trying to she trying to dodge mice or something in the road what's going on and then you see all of a sudden the entire interior of the cabin go red with fire and then disappear. And then now you get, wait, something's not right. And then she she finally slams on the brakes, throws the door open and runs. Uh, yeah, I think that would be scary. I think the cabin filling with flame <laughs> from a leaking natural gas line. I think that would be scary. We have a Wilson Bear, $5 financial gift. And he says, uh, with those $5, I'm a software expert. Don't buy a vehicle that allows automatic software updates. Here we have, thank you very much for that, Wilson Bear. Big warning uh, about uh, vehicles, EVs or any vehicles, right? That has automatic software updates because then they can add whatever they want. It, 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 if I'm wrong, correct me, Wilson Bear, after the fact uh, to your vehicle, maybe even limiting uh, the speed at which you can travel, where you can travel, who knows? Um, I remember when I was younger and vehicles, more and more vehicles were being produced with uh, a brain. They were like, that car has a brain. 
And I remember wondering, what the hell was that? It's a computer, Jason. It's a computer. It runs some of those systems in the, in the car. More and more of the systems run by this computer. And already uh, older, wiser people were saying, don't get anything like that because they'll be able to manipulate it somehow. And sure as shit, here we are. And what we need is governments that would stand up to protect the consumer from this sort of thing. But you have governments that are anti-white and they want those that they want to be able to say, well, you can't drive uh, here anymore. You can't drive there anymore. So your vehicle won't work anymore if you try to go there anymore. We're going to control what you drive, when you drive, so that you can't pollute the environment when really they don't care about the environment because they just produced uh, tens of millions of uh, earthbound sublunary spacecraft that are giant uh, toxic waste dumps just waiting to decompose somewhere and destroy the environment. Okay, we're blank over there. We're blank there. Do we have anybody come back on? No more comments on Rumble. Happy New Year to Board Troll showed up on D Live to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year 2024. We need to have more conversations like this, I think, on Twitter spaces. What do you think, Lunder? Absolutely. I make things more interesting. I know that for sure. Heck yeah. We will we'll have to and it and maybe it'll intrigue people. Uh, maybe <laughs> Mr. Zucarf says in the live chat, he accidentally drank champagne, thought it was cider. Was that an accident, my friend? Uh, Cyber Dragon, hello and welcome, says, what are your thoughts on Alex Jones? Old Alex Jones. Bulldog Boar says, we need another Buddy Brown review soon. Uh, and Javaris, yes. We will do that, brother. We will absolutely bring, bring uh, Roll Old Buddy, because we never did end up looking at his song that he made. And we know that's going to be a winner, right? It's going to be, uh, we're all being oppressed. My black brother and my and my Asian brother. I know that's going to be what it is. And Javaris is going to show up, probably with Buddy's wife. So we'll definitely have to cover that. Uh, Cyber asking about Alex Jones. And then this might have to be the last question because it is three in the morning. Oh my God, it's exactly pi. So for our fans of math, it is exactly pi on the East Coast. And um, also the phone is about to die, which means that the Twitter space will no longer work. But Alex Jones is, has done some good things. He's brought some awareness to things that otherwise wouldn't be covered. And uh, for, that I, for that, I can appreciate him. Um, he has also occupied people's minds with things that are fake or uh, just cause them to be idle, that make them apathetic. When you're talking about uh, rulers of the world that have all the power and all the wealth and everything, Nobody's going to be able to compete with that or want to can try to compete with that. So by doing so, he's undermined resistance to our victimization. So that obviously I have a disagreement with him there. I'm not happy about that. Uh, and uh, what about him moving forward? Well, I guess he's back on Twitter. And I hope that uh, maybe he'll have me on to talk about white well-being. Uh, he's a couple times recently mentioned uh, that uh, his daughter was being victimized for being white at camp. And uh, he has witnessed some other focus targeting of white people and uh, sociopolitical spheres. All that's a positive thing. I just hope he's not uh, saying those things to throw a bone to audiences that are clearly getting fed up with the victimization of our people. And uh, instead that it's, it's meaningful for him, but he is a consummate entertainer. He's not a leader of the white race. He is an entertainer and he might bring you info. He's definitely gonna entertain for God's sake, 
it might bring you some valuable information that uh, that's just interesting that you wouldn't have been aware of otherwise. Uh, but you need to remember when you get that information that you use it as a, a means to segue into our concepts, how we view the world, how we view our struggles, how we view our victimization. That's that's it. That's how you talk about it. He's obviously uh, trying to play uh, one side uh, or the other of the fissure or fissures in the overall Jewish community or the Jewish community that um, actively, that is active, maybe more active than other parts. And he's trying to play, it looks like one side versus the other. And uh, that never works for anybody. Just like it wouldn't work for us if we cared about our people. Um, if we were focused on ourselves and our well-being and we had a disagreement about how to get to our well-being, we wouldn't allow somebody of another race to come in and take one side and, uh, and harm the, the side that they don't take. So the only way that somebody could, could think that that would work is uh, sadly kind of to be white. They would have to be white. They would have to be selfish individualists that they think they could just get in and I'll, I'll criticize that side and I'll cozy up to this side. They're not, you're not going to be protected. You're not going to be um, allowed to victimize the rest of their community. So he'll continue to have troubles if he does that. A better tact, of course, for him is what we do here. Um, there are no people who are bad on their birth. Uh, there is merely uh, anti-white or neutral or they're serving white well-being with us. And then speak negatively about the anti-whites. And not at all about the others. What are they? There's like inert matter out there in the world. Alex Simpson's here. Says, if you start doing shorter in formative videos, I think a good topic would be on how per particularly fair-skinned whites show their deep white noir by talking about how pale they are, great point, and how much they dislike that. Perfectly, very well stated. That is uh, one, of the, one of the colossal signs of the white noir in the white race is that we've been made to hate our fair skin that we've been made to think that our fair skin is is uh less than is somehow a handicap and you'll see white people will yeah they'll speak negatively about their own fair skin and other white people will mock white people with fair skin which has always uh struck me as at as curious wicked but also curious because we can all, to various degrees, uh, darken our skin in the sun. But there ain't any of us that can get fairer. Uh, I mean, now, barring what are you having, like some kind of bizarre cosmetic treatment or laser treatment to, but you know what I mean, getting getting fairer, which is, which is extremely beautiful. And not to say that uh, tan or olive is not, it is. There's just a wide array of the beauty of our people, but it is a, it is a significant sign of the existence of anti-whiteism that the, the people who are fairer skinned have this pressure about how awful and evil it is. It's kind of like when, it, when we're talking about the movies, where we see that over time, the, the good guy in the movie, he could be white, but he had to be dark featured. He had to be a white guy with dark hair, dark eyes, darker skin, because further than that was clearly and clearly more and more white. And anti-whites, they didn't want it. They said, well, I still want to make the movie. Got to use a white guy. So let's use this. So you'll see in all the movies, all the advertisements, same thing. Over time, they finally got away from using dark-featured white guys. They just 
Now we'll just have non-white people be the protagonist. And a white guy can be a tag-along idiot, like the one I just did a tweet on, where he can be a member of a multiracial crew where he is like the, the comedic character just to mock and ridicule. And, uh, and then they'll conquer the evil whites, which very often fair skinned, light featured. So we can see what they've been doing all along. And just about every white family on planet earth has members that are very fair, either immediate or, or the next rung out or whatever. So this is us, this is, and we all, no matter what we look like, we have to say, no, I'm not going to be making fun of white skin. You're not going to be, nobody's going to be ridiculed for, boy, look at how white you are. Now that's all anti-white. That should, I mean, could you imagine if uh, there was a, a, a commonality, a common joke to make, to really ridicule was black people uh, by black people uh, for black skin? Could you imagine if that was ubiquitous like white skin? No, you can't even imagine black people doing that. Like a black guy walks out and he's darker than the other blacks and they're all like, look at your black, you know, it just doesn't know. It's not happening. It's not happening. Or a person in the Jewish community who looks more Jewish, whatever that is, than the other, can you see them all make mocking them for that? Nah is not happening so we got to put an end to it as well it's anti-white those jokes that ridicule and then there's a uh, i've seen content creators over the years white people who have uh fair skin and because they hated their skin so much being white being fair they tan the shit out of themselves and then they get cancer they get those are the of course the bad they get cancer and they die because of it, because of that self-hatred, when really um, they are, they were beautiful. So great question, great point. Local editor, where I live, the majority white is impossible to find nylons in light skin tones. Is that right? Wow. Yeah, but, and it's, majority white so you can't even find the ladies can't find pantyhose for light skin tones and the customer base is white i remember uh anti-whites complaining that band-aids produced by white people or blowout patches or what what do different people call them in different places wound covering that uh, they were uh, around the ranges of our skin tones. White people making these Band-Aids for our wounds, and they said that we were evil for it. Make your own Band-Aids. You know, create your own industry making Band-Aids for the way you people look, whatever, whatever group it was. So now you even got the customer base is white, but clearly anti-whiteism is getting in the way of the production of that color of pantyhose. She says, I now buy white tights or get nylons online from Asia. They make nylons for fair skinned people. Imagine that in the West. Imagine that. I mean, what's next? You, you have a market here, a significant market in Western countries for that, but they're not going to make it. So what comes first? Does the ideology come first or does money come first? This is where the, for your conservative friends that want to say it's all about the money it has nothing to do with race. I don't see them victimizing dollars. I see them victimizing white people. Anyhow. Well, I will bid adieu to those who are in the Twitter space. Thank you all for coming on. 
And before my phone dies, I think we have two mics still out. Uh, I don't know if either of you want to say a ta-ta. A ta-ta. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason, for having us on. A big uh, Promethean hails and a happy new year. Promethean hails, happy new year. Thank you for sticking around the whole time, brother. Oh, no worries. All right. And I guess um, then that's it. I don't see the mic going on. Okay. So I will end the uh, the space now, and we will have them again, though. We will do them again. So no worries. And look at this. We're going to celebrate right at the very end of our colossal New Year's gathering, ladies and gentlemen. We are celebrating. I just hit 25,000 followers on Twitter. We finally made it to a quarter of 100,000, an all uphill climb. My knuckles are bloody. My knees are bloody. It's been nothing but uphill against anti-whiteism, not giving, not giving in to what the, the masses want. Uh, maybe we'll have to say a few more, a few more things to maybe, maybe tempt, tempt the better of them to come on over and to find us, serve white well-being. But what a glorious time we've had. So many hours, 10 and a half hours streaming, I think. And uh, I feel like I could just keep rolling. But it is well beyond the witching hour. Uh, Wilson Bear, back with another $5, says, with a, thank you so much, Wilson Bear. Been in here. Five more dollars, he says, I'm a recovering Jaysberg. I've noticed using the go-free method, people responded differently than they did when I was Jaysberging. So thank you for empowering me with a better strategy. Hey, let's give up some celebration for Wilson Bear, a recovering Jaysberg. What a testimonial to begin 2024. What a testimonial to begin 2024. God bless you for that, brother. People are responding to him differently. Yep. By using the go free concepts. Hey, man, share that with uh, others. You might have been your friends and they were they were Jay Spurgs or whatever it might be. Share it. Let them know that uh, what we're doing here, white positivity works. It's going to change your life for the better. It's uh, going to change your work environment for the better. Treat yourself for these mean pathogens. 2024. Let 2024 be the year that you get a, 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 a giant leap closer to your actual potential that you were born with as an inheritor of the glory of the West. Let it be the year that you take a giant leap forward in that. I don't know what that might mean for you over the course of the year. You'll be treating yourself for these mean pathogens. And by treating yourself for them as we teach in Go Free, and we'll be talking about it over the course of the year, as, as you're treating yourself, these things that are almost magical, but it makes perfect sense, begin to happen as you access more and more of your latent potential. It makes perfect sense. It's perfectly logical. There's nothing mysterious about it. So make it the year that you make a big change in you and you'll begin to see that manifest in various ways over the course of the year. And let us know as the year marches on uh, how it has been playing out for you this 2024 and together, let's collectively really strive like never before. Collectively, let's really strive like never before to forge ahead and make all of the enormous accomplishments that we achieved in 2023 look like just the antechamber to this Cologne Cathedral that we are building. How do you like bringing it full circle to that, my friends? You know the way it works. This is going to be magnificent. 2024, think about 2024, the things that we're going to do. We're going to be on a ride together. I know you're going to be there the entire time. I'm not stopping. The struggle has only begun. Be the struggle. Win the struggle. Live through the struggle. And we will recapture our destiny. 2024, I love you all. Let's go free.